and therefore I would like you to take your seats. This will enable us to start. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ryszard Piotrowski and I am the head of the University uh, elec Electoring uh, Committee. I would like to welcome Professor Joanna Osiewicz, the, the, the deputy president of the same committee, Professor Piotr Werner, a member of the committee, Dr. Artur Haustowski, the chancellor, uh, the aimed member of today's committee. I also would like to welcome Professor Adam Niewiadomski, who is not any a member of the committee, however, he has a special role in this committee, of course, an expert a role of the institutional memory, and memory is the indicator of future. I would like to welcome cordially uh, the initiative, Inicjatywa Pracownicza, uh, unions representatives, please join us here today. The members of the union will give us their opinions within a protest which takes place during today's meeting. We owe you a lot. as you take very important matters in your actions. There are many issues, many matters, which need colorful protesting. However, in the lives of young people, there are many more matters like that, because the youth has a certain privilege. Adrenal Rowe said in his novel, the great week. He says the youth stands up and holds the future of the world in free interpretation, of course. And this is a beautiful sentence. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I give the floor to my colleagues. The universities uh, in the hands of female students. This is uh, the motto of today's protest. Uh, since uh, last October 2023, there has been a fight at the university. Nothing chip happened, but uh, at the Students' Union and also uh, the Students' Council and the authorities of the university did nothing. The last 30 years of the University of Warsaw is the history of selling public uh, finances, uh, taking different savings um, on assets uh, and on the benefits, and this takes, uh, some, takes a toll on our lives. Uh, the university doesn't give us food because you closed the um, cafeterias for students. And today we have a certain responsibility. How dare you? How dare you uh, use the name Universitas, uh, the community of the university, since uh, you give uh, education and you should be giving education to the representatives of not only aristocracy but to the people. And you also say that you do everything for us. So let's leave your big words because you, we need concrete actions and concrete matters. Students face a cold and a defenseless university uh, at the same time having challenging problems. This is not the university of businessmen in their suits. This is the university of us, because we care for the University of Warsaw to be a certain community place, not necessarily merely a place to put in our CVs. 
and the university that doesn't care about the different employees. This is the university without any future. We are fighting for the university to stop ignore our needs. The Times of the People's Republic ensured catering for students, which is now being sold out. You may be saying how modern modernly equipped is our university. What's the point of it if in these new buildings students must remain hungry? It is a completely unacceptable for the authorities of the biggest university in Poland to say there is no money. Let's call it by words, cowardice and incompetence. We are grouping ourselves in trade unions because the authorities are battening us for changing things. The self-government doesn't do anything or rather makes it harder to act for us that we want to improve our conditions. We will oppose, we will struggle, no matter how the self-governmental lobby in suits will try to discredit us. We are unionizing because contrary to the narrative of our authorities, we need to work and we need to study. We are both employees and students. The lack of social support and spiritless capitalism and precariousness of our employment makes us toil after our st studies. We are unionizing because we need an alternative. Within the confines of our university, we need an organization that will take on board our situation and will talk about unprivileged masses from the working people's families and their problems. We, the students of this university, are the university. Without students, there is no university. You can be left with subjects on startups and your distinguished guests in suits. But this will not be university. University is not a corporation, despite you wanting to transform it in such an entity. We do not want to bring profits as we imagine it. Our profit is community for production of knowledge. And we should have decent conditions for produ producing knowledge. We, the students, PhD candidates and academic staff, have understood over the course of last six months of struggle that it is we who are university. This is not, this is not classes exams or lectures. Universities is about taking matters in our own hands, critically thinking and taking voice. So we fight against passivity, we fight against false representation. University is not a corporation. Shanti, university is not a corporation. University is not a corporation. Let me thank, but let me stress also that there is a certain poetics and the rhetorics to these protests. And now, this poetics requires you to leave immediately this space, but let me thank also for the words you have uttered here. Quoting one of the Polish writers, Stefan Żeromski, thank you for the words and the fire of hearts that is burning in your hearts. Unfortunately, my thanks go in vain because the representatives have left, and I, but I hope it will reach them. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we can open up the today's agenda. An agenda of an assembly uh, that is due to present the candidates for the rector of the University of Warsaw. Let me ask the candidates, Professor Maciej Gurecki, 
Professor Łukasz Niesiołowski z Pano and Rector, Professor Alojze Nowak to tear their seats. Proszę Państwa, Ladies and gentlemen, the candidates have emerged on the 6th of March by the Electoral College of the University of Warsaw. The Electoral Codes uh, of the University of Warsaw oblige us to take this pre-election assembly. They also require us within this election, pre-election assembly to guarantee seats for all the members of the university community. That is why I believe that you are representing this community. Let me welcome all those who have come here. This assembly will be chaired by me and I hereby open it. Let me briefly expose some of the principles of this assembly. We will proceed to establishing by means of uh, random selection the sequence of uh, speakers. The candidates will present their program. Each will have 15 minutes to do so. At the same time, members of our assembly will be wondering about asking questions. You may pass uh, paper slips with your questions, and you may take these paper slips uh, that are intended to do so here. You may ask the question in writing. The sequence of asking question will also be decided based on the random selection. That is why these paper slips with questions, or even without questions, but actually with the willingness to ask question by mm, the willingness uh, shown by writing sur surname and name of a given speaker, will be placed in this ballot box. And as I said, we will take these questions randomly. The questions will be allotted two minutes for each. This is a maximum time for asking a question. Every candidate will be answering these questions and the sequence of answering will be the one that has been set in the prior round when, be, when the candidates were presenting their programs. And each candidate will have five minutes to reply to the question. And as all the answers will be given, once all the answers will be given, every candidate will have five minutes for concluding remarks. If we were not to finish before night time, we will take a break and reconvene if you wish so. And now, let me start by drawing the sequence of first presentations. Ladies and gentlemen, let me ask the person who will conduct the drawing process. So, the first speaker will be Professor Łukasz Niesiołowski z Pano. Followed by Professor Maciej Gurecki. And 
Awards. The third speaker will be Aloysia Professor Aloysia Nowak. However, the expert is saying, us, saying to us, is telling us trust, but verify. So we have verified that everything is accordance with regulations. Therefore, we can pass to the next point on our meeting's agenda, which is presentations. Now, let me ask Professor Łukasz Nisiowski Spano to take the floor. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I would like to welcome you all in the stationary mode and online. I have to change the plan of my presentation because I would like to address uh, what was said at the very beginning and I would like to say that there is a future of the university referring to what the students were protesting against. And they protest uh, against matters that we all agree. We uh, need to też taki osobisty ton, ponieważ moje pierwsze wspomnienie z uniwersytetem to jako licealista My first impression with the university was that in 1988 there was a protest uh, jako licealista byłem tutaj. As a high schooler I was here for the very first time. Potem byłem studentem, byłem doktorantem, pracownikiem, a teraz pełnię różne funkcje. I tym... And finally, a person taking different a roles here. Why I would like to be się, rector, the rector of the university. I think that the university pracy, can be może... better as a place of work and of study. E, różne I would like different processes that take place at the University of Warsaw lepiej. to take e, uh, place better. To, co na I would like to make sure dobrze. that uh, good matters at the University of Warsaw, and there are many matters like that, many different communities uh, that are good. I would like to protect, protect them against uh, unfortunate changes. And I also don't agree uh, for bad practices at the University of Warsaw. We have to address them, we have to name them, and we have to uh, eradicate them from the university. Uważam, że I also think that the university is a common good as a public institution, a public university. And for this very reason, as a member of the academic community, I feel that I have a duty to take care of this community. I would like our university to be a leader of the country as a research university in Europe for us to be chciałbym recognized uh, badaczy, in Europe. I would like the prestige of our researchers, of our students and PhD students to be our uh, by uh, mark in the world. I would like us to promote uh, good quality coś, of research and study. This is what the university should do. And uh, there is not enough of a good quality at the university. We should also react to uh, unfortunate things that happen. I also think about the university as the community. Not necessarily as a set of individuals. Of course, we have the electorate college. Oczywiście, tradycyjnie najważniejszym And traditionally, the senate and its committees are the most important bodies at the university. And they also need uh, to have their competences uh, increased at the university. And of course, there are different institutions, uh, different departments and faculties at the universities with their heads. And naturally, the heads work with the rector. And of course, obviously, didactic processes are in hands of particular presidents and heads of the didactic units, and they depend on their decisions. We can't 
make a good university without uh, the Chancellor and the Chancellor's team, uh, because this means good administration. And they also constitute uh, a team of the rector. There is also the management board of the, the council of the university responsible for controlling finances and the strategy of the university. And that is why the administration of the university is of great importance. I also think that the university should be governed by rules. These rules should be transparency. Tworzenie jasnych jasnych standardów i zasad, żeby wszystkich były czytelne dla wszystkich. By uniwersytet był zespołem. I would like us to be a community, a team. Jak najwięcej decyzji można było delegować i rozdzielić. Respect for one another and uh, to trust one another, and I also would like the members of the community to take an active part in the decision-making processes. Należy na uniwersytecie inicjować. I also think that uh, different discussions uh, should be initiated at the university, and we should consult experts. Rector is not. Uh, is not omnipotent, is not, does not know everything, we should always uh, take an opinion of an expert into consideration. And I would like to point out different areas of interest and that seem to be most important. When it comes to studying, financial benefits uh, call for consideration. We should continue and we should also enforce actions related to the students' dormitories. You hurt the students, and I think that this speaks for itself. Perhaps uh, a way to speed up different activities is to talk to the city of Warsaw uh, about, uh, about uh, different void uh, apartments and uh, uh, abandoned uh, buildings, abandoned housing. Uh, which could be taken up as uh, social housing for students. And uh, cafeteries, as well as canteens, uh, are also of great importance. PhD students, in turn, spoke about uh, increasing the uh, the, the benefit, the PhD benefit, up to the level of the minimum wage for employees. And I think that I would support this idea. PhD students are young researchers, and we should always think about how to ensure a good quality working condition, working conditions for them. So I think that I will also consider finding those different uh, solutions to provide them with good working conditions. And I also think that we have the youngest uh, uh, academic employees that we should take into consideration, frequently with lower remuneration and at the same time with the very big responsibilities. And there is an idea of an umbrella of of a shield, so to speak, that would provide them with uh, good remuneration. There could be a centralized shield package for 60 hours of work. Uh, and at the same time, this would lower the teaching load of the youngest uh, staff. So they wouldn't be afraid of what's going to happen to them. The administrative staff constitutes the key of good functioning of the university. And I would like to point out different matters that could contribute to the university's better condition. First of all, I thought about the faculties and institutes which are not as effective 
in, for instance, uh, grant uh, uh, winning as our uh, leaders in uh, grants. I think that we could dedicate a team of people locally helping departments and institutions in preparing grant applications in those units which have the lowest, uh, the shortest experience in applying for grants. So we could start up a peer review process in which those more experienced could help those less experienced in preparing a grant proposal. And finally, finances. There won't be enough money at the university at any time, but I don't think that the deans and rectors should be personally responsible for finding finances. We should have a team of experts, as uh, the chairman said, uh, for this, instead of uh, pointing out different uh, rectors who change over time. I would like the university to have a certain consulting mechanisms to be able uh, to put those mechanisms in action because very frequently the Senate is a passive body taking different decisions from the electorate college. But I think that we should also form a team, let's call it uh, Dean's Council, regularly considering basic matters of the university. The Senate should wake up, should take heated discussions about the future of the university instead of waiting uh, for the rector's uh, team to give different initiatives. There are different mechanisms, initiatives that could be implemented into our future. And the more we share with one another, the better. In order to achieve this, we need transparency. We need a transparent university with uh, clear rules for everyone. And I think that we lack transparency, for instance, in finances. This has to change because the university should openly declare the condition and the state of the budget uh, to the public. Different uh, rules should be clear to every member of the community so that they understand why different decisions are made at the university. The procedures should be able to be anticipated and should be also clear so that everyone in a given process can anticipate different actions. There is also another matter that is appealing for different deans. Namely, there are different investments, so we have new buildings, new uh, rooms, etc. However, the rules of using those rooms, these facilities, uh, should be reviewed and uh, taking care of these rooms and these facilities should be centralized. Not necessarily lay in hands of particular small units. Uh, the system of our structure, of our architecture and infrastructure needs revision. And we should think about not uh, burdening the users of different facilities with the financial problems. And this is what we need immediately. For instance, we have the central campus which could be a landmark of the university. Same with the Ojota campus. The university should blend into the city tissue so that uh, the uh, inhabitants of Warsaw could see a part of the city, the University of Warsaw, that, so that they could visit the University of Warsaw and uh, so that the university uh, holds uh, spaces, zones, that uh, attract different members of the university community so that we could all work better and more comfortably. And in order to achieve this, I think that we could share the competences uh, between the electorate uh, or of the electorate college into different smaller teams. 
I think that we should co-decide about different things because the university uh, the decisions about the university should not lay in the hands of one single individual. Instead, there should always be a team with different dedicated tasks. A team of the representatives of different disciplines with uh, various experiences and expertise. I think that this idea could constitute a symbol of less is more. And I think that in the system where the rector can do everything, we should introduce a rotation system with the rector and the deputy rectors taking over at different places of time. The rector's college uh, could also take uh, the lead in the Senate and has, uh, have this presidency of the Senate. Thank you very much indeed, Professor, for your contribution. And now I would like to ask to take the floor, Professor Maciej Gulecki. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the only one who is not in suit and tie, and I do support the protest we've seen. My name is Maciej Gwerski, I'm a university professor at the Faculty of Psychology. I started my scientific and professional career at the local university in Opole. Then I graduated from one of the colleges at the University of London, and then I got my PhD from the Trinity College of Dublin, and 13 years ago I returned to Poland, and I took up the job at the University of Warsaw. My program is based on four pillars and demands. University should be democratic, decentralized, solidar solidarious, and research. And I will briefly speak about these four demands. Ladies and gentlemen, democratic university, in my opinion, should be a university that broadens the number of people who are deciding on the fate of our community. At present, the electoral system for collective bodies is a modal type of system that limits the full representation of interests. It limits the number of people that are co-deciding. If I were to be elected to the post of rector, I will immediately suggest a complex reform of this system. Democratic University is also a university that functions in a democratic environment. University's rector should not be a fixer of or client of a certain authority, should be partner of, the, of, any, of every authority and also harsh reviewer, not only when it comes to scientific and uh, higher education policy, but also to uh, relation to uh, such ideas as freedom, truth, dignity, democracy, etc. Decentralized university is all about genuine decentralization and not decentralization on paper, a facade decentra decentralization that becomes its opposite. The point is for the central administration to be the facilitator that facilitates actions of different units working within our university and not a mere supervisor of this uh, units. To give you an example, 
extraordinary scientists from our university who approached me, told me that interpretations of law on public procurements are done in a way that would be convenient for central university, university administration and for the rector himself. And they should be convenient for researchers. That should be uh, reversed. These should be uh, convenient for researchers. It is also necessary to respect the autonomy of the bodies that work within the university. We know that this is not certain, not usually the case at the university right now. We, have, we are faced with bypassing where particular matters are fixed. and also, to some extent, our employees. We want to prioritize the building of a network of free and subsidized, or cheap and subsidized, university canteens, led by canteens uh, offered by university library. I'll be able, of course, to provide details once I get a grip on finances, and also Rector should be paradigm of solidarity. A rector that has only time for two matters, managing university and private life. If I were to be chosen, chosen to the position of rector, I will dedicate 100% of my professional time to the university. And finally, the fourth slogan, research university. I think this demand is not controversial. We should all be caring for uh, recognizability and visibility of our university on scientific market. We should be brandishing the label of University of Warsaw. I suggest implementing a whole set of incentives and broaden the available incentives and bonuses and rewards for those employees that decide to work at the best international level. I suggest implementing a common mentoring scheme for people who potentially can do more so that these younger colleagues, supported by administrative staff from the center, central of the university, reach the highest international level. Ladies and gentlemen, I also plan to set up a collegial, collegial body that I um, call Scientific Consultative Committee. This will be a collective body whose membership will be comprised of members of different fields and disciplines, and they will have an advisory vote on, Im on impact of different challenges and opportunities in research. My demand would be not to publish more, but to publish better. And here, let me quote several statistics that you can see on this chart. You have the founding university of the 4EU Plus Alliance, University of Warsaw, is the dark blue color here. Red, Charles University in Prague. We also have Sorbonne and also the mm, top university, Heidelberg, University, university of Heidelberg. As you can see, we are at a disadvantage in this statistic. The indicator that is analyzed here, uh, the field weighted citation, is, has been falling, and also in relation to these other universities. So, our uh, brand, scientific brand, is uh, declining. That is why we need academic community, because they are relevant. To sum up my program, I would like to say that I simply want a university that is genuinely democratic, generally decentralized, generally solidarious, and finally, generally a research university. And then thought to, for concluding remarks. 
It is all about freedom, in fact. Simply speaking, it's all about freedom. And here, let me say, in this context, let me ask the following question. Can we say that the current term has been that of a freedom if a rector calls up employees, professors, and disciplines those professors that dared to voice critical opinion on the political situation in our country, and in particular about the ruling party? I think the answer is self-evident to this question. Ladies and gentlemen, Rector Novak, I don't know if he can remember that, if he, if he can remember that, but I suppose he wants to forget about that. In autumn 2022, he called, summoned people and disciplined professors and university employees. Ladies and gentlemen, I was one of these who was summoned to university, uh, uh, to the rector's palace. And I've recently tried to find other people who experienced the same thing. I've stopped immediately because having done little effort, I found four other people. What was the scale of this phenomenon? How many other people have been summoned to respond in front of the rector because they only dared to criticize what was happening at that time in Poland and to criticize the party led by Jarosław Kaczyński, the Law and Justice Party. Ladies and gentlemen, Rector Novak will perhaps tell you that it was all done for the good of the university and for the good, perhaps, of those people who were summoned. But my memory does not fail me. And I remember that at that time, in autumn 2022, or in the turn of 2022 and 23, in the Polish Parliament, the law, the so-called infamous Lex Novak law was debated. Thanks to this law, Jarosław Kaczyński's party raised the retirement age for the candidates for the, to the position of the rector, thanks to which the rector can actually uh, present his, uh, his candidacy. Now, so was that concession paid by silencing the debate and silencing those who dared to criticize Jarosław Kaczynski? The coincidence in, in terms of timing is striking. This question must remain open. But if this question remains open, then there is another question that remains open, perhaps even more important one. A question about freedom at the University of Warsaw. Thank you very much for your attention. Professor, thank you so much. And now I would like to give the floor to Professor Alois Novak. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I have the greatest pleasure to meet with you today. There are different reasons for that. The first reason is that the debate about the University of Warsaw is needed indeed. The second reason lies in me willing to thank you for the past uh, uh, couple of years. The past term and the cooperation with you was excellent. Without your help, without your support, I wouldn't have achieved 
we wouldn't have achieved what we achieved, actually. To me, the university has always been a place of people. Out of what my predecessor said, I must say that the majority of them were actually my arguments uh, from the previous term and this is actually this is what the university should look like and looks like the university is people institutions programs there are 55,000 community members over 40,000 students 9,000 employees and about 10,000 uh, staff other staff members each and every individual has dreams, expectations. Everyone dreams about a better future. And we follow different paths. The rector, senate, board of the university. Different university, sorry, institutions, departments, faculties need to function to satisfy all the needs and the university itself needs to step forward research-wise, teaching-wise and when it comes to the respect of one human to another human. What did we dream about in 2020? We dreamt about the university that is democratic and these were difficult times, let me remind you. We started in 2020 when uh, the law on higher education changed, changing at the same the structure of the University of Warsaw and University per se, limiting democracy. Democracy at the university lies in the person of the rector. The rector could, uh, had all the comp uh, competences. Democracy was embodied by the rector. And uh, I actually didn't agree with uh, such an approach together with my colleagues because I thought that the institutions and community members are more important than just individuals. The members of local communities, the law uh, was uh, actually in favor of uh, uh, limiting the power of faculties and uh, eradicating the notion of faculty uh, uh, at the university together with the posts of the dean. We managed to hold on to uh, the functioning of faculties, deans, etc. Decentralized university. All the decisions possible in hands uh, were given actually into the hands of uh, deans, institutes, councils, and boards. The central authority was uh, only to coordinate these actions, and this is what happened. The only representative of uh, the central authority is the rector of the University of Warsaw or of the university per se, and he or she needs to re represent uh, the university, Solidarious University. If we think about people as the most important good of the university, we should remember that in our community there are institutions and people who excel in the daily functioning of the university. There are prominent faculties and uh, other units, uh, research-wise, finances-wise, uh, uh, and in terms of uh, other aspects of our functioning. There are also other units important for the university. Creme de la creme of the university However, at the same time, not necessarily excelling in each and every aspect of uh, our functioning. We uh, 
opportunity. Ken Reithoff, uh, the 30% uh, of uh, what is uh, a bar of incomes uh, that are beyond the, the the budget, and we can share uh, this with uh, different uh, units, with different faculties. The university is such an important institution that uh, we have to invest in the university. How much? Well, uh, we did share some of uh, the finances. Uh, that did not belong to the mere budget. Within the years 2020, 2024, uh, different units were given 120 million Polish slots. We also introduced a bonus system, uh, an incentive system of uh, for the employees of the University of Warsaw in those very uncertain times where we were not actually sure about the increases, possible increases in the remunerations. This is what solidarity means. Together with my colleagues, I introduced a system of supporting the best students, best students uh, of the national competitions, sportsmen and sportswomen uh, in national teams, making the University of Warsaw famous all over the world. This is what solidarity looks like. To see each and every individual, to see each and every student, PhD student, and each and every employee. We dreamt about the research university. And this actually took place, our beautiful university was granted the A plus category, which constituted a great success in the parametrics. The university is visible in the national and international scene. We, at the same time, want to upscale. We are aiming at something greater, and I'm well aware of that. We also uh, did function very well in the face of the power crisis the Russian invasion on Ukraine, and also a COVID-19 pandemic. We prepared a wonderful program that was accepted by the Senate of the University of Warsaw, a program open to Ukrainian refugees. And we are all the only university which doesn't have to sell uh, their facilities and their assets uh, in order to pay off um, and take care of the liabilities. It's true, I talked to my colleague, but it engaged about vulgar arguments online in the internet, and he didn't mention that. The university, and here this room, is not the place to discuss that, but of course I will answer any question. This is my university, this is my I'll, this is my facility and this is my love beyond my family Just i did show it as a dean at rebuilding remoderating everything together with the uh, community of uh, the faculty as the rector of the university of warsaw i managed to recollect the land belonging to the University of Warsaw, uh, yet in the hands of a commercial bank for several dozens of years. During the previous term, and hopefully during this term, the next term, I will continue my work. The University has always been a comfortable and a warm place to be. And this is where I have uh, been working since 1984, uh, collecting all the titles except for MA. And I would like to bring the university to yet another higher level. The finances are now stable, and we are the only university in Poland with such stable finances. I didn't do it alone. I did it with the Senate, uh, the board, the council, and also the rector's team. Thank you so much for that. 
and thank you for forming the university community with me. We developed a system of supporting people who are discriminated. Uh, we also um, supported uh, against mobbing, supported people with different problems. And I know that we haven't taken over every issue, but at the same time, I also uh, created, uh, I, I also created the posts of different representatives of the rector and I would like to express my gratitude to each and everyone who helped me in solving different problems and finally the medical faculty was also launched about 150 people at the University of Warsaw uh, conducts a medical or paramedical research Currently, we are forming international alliances, uh, for instance, with the Harvard Medical School and with the Oxford University, when it comes to medical sciences. We have plans for the years 2024-2028. These plans uh, are not new, so to speak, fresh in each and every aspect, because uh, they are rooted in the strategy of the University of Warsaw, uh, accepted by the Senate and by the board of the University of Warsaw. The strategy uh, was of participative character, and several hundred, if not one thousand people, were uh, involved in forming this strategy at the level of deans, uh, departments, councils, boards, uh, uh, also PhD students, councils. The strategy was not bought, it was formed by different draftsmen. We want to aim at what is most important at the university, seeking truth, uh, aiming at truth and also respecting humans. And if you choose me, we will follow the same path. We also have financing for the next uh, year and a half or two years. We have stable financing sources and I can't imagine not improving the financial conditions for working and living at the University of Warsaw. We have different financial assets. Some programs are uh, semi-ready. We still have to think about the dormitories, the hotel for employees as well as uh, apartments, uh, flats for the accommodation for the employees, and not uh, only uh, the academic teachers, but also, for instance, some um, uh, employees of the library and uh, different members of staff, because no one is more important than another person here at the university. We still would like to develop uh, the faculty of the university, uh, sorry, the faculty of medical sciences. We are cooperating with the Vilnius University and we also are aiming at forming our own um, university clinic as well as uh, the university hospital. So far, we don't need it ad hoc, but we are aiming at it and we are also developing different activities related to the digitalization. The administration of the university is also of great importance and our IT teams together with um, our bursary uh, is working jointly to ensure uh, different activities. There is also a program, Smart Green University, and uh, we have to develop competences in this regard. We have a number of graduates we want to uh, cooperate. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much indeed, Professor Novak, for presenting your program. Ladies and gentlemen, now let me make sure that all those who wanted to ask questions have already done so. So, let me ask you to kindly to place these paper slips with questions 
in the ballot box. This is to sequence, answering to these questions and following the conclusion of this process, we will close down the question list. Just a moment. There are indeed people who are interested in asking questions. The paper slips are there. Help yourself. But be careful. So, just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, has everyone who intended to do so asked their questions? There is a lady who wants to ask a question. You are more than welcome to do so. If there are no objections, my understanding will be that all the questions that were deemed to be written down have been written down. Apparently there are no difficult questions, but only difficult answers. Let's see how things will turn out today. And now we will draw the sequence of asking questions. First, Mr. Patrick Litwiński, followed by Alexander Hebda. Pan Piotr Cichocki. Followed by Piotr Cichocki. Pan Mikołaj Chmielak. The next person is Mr. Mikołaj, Mr. Mikołaj Chmielak. Followed by Ms. Marta Wrzosek. Fifth person in a row. Followed by Mr. Adam Kurman, sixth person in the row. Followed by Ms. Joanna Pianowska, seventh person to ask the question. Next, Mr. Jul Pawełczak, the eighth person to ask the question. Then Ms. Zuzanna Kubiak as the ninth person in the line to ask questions. Next, Mr. Michał Radek as the tenth person to be asking the question. Followed by Ms. Julia Kucharek on eleventh position. 
in the line. Pan Łukasz Pieczara. Then Mr. Łukasz Pieczara, 12th person that will be asking a question, followed by Mr. Marcin Zich, number 13, to ask the question. Bunzler, jak... Next, Ms. Anna Bunzler, the 14th person, followed by Mr. Adam Gendziu as the 15th person, and Ms. Agnieszka Kapusta, 16th person in the row, and Mr. Darius Wrzosek, the 17th person, Pan Bogdan. With number 18, Mr. Bogdan Dziubkowski. Followed by Jan Sobczak, yeah. Mr. Jan Sobczak, the 19th person that will be asking questions. And then Mr. Sebastian Szymański, the 20th person. Pani Anna Siewirska. Followed by Ms. Anna Siewirska on the 21st place. Mr. Krzysztof Gulda as the 22nd person in the row. Followed by Mr. Dominik Puchała, number 23. Followed by Ms. Justyna Smoleń, the 24th person in line to ask questions, followed by Ms. Marcelina Obarska, number 25. Question number 6, 26, uh, uh, asked by Mr. Piotr Cichocki, followed by Ms. Patricia Dudek on the 27th position. Then goes Pani Weronika Lipszyc. Ms. Weronika Lipszyc, according to what we have determined, number 28, followed by Ms. Marta Derek on the 29th position, in line for asking questions to the candidates, followed by Mr. Paweł Strzelecki, number 30. Pan... To be succeeded by Mr. Stanisław Zabandrzała, 31st person in the, in the line to ask questions, followed by Ms. Judita Bomer-Lewicka, number 32, in line for asking questions. Then, Mr. Patrick Szlufik, number 33, in line for asking questions. The next question will be addressed, will be asked by Mr. Mateusz Mutrzakowski, number 34, followed by, with number 35, by Mr. Piotr Pasikowski. The next in line is Mr. Wojciech Poński, with number 26, 36 in the row, followed by Mr. Piotr Hoffman, with number 37 in the row, Next in line is Mr. Przemysław Brzuszczyk, number 38 in the row, followed by Olga Neifeld as the 39th person in the row, followed by Ms. Paulina Dudzińska, the 40th person that will be asking her question, followed by Mr. Krzysztof Szczygielski, who will be asking the 41st question, followed by Mr. Jan Orliński, who will be the 42nd person that will be asking their questions. Next in line is Ms. Kinga Bożenska Wojciechewicz, number 43, question number 43, followed by Mr. Łukasz Kapusta, 44th question, to be followed by Ms. Renata Gierak with 45th question. Pani Magdalena Filipek. To be followed by Ms. Magdalena Filipek, 
Number question number forty-six. The next question will be asked by Tomasz, Mr. Tomasz Kazimierczuk. The forty-eighth question will be asked by Mr. Michał Tomza. It will be followed by question number forty-nine, addressed asked by Ms. Małgorzata Książyk. The next person in the row is Ms. Andrea Nowicka, who will be the 50th person that will be asking the question. And finally, Mr. Marek Wencowski by the, is the 51st person. 51 times 17. This is the time horizon of our today's endeavor. And I think that at some point we will take a break. But let me remind you that questions may be asked both in person using the microphone that we have on the presidium table. You can also ask the candidates or rather the chairperson to read out a question. The first person who will be asking the question will be Mr. Patry Patryk Litwiński. To be answered by Niesiołowski. Professor Niesiołowski Gurecki Nowak. As per the sequence that I've just read, is Mr. Patryk Litwiński ready to ask a question in person? The floor is yours for two minutes. Dear candidates, I'm from the Faculty of Political Sciences and International Studies, so take less time than I'm allotted to. Let me connect with the strike we've just seen. How do you imagine your cooperation uh, with the students' government to address the problems faced by academic community? First, Mr. Łukasz, Professor Łukasz Niesiołowski, not Eliza, Łukasz Niesiołowski, will be addressing this question. Apologies to the speaker, nothing personal. I will try to address these questions in three minutes that allow us to save up some time. Perhaps we can end by 1 a.m. I'm really sorry, Professor, this is impossible. In the democratic state of law, you are not allowed to change the rules of the game. Yes, you can terminate earlier, and I will not demand you to continue if you don't want, wish to speak. This is not in an audition, a, a police audition, interrogation. This is a free um, speech by our candidates. Professor, the floor is yours. Protests. The students, as the protests that we've seen and the discussions that have been taking place recently, suggest that the students are the building blocks of the university. Some people say that they are not represented in our university. And I think that the student self-government, by regulations, is the evident representative of students, but since we've had this participatory issues raised by university, university students, we need to acknowledge that students unionize in other organizations. And the role of university authorities is to acknowledge that all these institutions are co-deciding. Of course, by law, by force of law, the self-government is the main interlocutor to the deans and rectors. This is natural. But we shouldn't remain deaf to the voices that tell us that students, as has been seen today, that they do not feel represented by the students' government. I believe that the rectors' authority should keep away from uh, the ways in which university students' representation is elected. We, as the core of university, should make sure that university students acknowledge or uh, believe that university 
student council is the representation. The directors and other authorities should tackle all the matters with student government. This is self-evident for me, both in terms of student residences, canteens, etc. Thank you very much. Now let me ask Professor Maciej Górecki to take the floor. I don't have anything more to add to what has been said. I agree with the previous speaker. When it comes to participation of students in university functioning, it is not well built when it comes to attendance and turnout. One of the student elect members of the Electoral College informed me, and I've checked it afterwards, that the elections for student uh, members of uh, Electors College are not well attended. And this is a challenge for us, the low student turnout in these elections. I do believe that within the current procedures, legal procedures, our statute, our legal framework uh, um, sets a place for the student government. I respect these regulations. However, should the turnout be low, and continue to be low, low in students' uh, representatives' elections, we should think together what to do about it. We would very much prefer for it to be um, the turnout to be higher than 50%. That would be guarantee its representation. Mm -hmm. Professor Novak, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. We have been listening eagerly to the student community members' voices and will continue to do so. Let me say that we have been discussing with the students' parliament, uh, the, the government of students and the government of doctoral candidates and we've had a good cooperation. The matters we raise are not easy. We discuss very often. We discuss over a space of dozens of sessions, but very often we reach joint position and the position is implemented by both parties, by university students and by the self by our director's office. The youth that has been protesting today is also on board in our discussions. Uh, actually, it is not me who is discussing with them. The deputy director for student affairs does that. Some of their expectations are just. Some of these are food for thought for us. We are wondering why these expectations are uh, presented right now, but on the other hand, there is always a good time to uh, pre present demands. Let me appease some of you that when it comes to student residences, the youth, because the youth has been protesting over it, University of Warsaw, as the only university recently, has built a brand new student residence that will be holding 400, 390 students. This uh, student resident will start work uh, this uh, coming academic year and we've renewed the 300 more places at student residences. And let me tell you that before the pandemic there was no demand for student residences. This changed, all changed with the emergence of pandemic and inflation. It is beyond any doubt that student residences should be renovated and adjusted to the expectations of our youth that lives in the 21st century. But on the other hand, we want also the universe, University of Warsaw not only to, to be merely university in Warsaw, in Mazovia region, but also an old Poland university and a European university. Therefore, we need to guarantee residence for our uh, students, offshore students, coming from abroad and from other cities. And also it is important to acknowledge that students are active in, in student residences. They live there actively. When it comes to canteens, 
at some point we did outsource and these institutions and we thought it would be a good idea to do so but in fact we discovered that there is a high demand that canteens should be purely university canteens whatever that means and that employees who are employed by the University of Warsaw run these places in other matters when it comes to travels when it comes to trips when it comes to organizing uh, all kinds of events at the university. For the past four years, we haven't seen a situation where we wouldn't reach an agreement with the student's government. And I do believe that uh, self-government and also students themselves are an important part of our university. And you are pointing to us something that may be uh, glossed over by us, the people who are a bit older. So we are a joint team, we make a good team, a good community, but this does not mean that at certain times some, some matters are discussed more thoroughly. This will continue to happen, but my position is clear. I am really positive when it comes to the youth uh, the students and the self-governing organizations. Thank you very much, dear rector. The next question, question number two, will be asked by uh, Mr. Alexander Hebda to be answered by Professor Maciej Gurecki, followed by Alois Novak, and followed by Łukasz Niesiewowski Spana. Although this question is actually only to Professor Niesiewowski, but the other gentlemen, should they want to contribute they will be able to do that within the limits of their five minutes allotted to them. Uh, Mr. Alexander Hebda, the floor is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to address the Dean uh, as uh, it was mentioned during the Senate, uh, Senate's meeting. Professor said that it's not elegant to uh, publicize information in that was raised uh, during a closed meeting. So my question is, how would you consider such a closed matter or such a closed meeting, a meeting that was actually taken publicly? The second uh, question is about an email you sent to students suggesting that you were asked that I was uh, asked to organize a meeting with the electorate uh, college and we have pre-election now while you asked why you didn't want to meet with students previously you answered that we will have time for that and uh, previously it was before the pre-election meeting and secondly, I also would like to ask you whether, in your opinion, it is elegant to misinform the Senate and the University. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to change the course uh, of uh, answering since uh, the question uh, was addressed to Professor Nishawowski and he will speak first and uh, if other candidates uh, would like to contribute to responding, uh, Professor Gurecki and Professor Novak will have the chance to answer. Professor Nishawowski, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, I would like to uh, address uh, um, the question. During the Senate's meeting, I said that I don't think certain things are elegant because the meeting that I was invited to wasn't a public one as far as I do understand. It wasn't uh, a, at the same time a secret meeting or a confidential meeting. So I don't nevertheless think that it's elegant to take matters 
undertaken during this meeting outside the meeting. Perhaps we don't agree on what's elegant or not, but this is my stand on the matter. When it comes to the email I sent today, I would like to uh, elaborate on that. Rector did meet with, this, with students previously. I didn't have the chance to do the same thing. After the pre-elections, I asked the representatives of students about the possible meeting and uh, actually I was given an answer about the 10th of April to be an occasion for three candidates to talk to students and I'm very glad that such an initiative takes place. At the same time, the rector did have a chance to talk with the representatives of students previously and indeed in the letter to students I proposed a pre-meeting, uh, not organized as a form of a de debate bef between the candidates, among the candidates, but in the form of a meeting, of a debate with students, because I would like to know their opinion, which is easier to, do, to be done during a free speech instead of a competitive deba debate. And therefore, uh, well, the person who was responsible for, for the organization already left the room, but at the same time, unfortunately, before the pre-elections, the meeting didn't take place. So now we have to make up for this when we want to talk to students about their problems in an open form, in the form of an open discussion about the university. The last question is kind of difficult to handle. I wouldn't focus on misinformation because you suggested me misinforming the Senate. If you think that I said the meeting was closed and this was me misinformation, I, I can't really respond to this suggestion, to the best of my knowledge. And according to a talk I had with at least one representative with the board of the university, being invited to the board and not being given a recommendation is not a, in accordance with the standards of the university. I hope that we will be able to talk about this during the, stand, the, the meeting that, I, uh, that I'm organizing. Thank you so much. Professors, would you like to use your time to respond? No, thank you. And Professor Gurecki? I also would like to resign from commenting. Thank you so much, Professor. Now, question number three. Mr. Piotr Cichotsky, the floor is yours. First to answer will be Professor Aloysi Nowak, then Professor Łukasz Niesiołowski, and then Professor Maciej Górecki. Ladies and gentlemen, my question relates to concrete mechanisms related to the transparency of information about financing. On one hand, I would like to address indirect funds within research grants and then statutory uh, research. I would like to ask the candidates about concrete actions uh, related to transparency or aiming at transparency are you planning on implementing? Professor Eloise Novak. Thank you so much. There is something called indirect costs within grants. These costs 
are transferred to the head researcher and also to the administration. The majority of these costs are left to the disposal of the head researcher. They are left of the faculties. Sometimes we are addressed with an application to to be indemnified from 10% or 20%. And if grants are well financed, well managed, or if we don't need that much financing, we leave those costs in hands of the uh, head of uh, head researcher. Sometimes they are also at the disposal of the central authorities. We also, from time to time, support the unit or other faculties. Now, when it comes to statutory research, I think that we could continue the activities that we actually had. So I, I don't know what, what was your stand on this, what you had in mind. Professor Łukasz Niesiołowski, thank you so much for this question. These are very important matters and uh, important sources of financing particular units as well as central authorities. Indirect costs uh, support the budget of the university. Thinking about increasing the efficiency of the central administration. We should also think about leaving certain financial support there. For instance, to support teams facilitating locally grant applications. Every faculty is different with different practices. And I think that we should leave it like that. Uh, so there are some faculties with the great uh, incomes from grants and therefore indirect costs constitute a share of their income in general. And there are also faculties where grants are scarce and there is a paucity of grants uh, giving those indirect costs. The local management of costs I think should stay as the element of the university's functioning. I don't think we should uh, unify the roles here. Professors use the word solidarious and I also have this word in my heart, even if not in my presentation. Those who bring indirect costs to the university should agree, in my opinion, to us spending those uh, resources in general. There are also budgets dedicated to particular research, particular studies, and I also mentioned the fact that uh, PhD students uh, do not always have money to conduct their research, and therefore the role of the central administration is to support the particular faculties in dedicating resources to PhD students so that they actually could finance their studies. So we should give research tools to PhD students. Thank you. And now, Professor Maciej Gorecki. When it comes to external brands, I had a grant from the uh, National Science Center and I think that some of financing should be taken over by the unit while at the same time the head researcher should have certain uh, extra money at hand if need be. When it comes to statutory financing I guess that we should tr transparently allocate them whenever there is a certain need and someone has a smaller project 
for instance. Not necessarily uh, for great research uh, instead of for pilot studies, for instance. And now, ladies and gentlemen, question number four by Mr. Mikołaj Chmielak. And Professor Niesiołowski, Gurecki, and Nowak will be answering. The floor is yours. To be followed by Ms. Marta Wrzosek. Hello, my question will be addressed to Professor Niesiołowski. Dear Dian, if you have misled, in reality, the student representatives in the Electoral College by sending an email that alleged, uh, that alleged that the president of the student's government has not forwarded information about the meeting to which you invited students, then how would you imagine the cooperation with representatives of students and students in general? To be honest, this does not build up trust and it bodes rather ill for our cooperation. Professor Łukasz Niesiewowski, thank you very much. As I answered one of the previous questions, self-government of students is our natural partner for cooperation. Speaking of misleading, let me read a letter that ha from a person that has been mentioned here. Who met President Hebda on the 21st of February at the quarter headquarters of students' government. When they talked whether, uh, as to whether the students' representative would be interested in a meeting before the pre-elections. The answer came with the SMS, or rather answer didn't come, as, and I repeated my question via SMS, there was no reply to that SMS, and at the Senate's meeting, President Hebda said that the board of the students' government and student uh, uh, elect, uh, electors are not interested in, when, in meeting me before the pre-elections. That is the position I received from my representative. If it wasn't the case, really, we could uh, uh, make a mm, uh, cross interrogation and see if uh, that was really the case. Is Professor Gorecki willing to refer to that? I have refrained from answering the question by Mr. Habda, but I will not refrain from answering now. I am the youngest candidate for the position of rector, but I think my age is double to that of yours. My piece of advice is for you to fake better the, the fact that you are part of the electoral committee of our uh, current rector. Is that all you wanted to say? Yes, Mr. President. Yes, Professor. I have concluded. Is Professor Aloysi Novak willing to address this? No? Thank you. Given that, we are mm, passing to the question number five, to be asked by Ms. Marta Wrzosek, and will be answered by Professor Gurecki, Novak, and Niesiałowski. And the next question will be addressed by Mr. Adam Wurman. The next assessment of uh, universities is uh, approaching. Do you see a central issue related to doctoral schools and what can be done in order to avoid any problems in the future? Professor Gurecki, the floor is yours. Thank you for this question. Doctoral schools and PhD candidates are very important to me. First, let us wait for the assessment process and how it will pan out. But my general demand, overall demand, is to strengthen doctoral schools. Because by building weak institutions, 
we are making suffer people who are active in these institutions uh, by researching and getting their um, dissertations defended. So I see more autonomy for doctoral schools and more power delegated to the head of doctoral school. Not because, as I said before, I believe that, not that I believe that doctoral schools are the only and ideal solution, this is not what I believe. I believe that doctoral studies can be carried out by a relatively small institute with success, but this is the law. I believe that the law is wrong on that, but if this law remains and in force, we will have to strengthen doctoral schools. There is no choice. As I said, weak institutions will hurt doctoral candidates. And the good of our doctoral candidates should be always placed in the first position. We should always prioritize that. Professor Novak. Dear Professor, doctoral schools have not been warmly accepted at the beginning at the University of Warsaw. There were a lot of resistance. As a result, among other things, a sizable number of deans in the first stages of uh, the existence of doctoral schools, one or two years, did not accept the existence of them. The reason was that on the one hand, deans didn't have an impact on how the doctoral schools worked, and on the other hand, they were forced, they were duty-bound to take care of PhD candidates by asking them to join research projects and to teach. In a way, there was this um, dissonance between the two. Me, together with deans and with the doctoral candidates' government, and the candidates, we were able to make doctoral schools part and parcel of the architecture of the University of Warsaw, and they are all embraced by the community. The youth who are visiting me is mature, and its maturity is also shown by the fact that they want the schools to work well, that classes taught there are taught on a high level, they want to publish and they, will, they want to go, make good research and write good dissertations. This is also the position of the heads of doctoral schools and their deputy heads. I don't know what will be the situation in the future. We've made certain attempts to differentiate according to the achievements of PhD candidates certain forms, or rather actually to measure their achievements. And I have to say, the whole thing bodes well. When it comes to research projects and conferences, uh, as panelists or paper presenters or keynote, uh, we can boast many successes. So I think the system has taken its roots. Moreover, we have supported on numerous occasions doctoral schools, both from the Research University Excellence Initiative funding and from the central funding. As you know, the law is not so disastrous in this respect, but it lacks certain funding for doctoral schools. The burden lies here on the university and different units of university. And the central university structures have taken over these tasks. Moreover, let me say that I was the prime mover, but this is not that important. It's important to stress the role of PhD candidates, uh, the supervisors, and the head of doctoral studies program, that we all are, have been organizing cyclical seminars where 
research results have been presented. And I have to say that in every field of natural sciences, humanities, social sciences, the results are great. Recently we've had humanities, Polish studies and other humanities. Um, before we've had the natural sciences conference. And I'm really pleased that these seminars are attended by an ever-growing number of people, uh, by several dozens of people. It started with about a dozen of people. So I'm an optimist in this respect. But we indeed want to wait for the results of the assessment. And I have had discussions with the uh, newly elected uh, PhD candidates board, and I also discussed with the old-term board, and we had certain ideas as to the laws and as to the internal regulations. But it's not me, but the boards, the heads, and all those who teach at these doctoral schools, uh, they should have the prime, be the prime movers as they know everything about it. Now the floor goes to Mr. Łukasz Nisiołowski panel. Thank you very much for this question. Uh, this is a challenge, and I listened to um, Professor Novak talking positively about the structure, but I do believe that the form should be under scrutiny. We will soon have first graduates of doctoral schools. There will be an external evaluation conducted. And I'm not fully convinced by added value offered by this arbitrarily created structure. The doctoral candidates themselves will be working according to the conditions they are given by the faculties and not by the schools. So if we were to genuinely assess the schools and if we were to conclude that these structures or this structure brings profits for the university and for the students in questions in question then they will continue as a natural thing but i think there will be time to revise or reconsider the workings of the doctoral schools let me point you to the fact that one of the meetings of the senate the representative of phd candidates ask us whether the rector has turned to the outer bodies, uh, foreign uh, examiners that could examine the workings of PhD uh, schools, doctoral schools. And then the rector said, we had enough of our own experts, we don't have to call experts from abroad. Hopefully this is a correct move, but in fact, our doctoral studies should be carried out within the context of international science. And it is the role of the doctoral candidates to tell us whether the offering offer of University of Warsaw is the right one for them. Thank you, Professor. Let me now pass to uh, the question number six. And we have 45 questions in front of us. That is about 12 hours of work. Be, uh, this question will be asked by Mr. Adam Goodman uh, to, be, uh, to be addressed by Professor Nishiwowski, uh, uh, by Novak, Gurecki and uh, Nishiwowski. And the next uh, person that will be asking question is uh, Jan Nagurec uh, Nishiwowski. I have a question related to the commercialization processes. Uh, there are several external financing sources uh, supporting spin-offs, uh, supporting, for instance, uh, uh, UWRC, as well as different scientists. Uh, how would you perceive the process of uh, uh, making the university closer to those standards? Yes. Thank you so much. It's not easy to answer this simple question. On one hand, I think we could see the necessity to have sources, financing sources, 
wsparcie z ministerstwa. One hand the support from the Ministry of Science and then to the Ministry of Development, Technology and what have you. And then we should also take into consideration financing from or by business by the business sector. So far, we have succeeded in collecting different funds. We have funds for different activities, yet not enough. In the future, I see certain solutions. The University of Warsaw could negotiate with other universities on financing from the ministry, for instance, and also from the business sector, from the industry sector, for other institutions. Perhaps there could even be a third route of action Let's think about research projects. A certain share of funds uh, could be in the hands of uh, the president, rector, or another individual. On, an, on the other hand, we don't collect enormous funds. And I don't think we should burden researchers and weaken the process of uh, inventing different things. So I guess the question lies in us finding a good system, financing system for research projects and not necessarily publications but to the application of uh, research results, seeking the responses to this question needs thinking about whether in the world of uh, collecting points it's more important to uh, publish and collect these points, or perhaps we should focus on another area of interest and first conduct research, and only then implement and publish the results of research we conduct. Perhaps we should do both. So far, we are applying bypasses of concrete solutions and we should think closely about the budget and undertake different negotiations with the ministers. We should then think about internal and external financing. Thank you so much, Professor. And now, Professor Łukasz Niesiałowski, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. I will uh, try to answer shortly. There are different aspects of the university's functioning where the university should support uh, research, not necessarily because it gives a certain profit, but because this is a mission. This is the mission of the university. We could think about patents, for instance, which contributes uh, to the welfare of the society in general. I think this question is, should not be addressed to the rector, but to the Minister of Infrastructure, even more than the Minister of Science. I think that we definitely do not pioneer uh, in industry. So I guess that we should think about how much budget we want to spend on a given thing, and we need to increase the scale of our activities here. I don't think that the budget of the Ministry of Science and Higher Education is the best addressee of this question, and I don't think that they would fully facilitate the 
commercialization of research, we do have a certain share of the budget. Uh, but I, I'm thinking now about the National Center of uh, uh, Research and Development. They have uh, huge HAP funds or EU funds. I think that commercialization should be supported by these uh, institutions. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Professor Maciej Górecki. The university supports basic research and this should be its primary role. I think I'm quite radical here. And I think that the commercialization process should not be put into action too soon. Many projects were first thought to broaden someone's knowledge and only then they led to the commercialization of, of research. This shouldn't be forced. I think that the vice rector, the deputy rector uh, or another individual, another entity should monitor uh, researchers, especially the STEM ones, for potential commercialization of their research. At the same time, I'm a purist here and I think that the university should be a place and is a place of basic research. Thank you so much. Now uh, I would like to give the floor to Janata to Joanna Pianowska to be addressed by Professor Niesiołowski, Professor Gurecki and Professor Nowak, followed by Mr. Olczak. For mm, birth reasons, so to say, date of birth reasons, I am interested in a senior policy of the University of Warsaw. Do you believe, gentlemen, that the university has been uh, involved in the fates of their uh, emeritus employees, their social financing, uh, the social funding and health necessities? And on the other hand, and I predict that the negative, there will be a negative uh, response for the next term, uh, but would there be a space to build the house of emeritus employees of University of Warsaw, or even a uh, um, announcing of it, a building process? Professor Niesiewowski, thank you very much for this question. This is one of the most important people, as all of us will become pensioners uh, at some point in our lives, and we have not been sufficient in doing uh, things. And I believe that as an employer, a university should get involved in, uh, in emeritus workers' policies and fates. And they should, the university should perceive it as added value, as their experiences, their knowledge should be um, grasped and used. And we do, know it, do not do that to a sufficient level. Uh, the assessment committees, the committees for competitions, uh, contract competitions, these workers, these uh, ex-workers, are really valuable to be recalled to the university as they are both from the outside and from the inside and they can provide support for the university. And I do believe that there is much to do in this respect and we should be treating seriously the word universitas which is not about full-time employment, not about studying, but about a community of people that have are involved in this alma mater. When it comes to the House of Emeritus employees, unfortunately we have more and more emeritus people, but in the first uh, line of activities we should involve the youth. We should be talking to the municipal authorities so that maybe they could co-create this 
um, investment together with our town hall and that should be taken up uh, that would definitely be considered by me should there be funding for that thank you very much and now professor Maciej Gorecki thank you for this question there are two related phenomena that make the very definition of senior workers evolve dynamically first the average lifespan will increase. We continue to be for a longer time healthy and fit to work for longer. That's one factor. And the other general broad factor is that we are approaching the staff crisis, staffing crisis at Polish Academy. Not only in, Poly in this university. Most probably we will have to reach out for the abilities and talents of senior workers. Once they retire. Of course, we need to balance it against the necessities of the youth. But we should be able to employ for longer periods of time those workers that are now, those employees that would be emeritus professors, for example. For example, employ them on a part-time basis. This is already taking place, but I think it will grow in its significance. And I totally support steps in this direction. I agree with Professor Nieszewowski that senior employees of our university have much to offer. The seniors' home, house, is an excellent idea, is a fresh idea. I've just heard about it and it's very hard to comment it like that on the spot, but it really sounds great. So to all my extent I will support it. Thank you very much and now Rector, the Rector. Thank you Professor for this question. The answer has two or even three parts. When it comes to the most simple matters, to the simplest matters, university does have a senior employees policy. Uh, that is, we do support people who are um, retired. We have some fundings. And part of our senior community benefits from these mm, funds. The second part is that we do employ all people who are retired and want to continue their uh, work. There may be some exceptions for those people that didn't want to be employed or the commu community didn't want them to be employed. So I always try to convince the head of institute or the dean to continue the employment of such an emeritus employee for two or three years more. This can be repeated, of course. But we do not do that against the will of the community. And now, as long as the University of Warsaw will cope with its development of young employees and on the other hand will have funding for employing pensioners or emeritus employees we will continue the policy as has been set out before if of course if I were to continue at the home of the University of Warsaw but my message is simple if we talk about respect for the for people, I want it to be a genuine respect. I want the people who have had an impact on the university, who taught, who supervised our youth at the BA, MI, the doctoral studies, or in the habilitation procedures or uh, procedure for awarding titles of professors. We want them to continue their employment for as long as they want. However, the director, director is duty-bound to 
uh, get the money, get the funding to employ these people. And on the scale of the entire university, we need more than a dozen million zlotys per year in this respect. And I'm not ashamed to repeat what I've already said. There has never been any issue with extending the job contracts for these emeritus employees. And should they remain at the post of director, I will continue this policy of balancing between the youngest and the oldest employees. As you may know and remember, university has decided, and I take full responsibility for that, not to sell out um, the housing for holidays. The one in Kiwi has just been renovated and the one in Wukenching by the seaside will probably renovate it. This is also having in mind the needs of the elderly so that they can take rest whenever they want and when their conditions allow them to go there and the sense of dignity for them is very important. And when it comes to seniors' house, well, this is something important. We are thinking about that. Our, the previous authorities have thought about it, but it didn't come to pass. I've had dozens of conversations with the Polish Academy of Sciences because I believed we could have a joint project in this respect. And it would be easier for us to convince the donors of the land, for example, but taking into consideration what I know today, it won't be that easy to cooperate with the Polish Academy of Sciences on this matter. But in the coming four years, the university will take their decision on its own to suggest solutions in terms of the House of Seniors. The cooperation with the Polish Academy of Sciences is fraught because they are in a very difficult situation, a delicate situation. Thank you very much, Rector. And now, I would like to ask Mr. Jur Pawełczak to ask his question. And to be addressed by Professor Gulecki, then Nowak, then Nisiołowski. Next in line is Ms. Zuzanna Kubiak. Good morning, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I am from the Faculty of uh, Artes Liberales. Uh, it's her, and my question is about uh, the future of the University of Warsaw. What steps you would like to uh, take against uh, the discrimination of the University of uh, Warsaw, discrimination against religion, uh, disabilities, gender, sexual orientation, as well as nationality. And how would you like to contribute to a better environment for different people at the University of Warsaw? Another question is whether you would like to change the current disciplinary procedures once discrimination occurs. How would you take care of uh, that? Professor Maciej Gurecki, the floor is yours. I'm a leftist. And I will definitely support any anti-discrimination actions. I don't know the details. The status quo when it comes to these matters. But disciplinary actions. In this regard, I would like these actions to be uh, taken faster. I also was engaged in one disciplinary action that took for years, more than one year definitely. I plan on as much as I can of course, the disciplinary committees are independent bodies, but as much as I uh, can, I would push forward 
uh, for matters to be taken on faster. And if we are to have uh, more spokespersons or more committees, we will have to do that. Przede wszystkim, przede wszystkim, jeśli zostanę wybrany. First and foremost, if I'm elected, I will look into the status quo. Trudno mi w tej chwili znać wszelkie, wszelkie. It's hard for me to know all the details in this matter. Thank you so much, Professor Aloysi Nowak. Dziękuję bardzo. Thank you very much for this question. Sprawa, którą. This is a matter uh, that is fundamental for the university. The University of Warsaw, mobbing, um, when it comes to mobbing, discrimination, did very much in Poland, the most, I think, out of all Polish universities. So this. This wasn't easy matters for us. And we weren't ready, adjusted to mobbing discrimination matters. At the beginning of my rector's career, if I may say so, I wasn't fully or even partially aware that problems like that are so deep in the academic community. And at least partially, I had to look into the details of the matter. I invited our ombudsman, our spokespersons, uh, so several people, the president of the Senate committee, for the preparation of rules on how to handle situations like that. The proposal of managing them was uh, issued about two months ago. As far as I know, the majority of the universities... Oh, there is Professor Garstka, by the way. Professor Maciej Garstka, Professor Maciej Garstka the head of the committee, together with the team of uh, several people, prepared solutions in this regard. Are they 100% enough? I don't know. But the reception of our community and the external environment uh, is good. When it comes to the committees themselves, we cannot actually uh, affect uh, the functioning, the actions of the committees. The Senate selects the committees and they function independently. And uh, it's good, actually, that the rector doesn't have any impact on the committees. Well, self-governance is about the independence, and even if that takes long, we should uh, somehow have this in mind. These committees function according to certain rules and their own conscience. We took a great uh, step forward, for instance, preparing a plugin for USOS, allowing for different identifications of stud students, employees. And I think that this will solve many problems. The plugin is technically implemented by the uh, Adam Mickiewicz University in Poznan. Then there is the USOS Center. And the plugin should be ready within several days. I think that it should be ready this month or next month. And that really should solve certain problems when it comes to employees and students. This used to be a bigger problem, about 35% of working students, uh, of students were working, while currently 
we still have working students and I my stand on this is that we should enable working deans never reported massively about this particular problem perhaps the deputy rector for student affairs was informed about any issue in this matter but I think and I heard that they were solved and even if not they will be solved in the nearest future thank you so much for bringing this uh, this issue up. Thank you very much. And now, Professor Łukasz Szałowski. I will start by working students, students who still work. Problems are solved locally. Decisions to facilitate students uh, or facilitate changing groups, switching groups by students who have undertaken the professional career or have to support themselves financially is are taken locally at particular in particular units. Uh, so deans and are faced with challenges related to the fact that certain schedules have to be flexible enough for students to be able to work and study at the same time. And they have to study to meet certain standards. Uh, local communities uh, and local responsibilities should be developed in this matter. I think that certain rules cannot be implemented centrally, but uh, there are also other rules such as those uh, solutions, uh, such as those, for instance, for studying parents. In this regards, I think uh, certain solutions could be implemented or uh, we could be even more flexible. There are students who have to work or become parents and by the same token they resign from studies. This is a great problem. When it comes to discrimination in turn, this is an obvious matter. We shouldn't even be discussing this. And it seems to be a trivial opinion, but I still will verbalize it. I think that the university should name discrimination, should point out discrimination, and it, we shouldn't articulate that it happens, oh well, uh, that we cannot do anything about it. This is a matter happening that has been happening for quite some time and that arises and stirs uh, many discussions. Uh, being equal, equality and equity uh, constitute the foundation of the university. On the other hand, there are situations uh, where discrimination happens uh, due to ignorance or lack of tact. Sometimes it can be battled by informing that something shouldn't be said or done. However, if uh, uh, this becomes a chronic problem, then the university, together with the rector, should uh, draw consequences and not agree for discrimination. Universities should be discrimination-free. Thank you so much. Thank you. And now, next question, ladies and gentlemen, by Zuzanna Kubiak. And it will be responded by... Oh, do we have Zuzanna Kubiak with us? She's not there, so... The question drops out of the list since only the participants can address questions, can ask questions. So, Mr. Michał Radek, is he here? Yes, he is here. To be addressed by Professor Nisiałowski, Gurecki and Nowak. Next person in line is Ms. Julia Kucharek. Ladies and gentlemen, dear candidates, good evening. Dear Dean, referring to the previous thing, the, pay, the person that, you, that President Hebda met was Dr. Severin Dmowski. He suggested, and I quote, to make a steer because Łukasz doesn't have the opportunity to win, but it will strengthen our negotiating position in discussions with uh, Dr. Uh, with Professor Novak. 
So Dr. Dmowski didn't want to meet the electors, but uh, rather the so-called group holding power. Then this SMS was addressed by President Hebda. Each student, he has free voice, there is no group holding power, and he will not be organizing meetings with such an alleged group. That is why we, feel, we believe it was negative for the, uh, the Dean to use intermediaries to contact with us. He should rather... I mean, the point is that the Dean Strzelecki was the one who inspired the candidacy of uh, of uh, doc of Professor Nishowowski. And in this context, let me ask uh, Professor Gorecki to stop faking that he's not in the electoral uh, uh, campaign of the Dean Nishowowski Spano. You are only a henchman for Professor Nishowowski Spano. You are attacking students. We don't want to hear you. And we don't want to be asking anything from you. Your time is up. Thank you very much. Now, Professor Łukasz Nisiewowski will be addressing this question. Thank you very much. I don't know if all the electors are interested in these negotiating details, but I suggest uh, and the, these things to be transferred to the meeting where the, all the interested parties, those, including those who are not here, are presented. If I want to meet someone from the faculty, I first address the dean. Pre president Hebda, as the president of the students' board, is the natural addressee of such uh, request. It, uh, it was an act of desperation of my, on my part to send this letter to all the electors, student electors because I thought that my endeavors were, were not successful in going through the proper channels. That is all I need to say to address. Professor Maciej Gorecki, do you want to address this question? Of course, I was named. You didn't listen to, to my piece of advice that I expressed just a few moments ago, but I will keep repeating it. As I believe, in the teaching potential and abilities I have. Dear sir, if you were to go to Apollo and ask the people who know about football in Apollo, you will realize that I'm really well known in this community of football players. You know that you, you I wasn't on the wing, I was uh, the stopper. My weight is not good for this function. And this is the only thing I uh, can, that I can tell you about the wing player, me being the wing player. When it comes to your approach to democracy, we have the, uh, a recent article published by Gazeta Wyborcza uh, that uh, describes your approach to democracy. So please acknowledge that this self-government, led by the activists of the Polish People's Party, is not the paradigm, paragon of democracy. Thank you very much. Is Professor Alois Novak willing to take the floor? No, thanks. Thank you very much, dear rector. Now let us pass to the next question, to be uh, asked by Ms. Julia Kucharek. Is she here? To be followed, no, Ms. Kuchabek is not here, so the question drops, is dropped out, drops out from the list. Mr. Łukasz Pieczare, is he here? Yes. The sequence of responses, Professor Nowak, Niesiołowski and Gurecki. Let me remind you that we have only two minutes per question to be followed by Mr. Marcin Zich. Dear professors, I would kindly 
ask you to respond to the following question that is important for the unit that I represent. What tools, activities and motivation actions university authorities would like to encourage further the researchers to increase the number of subjects uh, reported to the Center of, of, for the Development of Technology and Knowledge, subjects related to copyright laws. Thank you very much for this question. First, let me say that the point is to raise awareness. Intellectual property is something important. Secondly, the central authorities of the university has, have some funding, funds. If we were offered a suggestion from you that would include the curricula, because I understand you were trying to raise this awareness by teaching students, by seminars, by discussions and debates. So, if this initiative comes out from you, we are more than open for lectures, seminars, and conferences to be co-supported co -supported by us. Perhaps not at, at every faculty. Because we want faculties to be independent when it comes to research and the teaching they do, but as a central authorities, we are in favor of this initiative. Even more, considering the fact that University of Warsaw and its central office does support the center as a self-studying organization that supports many fields of studies that are taught at our university. Studies by managing um, personnel for heads of uh, basic units, for librarians, for administrative staff members of our university. So when it comes to teaching about intellectual properties, uh, the IP, we are very keen on teaching it. We can have one or two semester long studies that would be addressed first and foremost to those people who are dealing with IP related issues. And should anyone be interested in that, they will be willing to participate in these schemes. We have funding for that and I think we may find a fertile ground to teach this subject at the university we will find the best possible suitable unit of our university and we want these classes to be taught by employees of our university and the same goes for postgraduate studies for librarians some specialists that are dealing with book protection or security procedures could be invited to participate in these uh, classes. We should also involve our, our external expert. Thank you very much. Now the floor goes to Mr. Łukasz Nisiołowski Spanow. I'm pleased that we have funding, as said by Professor Nowak. Then we can target the, uh, these expenditures. I think IP related issues. I'm not an expert in this field, but I do believe that all members of our community should get involved in that. And this should bear fruit in the field of IP and its use. And I think, in fact, that we should not be following this pathway. We should look for specialization. We should place funding allocate budgets for this and place special people in charge of it. We also need to explain, of course, to the students, the doctor candidates, that IP is important, but some humanities, uh, fields of humanities, will consider it as a waste of time. So the funding allotted to this purpose 
will be not effective. That is why we should design this with an idea in mind, to have the best possible impact in a given area. And I do believe that university is diverse, is broad, but we should have a specialty, maybe not a narrow specialty, but to pick and pick several areas in which intellectual property related issues uh, will be tackled and where these will be most effective. Now the floor goes to Professor Maciej Gulecki. I will not pretend that I know a lot about the subject of IP, but let me assure you that all these activities beneficiary for University of Warsaw, as explained by Professor Novak and Nishawowski, if I were to be chosen to the position of director, I will support these activities. Thank you very much, and now the question will be asked by Mr. Marcin Zicht to be uh, addressed by Professor Nishawowski, Kulecki and Novak for, to be followed by Ms. Joanna Preissner. Gentlemen, I will go back to Haydn saying I won't be too original here. You all mentioned solidarity, equity, and uh, the rector said that the university is stable, financially stable. However, frequently we are not proud uh, as institutes and units. Uh, um, so my question is about subsidies. Uh, we receive the same subsidies at the same time having the same amount of money to spend. Now, when it comes to my unit, uh, we have about 70% uh, of loss we have to fill in with something. So we have debts uh, and we have losses. Uh, Professor Novak said that the university tries to support us, but at the same time the situation in which we are in constant deficit does not facilitate um, efficient management, the efficient management of the different units. Uh, so my question is how do you perceive this matter and how are you planning on solving it? Thank you so much, Professor uh, Nishawowski. Thank you very much. This question falls into investment and management that I touched upon in my presentation. I think that uh, the rector and uh, other uh, that particular different researchers should be uh, taking care of uh, research uh, and not necessarily uh, look for financing. This is what the university should be focusing on and at the same time the university should handle the costs uh, of uh, and organizing uh, the costs, uh, sorry, the financing of the costs. We shouldn't be asking those who actually do research to organize uh, financing for research. So, what I propose is to change the priorities of financing at the university. The central authorities shouldn't be giving a, depending on their own opinion and deciding individually whether to give money to a certain building, a garden, an initiative. No, it shouldn't be up to certain individuals uh, to decide about what gets funding or not. Everything should be stable, should be predictable, and uh, we should have a, a constant, transparent infrastructure of uh, financing different um, initiatives. And uh, researchers should do research. Professor Gorecki. I think that researchers should be focusing on teaching and research. Sometimes transfer the transfer of technology into practice. And not necessarily uh, be focusing on economy. Perhaps we should reprioritize uh, Revalorize uh, our strategy, especially when it comes to particular facilities. 
perhaps we don't need that modern buildings, even if we would like to work there. At my faculty, the faculty of psychology, there was a number of people who wanted to stay in the old building, resembling my high school, so to, to be frank. This building is probably cheaper when it comes to managing it. So I think that we need a certain plan and support certain uh, units when it comes to implementing it, as you mentioned. Thank you so much. Rector, the floor is yours. Professor, this is a great question. Because it touches upon basic things. The rector needs to see the reality as it is. The university is stable, the university is stable yes, I said that. And we won't have any problems for the upcoming year and a half or two years to support you. However, without changing the rules of financing, we will always be chasing after something that is unachievable. We will always be somehow left behind. And we should be able to support everything on a high level and even develop up skill. We should also take into consideration the dynamics of the development and the possible increase of remunerations. So, first and foremost, I support decentralization, not centralization. The rector won't be able to address all problems deans face. If you decide on being a dean or a rector, then apart from writing books, apart from writing books, you should be aware of the fact that you're responsible of taking care of, for taking care of the unit that you manage. And this is related to some extent to looking for financing. This is what you, as the head of the unit, do. We should all be aware of the fact that we are, have the responsibility for our units and the rector representing the university as the institution, not as a physical person, is a strong institution and can represent us even externally to get additional funds. Because the rector represents not one single unit but the whole of the university, a great power. So far, we have succeeded, and I do believe that we will, until we create a system we've already discussed, and we should form an iron capital, an iron asset at the University of Warsaw. We started this initiative and we will finish it, hopefully. We should have our own funds managed by an institution fully controlled by the University of Warsaw to support uh, the collection of extra funds that are beyond what we can get from the budget. We should take the example of Finnish universities, for instance, not to mention the Anglo-Saxon ones as well as the American ones. So far, the rector has been, to put it in very simple terms, the owner of particular units, and therefore they cannot lead these units to bankruptcy. So this is what solidarity lies in. We talked about those uh, 20 million that were given to particular units at the University of Warsaw. 
We were also talking about funds and we found funds that we passed on to particular units to support uh, the efforts, the research efforts. They were to support particular researchers, not particular uh, bigger initiatives. So please do not be afraid uh, and do not worry about financing. Each and every unit will be supported, but this won't answer all the problems that we have. We should address the problem as it is and therefore look for new additional sources of financing. Thank you so much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the 14th question by Mrs. Anna Bunt. And then Professor Gurecki Novak. And Prof Professor Nishowowski will answer this question. Uh, Mr. Adam Genshin will be next. My question is about pro ecological activities at the University of Warsaw. Will there be a body that will be occupying itself with these activities in the next term? Or will a deputy rector be in charge of these? Thank you very much for this question. And now Maciej Gubecki will answer this question. I think I didn't hear that uh, question. Was it about pro-ecological activities? Yes. Okay. I think the best way would be to actually convene a body to work systematically in this area, an advisory body for at least when it comes to these activities. These are the actions that are popular among the contemporary society. That is why we should have a coordinating body, an advisory, and also an advisory body for that. Thank you very much. Now the floor goes to rector, the rector. When it comes to pro-ecological and eco-friendly development activities, as you know, University of Warsaw has done a lot. Rector Ewa Krogulec has been in charge, in particular, with these activities. A eco-friendly eco platform has been set up. As a result, we were placed highly in the rankings, in global rankings. We were among the top universities, leading five or six universities in this area. I am aware that not everything has been completed and done, and we do have numerous things to, to do. And to be honest, as far as the organizational matters, should there be a deputy director for that, or should we set up a new body to, to deal with that? And in fact, we do have a plan, planning potentially an officer for these matters. I am not clear when it comes to answering this question. But my belief is that the present way of working in this field is a good one. If we were to change that, we would need to consult with the members of academic community. I am, as a vector, open for such consultations, if you have suggestions in this field. But to my mind, it is beyond any doubt that this is an important matter for the University of Warsaw, not only because University of Warsaw is one want to be perceived, wants to be perceived as pro-ecological and nature-friendly institution, but we want our studying youth at the BA, MA or doctoral studies to be able to see how we fulfill our pro-ecological role and to be convinced, having completed studies, that this is the right direction to be working for in the contemporary world, as the Mother Earth is the only one we have, and we know how the world works and how overburdened the nature is. Let me grasp this opportunity to express the fact that we should be 
using the skills of our faculty members at the Faculty of Geology and other faculties who are well acquainted with the, these matters and will point us to the specific actions in this field. And now the floor goes to Professor Łukasz Niesiołowski. Pan profesor Nowak Professor Nowak said that university should be perceived as a pro-ecological university. I think the university should be pro-ecological and it's not that important as it, the, the, the way it's perceived, although we do build up prestige. We have also our special offices for these matters, but we should have local activities. Unless we have local activities, there won't be any results. And our faculty, we said that the grey recycled paper will be purchased by us. We have been drinking tap water, filtered tap water. We, didn't, we are not buying plastic bottles anymore. But sometimes we do have plastic bottles in these meetings at our university. So there is a lot of things to be done because it's not only about teaching students certain projects, certain practices, so that they have these mm, reflexes of ecological behavior, like closing down the tap water if they brush their teeth. Whether this should be done by a, an officer, or a body, or a deputy rector, well, if the level of this matter would be increased, then perhaps we should have a deputy rector in charge, but it's not about the, the level, but rather the intensity of this activity that we should be working at, and we should have local activities, which would probably be more efficient. Thank you very much, and now we are passing to a question uh, offered by Mr. Adam Gengvin. To be answered by Professor Nowak, Nisiołowski and Gurecki, to be followed by Ms. Agnieszka Kapusta. Thank you very much. I would like to come back to the issue of finances. What is your diagnosis of reasons for the fact that uh, the financial outcomes of University of Warsaw has been, have been decreasing over the past few years. The financial results in 2019 was, 30, was 93 million zlotys, uh, and now we have 900,000 zlotys surplus, and also the Social Benefits Fund is uh, gradually drying out as the funds withdrawn are higher than the funds uh, incorporated into it. I have seen the Statistical Office of Poland data, and in fact I see that this is not characteristic for the entire public university sector. The public universities have noted um, more surplus than we do. Perhaps this is because of investment. Perhaps um, other non-discrete non funding wasn't that much as it used to be. So what are the reasons for this phenomenon? And can we think seriously about building core capital of the University of Warsaw, taking into account this matter? Professor, fear not. We do have funding. As I have been saying, we have the tables for that. In 2020, University of Warsaw had an income to the tune of 1,823,000,000 in 2022, 1,695,000, followed by 1,700,000,000 in 2022, followed last year by 1,900,000,000. We have bonds for investments. And the revenue, the income we had in the past two years of the term was 395 million zlotys. Our investments that you mentioned, the multi-annual program expenditure rose between 2016 and 2019 and 2020 
in 2023 to the tune uh, by 859%. Uh, there are other information. There is the land that we acquired, which of course is not assessed on the market basis, but on an accounting basis. This is 39.5 million slotties at the Fumaiska. Then there are additional 23.148 million slotties. There are other non-discretionary funding for the employees of the University of Warsaw to the tune of 42.862 million slotties. However, the crux of the matter is that what you read from these statistics, and you did read it correctly, is not the entire funding base of our university. This fund, uh, these funding flows into investment accounts. These are not streaming funding, but also, but also resources. Part of these resources, which are not earmarked, can be used by us to, for current expenditure. But we are almost totally safeguard against any financial conditions. That is why I haven't said a thing untrue on that matter. If you were to ask me whether this amount calculated now is precisely the same 395,000 and that's it no digits after the dot of course this wouldn't be the case this is only a matter of uh, the rough numbers and I take full responsibility here by saying and I can back up with uh, the bursary with Dr. Helstowski, who is the Chancellor, and you can contact with them to confirm these facts that I've been telling you. You shouldn't be afraid. University is not in red, and of course, at some period in time, as you said, when we were paying out bonus remunerations, and we've been paying seven times these bonuses, We've loaned internally from the social fund, but this has been thoroughly paid up and there is no threat towards the social fund. Anyone who wants to apply will be able to apply from the, to, from the funding from the social fund. I am absolutely clear on that. I can see the bursary, the bursary head of the bursary, who is seen if you can, you can confirm that with the lady there. Thank you very much. And now let me ask Professor Nieszelowski to take the floor. I'm a little bit confused because it's hard for me to um, be held in accountant to the, the expenditure performed in the years 2020-2024. I am following the data published by the university and it does seem that the annual profit of the university has been declining but I understand that we, un we do have current expenditure and investments. The question is, how do we get this information? Unwittingly, I have been part of a controversy be between me and Professor Novak, because at the Senate meeting, I said that these bonuses have been paid up by the social fund. And at the Christmas meeting, the director said that wasn't the case, the funding was different, and the same day I, I was wired the relevant money and the transfer title said social fund. So I believe that the way to communicate these things is not transparent. There may be some transfers between internal units of the university and it may be part of the problem. When it comes to this core fund for the university, if I were a rector, I would only set this one up if I were to receive a donation of $10 billion. I would definitely set up in these circumstances uh, such a fund and I would have definitely lived out of interest. If I don't have this uh, donation, 
then it would be irresponsible to create such a core uh, fund for the university. Thank you very much. And now, Professor Maciej Gurecki. When it comes to finances, I do trust Rector Novak. So it's very hard to question anything that he said. Of course, the role of university is not to be a profitable institution. Professor Grenjvin's question, Grenjvin's question, the first part of it, is related to the second, the core capital idea. I am pretty skeptical when it comes to core capital issue. This is an American concept uh, devised at private universities mainly. I simply cannot imagine us doing that. If you were, if you were to have a donation as um, imagined by Professor Nishowski, of course we would do that, but I don't know how we would be able to do that uh, out of our current expenditure to the tune of the funding of Princeton University. We have a different context, we have a different uh, property structure, different conditions when it comes to organizational and funding matters. Thank you very much indeed. And now let us pass to the question by Ms. Agnieszka Kapusta. This is a question that is directed directly to Professor Maciej Gurecki. Therefore, we will change the sequence of responses, Professor Gurecki, followed by Professor Nisiowski and Novak. Good afternoon. I have a question about expertise. You mentioned uh, being the youngest candidate for the rector's position. We don't know your organization, organizational and decision-making activities. Wouldn't you like to start making these decisions? For instance, as a dean, or any other relevant position that would constitute uh, a certain point of reference for students. Thank you so much for this question. This isn't a matter of age. Professor Powys, for instance, became a rector uh, being aged the same I am now. So it's not about age in years. I don't have experience similar to my co-candidates. At the same time, my candidacy is some sort of a protest against what is happening at the university, something that I address uh, in my writing, I think, and, and speaking, I think that uh, the university is not functioning well and there are many bad examples at the Kazimierzowski Palace going down from the central level to different units. I also think that it's worth candidating because currently fundamental values are at risk and I will be protecting these values uh, as long as I am at this university. I will speak in favor of these values and uh, will I become a rector? There is a certain possibility I won't, but I don't dream of power for the sake of power itself. It's about values. And I've always been protecting, fighting for this, for these values. And the same I did, uh, for instance, when it comes to democracy uh, during the previous term of our political authorities. And the same happens uh, with, uh, intelli with the, the, the world of uh, academia here. I have two research projects. I had my hands full in uh, two research. I have projects um, from external with external funds and EDU. 
But at the same time, I also thought it's worth considering uh, taking two months to express those values that are at risk today. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Professor. And now, Professor Łukasz Niesiołowski. Uh, thank you so much. I will refrain from answering about uh, Professor Kurecki's competences and expertise. And now, Professor Aloysi Novak, would you like to contribute? No, thank you. So now, ladies and gentlemen, let's move on to the next question by Mr. Dariusz Rzosek. And the next one will be by Mr. Bogdan Czukowski. And now the floor will be to Professor Gurecki, Novak and Niesiołowski. Thank you so much. So, first of all, I will start with those high values. The university is a carrier of uh, different values of people with uh, different political aspirations, different political views and different values in order to fulfill different needs related to these values we need a facility which is beautiful and points out to us building different uh, values the central campus is one of the most beautiful places you can imagine i am deeply moved by the beauty of this place on the other hand, in Dolina Służewiecka, we can see the southern cam campus with uh, the management uh, building being a dominant and uh, being full of sparks, uh, especially in the, uh, in the night, during the night uh, when it's illuminated. And now let's go to the Ochota campus. This uh, is um, a pasta street um, together with a bunch of buildings. It's not uh, a beautiful place, it's not a comfortable place, a friendly place. And if you look from the Banaha Street, you can see a plate uh, saying the University of Warsaw. So I think that this place also actually uh, should be treated as a landmark uh, of the university. This is the fault of uh, the central administration and the city that the campus looks in a certain way. So I propose to organize an architectural contest um, in order to make this place a landmark. So my question is, would you support uh, my proposal? Thank you. Professor Maciej Gorecki, the floor is yours. I will be sweet and short. I would support the proposal. And I also think that the city should also contribute to the development of the campus. I think that it should be engaged into, uh, in this initiative because we as the university are also uh, a landmark of the city. Professor, I think it's uh, difficult not to agree with you. I think by the end of this year, the calendar year, by the end of 2024, Ohota will have looked like, just like you would imagine, except for the renovation works uh, which need time uh, in the sports and recreation centre. But I do agree that employees, students, PhD students cannot work, sorry, cannot wait for us to finish different uh, facilities, renovation and restoration. I think that we can somehow arrange uh, those revival works at the campus. And I hope that uh, you will be able to say that perhaps uh, plants should be different or trees should be different, but something will be done and we will consult everything with our colleagues from the Faculty of Biology. So I do agree that we should have something um, done and if, well, look 
after that great building being prepared for the Faculty of uh, Psychology in the middle of this campus. So there was something done, there has something uh, that w has been done. Thank you so much. And now, Professor Łukasz Nisiołowski. Thank you very much. I think that the Ohota campus is an appealing matter. Similarly to the one of this campus, which is beautiful, but still has the potential of becoming even better. Now, looking at the Hota, we are actually looking into the past. With the period of investing into individual buildings, not necessarily the campus itself, and therefore the buildings never came into dialogues. The university owns different allotments and therefore the investments were also done separately. There is not a common land management plan. And different facilities hosting particular faculties do not correspond to one another. Contrary to what Professor Novak said, I think that organizing an urban planning contest constitutes a good solution. I think that the university is organizing its activities on its own and these activities should be in hands of experts uh, dealing with urban planning. So they could tell us about how to make this space better. And I also think that the users of these different spaces, of these urban places, should be taken into consideration. We should ask particular users um, about what they need, a small or big architecture. Thank you so much. And now the question by Professor Bjokowski. Are you here with us? Uh, the question will be answered by Professor Novak, Nieszowowski and Gurecki. Uh, to be followed by a question by Mr. Jan Sobczak. Thank you very much. Lady, uh, dear gentlemen, I am from the Faculty of Philosophy. My question is, on the one hand, general or philosophical, but on the other hand, it's very specific. Can you ask about everything in the academia, in science, or perhaps there are certain areas or problems that, for social, political reasons, should be limited or even banned? It concerns uh, many fields, uh, genetics, physics, history, philosophy, you are talking about situations where academic research can lead to creating, for example, a dangerous algorithm or can be um, detrimental to a group of a certain characteristic. In other words, is truth an autonomous value or in our quest for truth, we, the scientists, should take into consideration socio-political aspects. We have Oppenheimer, mm. Mm. we are following in the footsteps of Oppenheimer, we have five minutes each to answer this question. Let me remind you that. Professor Novak, Professor, there are no limits. Quest for the truth is about asking for everything. You're discussing about everything and I'm absolutely in favor of this thing to remain in this way. Thank you very much. Professor Łukasz-Nikasz-Nisiołowski. My impression is that we are at a higher level. Thank you very much for this. To me, the answer is not that simple as I ju have just heard. Of course, our task as university is the quest for truth. Unconditional quest for truth. We need to study the reality, and this is why we've been created for. But in your question, there is an element of impact on the outer world. And this boils down to the concept of responsibility. 
and obviously within the university we shouldn't self-impose any restrictions to us but we should be discussing the restrictions that are functioning outside the academia and we should be discussing them at a seminar you may ask question about terrible things that happens in history these are academic debates that may lead one to say that evil is not that evil after all uh, uh, banaling the evil we can do that at the seminar but we cannot let the same language to go beyond the walls of academia and go to the papers or textbooks because therefore we will be promoting something that is socially bad or maybe socially may become socially bad this is something that requires a more input from philosophers because the responsibility of what we produce to the outer world should always remain at the back of our heads we as researchers as teachers should not be limited by anything but we should keep in mind that we are responsible for how people see us and how will they do that I don't know if this is the right answer for you this is not an unequivocal answer but in the fourth hour of this debate this is the only thing I can afford uh, to do thank you very much and now the floor goes to Professor Maciej Gowiecki thank you for this question also the first academic scientific question in this debate, actually. Dear Professor, scientists are often unable to predict the consequences of the follow from their discoveries. In the exact scientists, as has been mentioned by me before, we may have terrible solutions that will only be revealed after many years from the discovery. Some experiments, it's bad applications of some endeavors will be revealed after many years. The things are started with only the endeavor to broaden our knowledge. However, there is a different situation in social sciences. I have a unique experience in that. There is a researcher that is well known today and regarded as a racist, Satoshi Kanazawa. If you type it into Google, you will find some descriptions of his scandalous behaviors. It turns out that he's a friend of mine, he's an acquaintance of mine, and I know his story. The story behind him. And it's really touching that his sensational discoveries that had sometimes racist nature, and the researchers took the same data and showed demonstrated that this hugely statistically relevant if outcome was actually a zero one, non-relevant one. Well, we are in the world where conservatism tries to defend itself and science does show us that certain privileges are unjustified. There are no big differences uh, between genders when it comes to, for example, aptitudes for certain tasks or activities. There are no differences between people of different races when it comes to different abilities. It's only a matter of society, bringing up uh, educational opportunities, etc. So we are living in a world where, uh, where unjustified uh, privileges are defended, but these are being dismantled by thorough academic studies within the realm of social sciences. It turns out that women can cope really well with politics and it used to be, this place used to be reserved up to 70s and 80s for the men in Western countries at least and so on and so forth. These barriers are being dismantled. I am very cautious in, in saying that you can study anything you want. 
No tak jak z tym Kanazawą, tak? Just as was the case with Kanazawa. He published something, he researched something, and... Jest, jest pewne, pewna wiedza naukowa. And he produced certain scientific knowledge, but it is open for criticism. And over the course of this criticism, these hurtful claims um, may be exposed. It may become evident that these scientific proofs are quite weak. So I'm very cautious to pose these controversial and at the same time hurtful theses. And I have no good answer to this question. That is why I should I want a brief response. We could be actually discussing for many hours on this subject. Thank you very much. Indeed. I think you were aptly uh, describing this perspective. We could discuss it for hours. Now the question will be posed by Mr. Jan Sobczak. Do we have Jan Sobczak with us? The to be answered by Professor Nisiałowski, Gurecki and Nowak. The floor is yours. Oh, and the next one will in line will be Mr. Sebastian Szymański. Good evening. My question is about funding and finances. Please speak to the microphone as we cannot hear you. The question is about funding and costs. On your website we see that you want to maintain investments. Let me quote that investments in the organization units should not be overburdened with dramatical costs of maintaining institutions. The practice of passing the burden on to the faculties and other units should be curtailed as fast as possible. What is your plan in this respect, in terms of covering the costs? This question goes to Professor Nieszowski. Therefore, he will begin answering. The two other candidates will be able to take up this question, should they be willing to do so. Thank you very much. Professor Zych asked about infrastructure of botanical garden, and I can say that university does cover these expenditures, but in many respects, he, the, the university, would cover with the funding from the users of the building. For example, the Dobra 55 Street building is quite expensive to be followed by the Faculty of Psychology, to be followed by the Bednarska Street new building. The costs of its use will be high, as was well known during the design stage. Ever since the setting up of multi-annual plan of investment, we knew that these, these costs will be high, so therefore university should cover these costs. And of course, this should not be covered by research uh, costs. At some point, we were thinking that those buildings that are being abandoned should get, should be a source of income. For example, we had the Nowy Świat Street at the corner of Prac Trzech building. The Stavki building of Faculty of Psychology will be now emptied they should be used. Uh, at some point in time, the Faculty of Physics building at Hoja Street was supposed to be adapted to get an income. But it will not become a uh, profitable building because it became part of Faculty of Oriental Studies. So we need to make a thorough review of our um, uh, land estate. Then we should need a review. We will need a review of the expenditures we need to cover. However, one thing is clear the huge buildings that need to be warmed in the winter and cooled in the summer 
the university should not pass the burden of maintaining these buildings to the faculties. This is dishonest. It is the central authorities that should take care of funding for these investments and not force the users to seek out for additional profits, additional funds. Mr. Maciej Gorecki. I have nothing really to contribute to that. I do believe also that the burden should be on the shoulders of the central authorities and central budget. As I have mentioned previously, if we have problem with expensive modern buildings, we need to think over the strategy for expansion of our real estate. For, for example, we should not be building uh, modern buildings. We should be buying up older buildings that are cheaper to maintain because modern buildings will be more expensive because we have non-stop air conditioning to cover, for example. And here we need to have an approach, a fundamental and comprehensive approach. Even if we had mistakes committed in the past, but we do recognize that we did commit these mistakes, and we should compensate these two uh, certain units of our university, and we should not commit ourselves to committing more of these mistakes in the future. Thank you very much. All these new buildings that have been mentioned are the result of the multi-annual plan of investment. This is how it was perceived when they designed the plan. I wouldn't be actually so critical about these buildings, although we do know that in our climate we need to build buildings in a more cautious manner because of the energy consumption in the winter and in the summer. At the same time, we need to remember that these buildings are extraordinarily convenient and useful for the youth, the students, and they are very eager to use these buildings. Also, outer uh, environment is uh, hiring space in these buildings. Let me add another thing. Prior to our term, it actually came about that the donor that passed the money for these buildings was the budget, Polish budget. The donor assumed that the buildings would be financed following its construction from the state coffers. The situation has changed and the donor stopped financing these buildings. The decisions taken by the previous authorities or the, and the current authorities was between either taking the opportunity and investing university by, and strengthen the university thus by building these new beautiful buildings or quit from these investments, give back money and fail to implement multi-annual plan. We would never be sure about the consequences of such activities. Therefore, the previous uh, vector and us opted for the former approach. That is why we want to shoulder this burden jointly with users of these buildings. However, you should keep in mind that the shoulders of the central authorities are not as vast as to fund everything. We will need funding, as we've said, but we need to make a decision. On the one hand, we criticize the central office, that it's too active, that they're too interfering in the ministerial powers, in the corridors of power and business. On the other hand, some people say that the central authorities should be financing things. This is not an unequivocal and simple situation. Of course, if we were to have several dozens of Nobel Prize winners, the algorithm would be different. We would have fundings and we would not have to apply for these fundings and search for them. But let me repeat that the world has changed. Universities have changed. We are working in a different way to what was the case 30 or 40 years ago.
when we were allotted certain means of funding and these were then shared within the faculties. Now we need to earn our funding and we need to be aware of that. I keep repeating that at this moment in time, University of Warsaw carries out a policy and is perceived in such way that we need to earn this money. And I believe that we will be able to earn this money. We have plans for the buildings that have been mentioned by Professor Nieszowowski. We don't use certain plans of these because there is an opportunity to exchange buildings for other buildings. But I don't want to say anything more because these are business-related topics which are confidential. For example, the Stavki building will definitely be used and we have fundings to do that. Because this parcel is very important for our university. And I do believe that together with Senate's committee, we do want it to remain the property of University of Warsaw. Thank you very much indeed. Now we are passing to a question offered by Mr. Sebastian Szymański, to be responded by Professor Gulecki, Professor Nowak, Professor Nisiewowski, to be followed by Ms. Anna Siewirska. Good evening, Sebastian Szymański, Artist Liberales. There will be a finishing of a very important project uh, uh, of the University of Warsaw as a research uh, university by the end of this next term. So my question is whether you have any uh, solutions related to uh, the goals that we had, uh, for instance, uh, related to uh, organizing research centers. Please comment on this uh, if you were to become a rector. Professor Gorecki, the floor is yours. As far as I understand, uh, the Excellence uh, Initiative is a program that is to be continued. I haven't heard about uh, this particular plan to, become, to, to come to end. We have different uh, rules and different uh, inclusion criteria in this plan and we meet all the criteria as the University of Warsaw. The University of Warsaw has excellent researchers and is unique, perhaps one or two uh, in other institutions has uh, similarly good researchers, so we have succeeded in many domains. And I think that our staff uh, is excellent in this matter. Uh, we have so we are meeting different goals and speaking of goals uh, we are playing with uh, Wales today so I think that uh, speaking about them is quite uh, quite fine today the center of uh, social sciences uh, is a center that affects my judgment because I also work in social sciences and there is uh, uh, the center managed by Professor Kaczmarczyk in the library. So this also functions very well with great seminars organized there. Researchers are employed there for term, short term contracts or long term contracts and it does seem to be functioning. Should we increase financing, we could be thinking about additional projects, but I think that nowadays all functions very well. Thank you so much. Uh, Professor Alois Novak. IDU is managed by Professor Zygmunt Lalak. He provided me with a different information. 
czyli od ministerstwa, który... Similarly to the ministry financing IDOB. Naszego... Based on these information, I can uh, say that the functioning of IDOB is quite successful. There have been many questions that we addressed uh, the ministry with uh, about future. There were different answers, either cold or very warm. Currently, there are warm responses, and therefore, we can say that uh, funds for research, especially for supporting young researchers in different projects, will be continued. Że te środki, choć to jest trudno sobie wyobrazić, bo to w przypadku... We could also imagine a situation uh, in which those funds are not continued, but actually uh, we have about uh, eight, uh, 80 million zloty annually, so within a couple of years we already can collect 480 million zloty, almost 500 million zloty. So it's hard to imagine uh, the lack of funds, but any initiative uh, enabling people to address their dreams, uh, to conduct research, for us to support research. Is an initiative contributing to the general success? And there have been many initiatives uh, that already are financed by funds and grants international and national ones that they applied for. Other projects are supported by ISOB. Even though we initially stated that we would support different projects for no longer than two years. Research is so important for us that we decide to finance it in general. Anyone who convinces the Senate about the, the fact that a given institution or facility is needed, because we as rectors are only financing, we are the administrative staff. Well, the politics, I think, the, the general initiative will be continued. Now, Professor Łukasz Niesiałowski, the floor is yours. I think that I can answer as the member of the Senate. I think that uh, there is uh, a structural problem uh, related uh, to the previous uh, year uh, and uh, making different results concrete for the next years. Uh, this also means that we will have to limit our funds uh, in some regard. Now, if we think, speak about different periods of financing, we are left with periods without financing at the same time. And speaking also about the Ohota campus, there are different projects there, and uh, different projects are also organized within particular grant periods, and therefore certain heads of grants and research teams can be lost due to the fact that in between those granting periods, those financing periods, we have no financing for particular people. So we have to think about uh, how to finance from public uh, sources and external and internal sources in those in-between grants periods. The university itself has to think about a different opportunities. The rector, on the other hand, has to decide about what gets financing, because we cannot finance everything. Of course, this can be done, but the university has to take the responsibility for saying, okay, we've taken the decision, this particular team stays, uh, this particular team is uh, uh, 
finance from internal sources and everyone uh, agrees that this particular team is needed and we address uh, the research community with our opinion and our decision uh, or not. Uh, so we have to take that into consideration. Thank you so much, Professor. And now uh, another question by Anna Siewirska. Are you here with us? Chyba nie. And then, if not, we have uh, Mr. Krzysztof Burda with a question answered by Professor Niesiołowski, Gurecki and Nowak. To be followed by Mr. Dominik Puchała and his question. I've been working at the University of Warsaw uh, for uh, 25 years and uh, uh, I'm related to STEM sciences. I also uh, deal with commercialization of uh, research and the formation of uh, companies um, orbiting around the University of Warsaw. So my question is about the University of Warsaw and public financing, the budget. According to me, it's very important to know how to generate uh, income from uh, somehow beyond the budget. So how would you perceive generating extra income? What can we do or what sectors of uh, economy can we address uh, also searching for different partnerships? to generate extra funds, funds that do not belong to this basic budget. This uh, speaks to the third mission of the university, which was somehow abandoned in this debate. Professor Łukasz Niesiołowski, the floor is yours. Well, I thought, uh, I mentioned this uh, particular issue, speaking about specializations, prioritizing different uh, matters. Um, recently I was at the Faculty of Chemistry and I learned that uh, they generate income within the area of expertise. And I think that this income is comparable to indirect grant costs, so we are speaking about large sums here, so this is possible. I'm looking now at the to the dean at the dean of uh, the de philosophy, and I don't think philosophy um, is a domain generating as much uh, extra uh, income as uh, the faculty of chemistry. So I don't think we should waste Professor Dubkovsky's time to speak about it. The question remains whether the university, being a great and the best in university in Poland can uh, compete, for instance, with the University of Technology, which stands a little bit closer to commercialization, where funds can be uh, collected by the university also commercially. The same happens when it comes to the Polish Academy of Science, which has contacts with the world of industry and economy. I think that the university should uh, develop uh, their strings with the outer world, with the economy, but at the same time this uh, should happen in specialized uh, areas of interest because this could lead to better uh, results. If I were to become a rector, I would actually address you with the question, not answering you. And now Professor Maciej Gorecki. I support such actions. I remember speaking to Professor Żywicz from the Institute of Biology of UNESCO. He said at some point that he had an internship at one of the American institutes, some university of sorts, and he conducted research there. There was someone approaching him there and uh, asking whether they could commercialize research. So the professor described what he did and then 
this particular person decided whether the results of studies could be commercialized. I also agree that we should be asking these questions and we should not be answering these questions uh, as non-experts because I am a professor of a discipline uh, that is not that applicable, so my knowledge here is limited. Thank you so much and now Professor Aloysi Novak. I think that this happens partially at the university. Today the university is a different institution from what it used to be 10 or 15 years ago. This happens partially because certain units uh, were launched at the university. For instance, we have the Center for Biological and Chemical Research. There are more than 20 of uh, these, uh, these units, so I think that we do have a certain problem here. It used not to be easily solved because we have to reason in a way that changes the whole philosophy of the University of Warsaw. For a very long time, we conducted research, basic research, non-applicable research, to be honest. Probably, this will also be the state of affairs in the future. At the same time, universities change together with universities and the universities of technology. Therefore, we should always think about the relationship between the university and the outer world. I am not one to judge here, and I don't criticize such a state of affairs. We, as the central authority, should support this particular uh, functioning. The university has to support those uh, different activities. Two or three years ago, we had a meeting from an Ivy League university uh, in Europe, in turn, from countries of Central and Eastern Europe. We spent one day discussing at the Ochota campus and one day discussing at this very campus at Krakowskie Przedmieście. Now, we all could see a big need to have strings attached to the outer world. And speaking about applicable research, we, I think, can develop the diff different methods of uh, collaborating with the outer world. For instance, the university can, can have its own company, namely uh, can function also as a commercial body and then it's easier, for instance, to uh, deal with financing and accounting. And of course, this could be well organized. Uh, we could also take certain steps uh, forward. Uh, and I'm really glad I talked uh, to some representatives of uh, business um, who come to us with great ideas. Uh, now, let's think about physicists um, creating consortia. Uh, research consortia and also business consortia, so, so they also do great things. For, for the rector of the university, it's relatively easy to say, okay, please continue doing what you are doing and just support um, scientists in their work. 
czy, czy państwo, którzy w tym działają, wspieracie tak, żeby... You, uh, also support the budget of the University of Warsaw, especially during those wealth years. So, Rector, I think that it's, it will be better and better. And now the question of Mr. Dominik Puchała, responded by Professor Gurecki, Nowak and Nieszołowski to be followed by Mrs. Justyna Smoleń. Thank you very much. My name is Dominik Puchała and I wanted to ask a question about certain unsettling phenomenon I'm observing at the university. This is that people who are employed in different chancellorships at the university are only for prestige reasons. And they are employed part-time. And they do not bring any benefits to the University of Warsaw and therefore they do not want pay rises because they live out of something else. How would you like to sort out this issue, especially in the context of the situation of doctoral candidates whose scholarships are really low and those people that I mentioned before are not here for science, contrary to doctoral candidates, they just want to have academic lecture uh, in their CVs. Professor Łukasz Isiołowski. Łukasz Górecki. Sorry, Maciej Górecki, of course. Not Łukasz Górecki. We know each other with Dominik. I taught him, actually. Sir, when it comes to the matters of chancellorship, I think it's not the right example, because in chancelleries we are dealing with lawyers, and law is a field when, when we need practitioners. This is a very specific, unique field. Legal professors, because I associate them with chancelleries, should be employed by chancelleries, so legal professors should be employed. But there is an issue at stake. There is a certain cohort of employees of this university that, in fact, treat university as, for example, social insurance paying payer, and they are not really eager to perform the duties they have, for example, in terms of uh, field assessment, so scientific assessment. So this phenomenon is properly identified by you. The reforms undertaken mm, uh, with the current management of the university are very difficult. It's very difficult to review the stuff. It's very hard if we have to deal with the so-called academic democracy. I am a supporter of academic democracy in Polish conditions, and I think that this issue is a very difficult one. This is a genuine but a difficult issue to sort out. The periodical assessments of academic staff are working, but not in all cases. Even when someone is not really keen on delivering teaching or research, they may pass through the periodical assessment procedure. I have no solution, and I think if I were to be honest, no one will offer any solution in this system. It is like with Baron Minhanzer, to grab you out of the water by your hair. This is a system that is relatively easier to sort out in American type systems, Anglo-Saxon type systems, because these institutions govern themselves based on different financial regulations. So in our system, the solution is challenging and it will always be partial and difficult to stomach. And no one will offer you any solution. Thank you very much. Thanks. And now, Professor Novak. Dear Dominik, at first glance, the thing is easy. 
but at a second glance it's not so easy. There are many people at the university, but not too many, who are teaching fantastic courses, do fantastic research, and at the same time work in the outer environment. Legal provisions in the past said that we shouldn't have inter-university competition. So, it would be wrong, viewed as a wrong thing, to be an employee of University of Warsaw and Jagiellonian University, University, or there may be some cases of these employees of both institutions. But if these people work and fulfill their duties, they teach good courses, students are pleased with these courses, and want to be supervised by these uh, people with their MA thesis and BA thesis or doctoral thesis, I am really open and liberal in the policy in this respect. However, if we were to as assist a quite an extraordinary situation where people want to have an ID card from the University of Warsaw and not teach at all or not research at all, and they often apply for leaves, long-term leaves, even paid long-term leaves, imagine, this is out of the question, but unpaid leaves as well, if it is done sporadically, of course it's okay. For example, you fulfill certain administrative duty and you need a leave. This is okay, but then we need to listen to the deans because they are uh, issuing opinions on, on that matters. And together with the Deputy Rector for Employment and Cooperation, we are dealing with these specific cases, talking to other administrative staff in charge. I understand that the point was about it. Well, it was about these people who do not fulfill their duties. They come late to their classes, they don't come to their classes, they uh, do not match the assessment criteria, or they do not obtain relevant results. And we should be, uh, shouldn't be merciful for these people. We shouldn't be lenient. On the other hand, our cooperation with outer environment is not only about social sciences, it's about humanities, uh, natural and exact sciences. For example, computer programmers are really searched for on the market outside the university. And they want to work this way. So the choice is that if we do not pay them decent amount of money, and if we were to choose between having a, an IT specialist who will be working outside or not having very good IT specialists, then the decisions are simple. For example, we had several mathematicians that were employed by finance, uh, financial institutions and were highly acclaimed there because they prepared solutions, for example, for financial law or finances or in other fields. I know that this is not a fully satisfactory answer to this question, but I don't think we can give you one in this respect. Thank you very much, Rector. And now, Professor Łukasz Niesiałowski. Many things have all been said in these replies. When it comes to chancellorships, I think you are talking about legal buffets. I do think that there are very few areas where practitioners bring added value, but it does guarantee a certain sense of discomfort for others. For example, those people who are not involved in buffets, and they only do research and teaching at the university, and they are employed by one entity, University of Warsaw. We do need these people, but they live uh, with modest means, and this is important. So the point is not to limit those, restrict those who bring practical knowledge from the outside, 
je... Rather, we should appreciate those that whose single employer is our university. We should support these people in a particularly sensitive way. I remember that the previous term government said there is a funding pro scheme for uh, children the rich should not apply because this is for the poor. Obviously, we were no, we were, had no outcomes with that position. Maybe we could have certain scheme in which you are granted employment from the rector, but you need to quit of certain benefits. Professor Novak mentioned people from the outside, and I think he can he can recall a person who departed from university as a professor and he was offered part-time work at the university because he is an influential person and it's worth maintaining contact with that person. I think it's good to do that, but we need to do that in a transparent way. We need to say to whom it concerns what are the conditions of this employment? Because it is a special treatment. The rector needs to say publicly who is being honored pub uh, in this way. Because we allot our common money to this person. So it's a call for transparency. Thank you, Raj, for these answers. Now, let me pass to the next question offered by Ms. Justyna Smolen. Do we have here her with us? And the question will be responded by Professor Novak, Yusiawowski and Gurecki. Following this question and the answers, we will take a break. The Regulation number 17 distinguishes between break and breaking the meeting. As for the break, having that conclusion, I will, knew, I will not say utter the words, I reconvene. It will be a technical break. And of course, we will give you the date, it will give you the time for re- uh, for reconvening. We will be wondering about today's evening, will we be continuing this meeting or will we be debating at some other time? We will discuss it over the technical break. Now the floor goes to the next person who will be asking questions, but then Following the break, we will ask Ms. Marcelina Barska to ask the question. No, no, the floor is, goes to Justyna Smolin. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a question to all the candidates. Uh, today's uh, message uh, to the uh, rector's uh, electorates uh, was kind of uh, unsettling for us. We received a message about the unwillingness to meet uh, with students. Now I would like to ask Professor Gurecki and uh, the uh, Dean whether you... So why didn't you address uh, the issue of meeting with students to different authorities beforehand in Spain? We also have a question to the rector. Why did you decide to meet with all the students and why did you address the marshal of the student's body at the University of Warsaw? Uh, we are not an electorate body and each and every uh, person will be responding individually and voting individually. Thank you so much for this question. Do you address Professor Nieszewowski and Gurecki first, and then do you ask Professor Novak, or is it equal for you to uh, address different candidates at the same time? 
Since no, uh, the, I would like to ask Professor Alois Novak to answer now. If I understood this question correctly, I addressed uh, the head of the parliament uh, asking for a meeting, and I didn't think that thorough, thoroughly about this meeting. I thought that the Students' Parliament is an institution which, together with the authorities, decides about certain matters. So I actually asked whether you would like to meet with us uh, at some point. Uh, the response was positive, so we did meet. Professor Nisiołowski, now the floor is yours. To continue a little bit, to me, the contact with the head, with the president of the students' authorities, uh, who represents uh, students, uh, for instance, in the Senate, and is responsible for mobilizing students uh, to elect leader. Uh, well, this person is to me a formal and informal leader. I think that I just assumed that this person is a person to contact different authorities and to address deans and also uh, different students. I haven't addressed everyone, every elector in the pre-election period, because up to the pre-election, I was just a mere mortal at the University of Warsaw. You can just address my emails into this, you can just direct my emails into this spam folder. So the dynamics of the political process changed after the pre-elections. And then it was the time during which I actually counted on a meeting. So the rector had a meeting with the students and I will have the pleasure to meet with you as well. Thank you so much. And now Professor Maciej Gurecki. My candidacy was a spontaneous one supported by researchers mainly who don't like what happens at the university right now. As you know, the inclusion criteria constitutes 10%, 42 uh, votes in these elections. I didn't contact students. But at the same time, I would like to draw your attention to the fact that you ask us about emails, about uh, meetings, that you don't address us with any content, in fact. You're addressing those marginal matters. I don't know who sends something to whom. So someone said this and that. I, I don't know these details, and I'm not capable of answering each and every detail. Uh, this is the first time that I've seen you. Actually, we were talking about Mr. Hebda and the colleague uh, who followed uh, Mr. Hebda. So, I'm ready to say I'm sorry to you, if you follow my Twitter activity, uh, you know that I do certain things and then I apologize, but actually emails uh, were about two gentlemen, namely Mr. Hebda and another one whose name I don't recall. They don't actually uh, uh, declare being in this or that camp and we are not talking about content we don't have anything um, actually meaningful to, to address here I also think that uh, 
Professor Novak um, actually led this university to certain degeneration. Not that it wasn't degenerated before, but yes, it did. And uh, I think also uh, that uh, that we should take care of uh, values here. Uh, so, uh, actually, according to the rule that the fish goes bad from the head, uh, we we have to take care of uh, this uh, uh, potentially rotting process. And uh, well, thank you very much for your attention. Bardzo dziękuję, panie profesorze. W tej chwili zgodnie z zapytaniem. Thank you very much. And now, according to what we said, I would like to uh, announce a 10 minute technical break.
Ukrainian, we are approaching the end of the break. Żeby kontynuować, kontynuować. We would like to proceed and continue today's meeting. Nie, żeby przerwę zakończyć. So let's finish the break. Mamy nadzieję, skoro już państwo są. And since you're here, i w miarę krótko pracę. We would like to work and continue working. Mrs. Marcelina Obarska will be the first one to speak. She's not here with us, though. A w takim razie, czy może pani Patrycja Dudek by była? Perhaps Mrs. Patrycja Dudek is here with us. You're the 27th person to ask questions. Brakujących osób. Jako pierwszy pan rektor. The first to answer will be the rector, then Professor Nieszałowski and Professor Gurecki. Good evening. I am a new employee of the University of Warsaw, and to me, a good rector is a good manager. Hence, my question: What is your expertise in management? And what is your expertise in collecting funds? You did answer this this question partially, but I would be much obliged for a detailed answer here. Thank you so much, Rector of the University, Professor Aloysia Novak. Looking at my managerial experience, uh, if we think about institutions such as, for instance, the faculty or a third center, or the university even, of Warsaw. Uh, my expertise is uh, there. I did uh, hold the positions of the head of the department, for instance, uh, or uh, chair. I was also the deputy dean for financing uh, at, the, at the faculty of... Uh, of management uh, at the, of the University of Warsaw. I was also the dean of this very faculty and I was uh, also the vice uh, rector of the University of Warsaw, the deputy rector of the University of Warsaw, responsible for research and international collaboration. For six years, I was the president of the European Center. At Aleja uh, Niepodległości. For 12 or 14 years, perhaps 16 even, I was the head of the National Economy Chair. There were 18 or 19 people working there. And for 20 years, I was the head of the Department of uh, International Economic uh, uh, Corporation. Uh, I also was, uh, or I have been, the rector of the University of Warsaw. So I do have expertise in management, uh, having held uh, almost every administrative function. Thank you so much, Professor. And now I would like to give the floor to Professor Łukasz Niesiołowski. Before we do that, I also would like to say that Mrs. Veronika Lipschitz uh, will give uh, the next question. Thank you so much. I was uh, the dean of my faculty and I used to be a director of the Institute of Medium Size. I also took several courses uh, within the European leadership courses or courses uh, organized by the Foundation of Polish uh, Science uh, related to us working in national teams. I will also like to add one thing. I'm not sure that a manager, uh, being a manager, is the most uh, 
important uh, characteristics of the leader because leadership in academia is different from leadership in corporations. So what students actually mentioned, um, saying that the university is not a corporation, is actually close to my heart. We need managers at the university, but I don't think the rector needs to be a manager. If um, if not, humbled universities uh, wouldn't be actually employing different rectors, being mathematicians, philosophers, not necessarily managers. Thank you so much. And now, uh, Professor Maciej Gurecki. My only formal function related to management was directing a research center at the Institute of Sociology, currently being the faculty of sociology. When it comes to leadership, well, you know, I agree with Professor Nieszawowski uh, that it's about leadership. I do have leadership uh, skills, and this was shown in the pre-elections. At some point, I wrote on my Twitter account that I was going to uh, be the candidate and there were people supporting me who were eager to vote. I was a leader, an important leader in difficult political times. And I can only say that Jarosław Kaczyński uh, named me seven times as a very dangerous academic person during uh, peace meetings, uh, to, uh, the law and order party meetings. So I don't think uh, that uh, a rector should be a manager at the same time. Professor Samsonovic is not a manager, and I don't think he considers himself as a manager, this should be some sort of a pathfinder uh, for us, namely leadership. Uh, but at the same time, the reader should always, uh, the director, sorry, should always take uh, the, a, a role of protector, protecting uh, those who are discriminated or at risk of certain of being underprivileged. And now another question. Uh, answered by Professor Nieszawowski, Gurecki and Novak, followed by a question by Marta Dek. Thank you so much. I would like to ask you how you perceive the role of the university in the context of climate crisis. This question uh, was addressed uh, before, so I will delve into the details. Do you plan uh, any systemic activities uh, at the university. I don't see any, I, I don't think that we should be talking only about the Green Day of, at the university. I mean more systematic actions, uh, more umbrella uh, options, actions, so to speak. And I also would like to ask you, how do you perceive, uh, um, well, actually studying at the University of Warsaw and not hearing about the climate crisis at all? Now, Professor Nieszawowski. This is a very important matter, but I won't use five minutes to answer uh, this matter, because we did uh, conduct certain actions and uh, activities related to ecology. There is certainly a need to increase awareness when it comes to climate change and climate cri crisis. Uh, I also put certain information on my web page, uh, the web page related to elections. One of the texts uh, that I asked uh, an expert to, to write is about tackling uh, crisis uh, at the University of Warsaw, and I will be relying on this expert opinion that will be published uh, on the websites, and then we will be able to see uh, how to address these issues. And Professor Gurecki, the floor is yours. I also think that there should be a central unit 
taking care of uh, pro-ecological uh, actions at the University of Warsaw, which is a huge entity. We can implement a number of activities so that we stay fit. I'm not sure if 55, but we need to be more fit, fitter, so to speak, uh, when it comes to ecology and climate. The university has a very specific task of educating uh, when it comes, educating people when it comes to climate change and also informing about uh, the climate crisis. We should uh, give uh, people concrete data about the climate change that actually constitutes a real problem, uh, especially that we do have uh, a number of people going into denial, being skeptic uh, in the face of climate crisis. So on one hand we do research and on the other hand we should also uh, think about uh, the climate change that we uh, are observing and that was proven by a number of researchers related uh, to the domain of climate. So the role of um, the university is uh, an educational one and we should set an example uh, in this matter as well. Thank you so much. Now Professor Aloysio Novak. Thank you very much. There are two ways in which we can act. First of all, we should start the uh, Smart Green University, uh, continue actually the Smart University initiative. And another thing that we can do is to organize seminars, symposia and uh, other activities together with uh, different units. Uh, this is already happening at the university in collaboration with other universities from different cities. The Smart Green Initiative is uh, for students to see that the alma mater is treating climate seriously and ecology seriously. We also would like students to collect skills needed in their future lives, both when it comes to their careers and in their private lives. And secondly, we also have an educational role to play. I think that we should intensify our actions and perhaps we should address our colleagues from the Faculty of Biology and related faculties. Colleagues who actually are experts in these fields with enormous uh, successes uh, related to climate change and research on climate change here at the University of Warsaw. Um, and we should also think about um, educating uh, students from local schools externally. Uh, we should support different elements of a, a more general plan, at the same time actively participating, as we actually are actively participating in also external activities that we are invited to participate in. Uh, our students and employees, as well as PhD students, actually take part uh, in those different activities. I think that we should insert it into the third mission of the University of Warsaw, or at least take into account, and I think that uh, we also have a great experience in this matter, both national and international ones. We have different employees with different titles and on different positions uh, invited into to take part in activities that are external to the University of Warsaw. So, so we are visible, we are audible, and we uh, are practical. Może dodam tylko jeszcze jeden element, że jak skończy się ta, a kończy się powoli budowa i budynku porektorskiego, bo mówiliśmy wcześniej. We are finalizing our works 
of our renovation works here on campus. We actually talked about it and also about the Ohota campus. So very soon you will be able to see uh, the planning of the campus or of the university, of the central campus, uh, together the asphalt to even with removing a large share of concrete and cars. And this will uh, drive us closer to the Green University, so that it's all visible. Thank you so much. And now on to the question number 29, which will be asked by Ms. Marta Derek, and answered in the following sequence. Gurecki, Nowak and Niesiewoski. To be followed by question number 13, by Professor Strzelecki. I am a professor and I am a lecturer. What do you think about uh, promotion to university professors? I know that in Poland there are different strategies in these uh, in this term. Sometimes you get the uh, uh, promotion automatically. Sometimes you need to uh, endeavor, make a lot of endeavors around it. What is your view on that? And if you think these promotions shouldn't be handed over automatically, I would like to ask you about the conditions that you need to fulfill because uh, recently we were faced with a situation where our generation is pressured to promote it, to be promoted to university professors. And in fact, the pay rises that I got after the procedure of habilitation was about 200 to 300 PLN. And I think. We are now one. Uh, we are now earning a little bit more than the PhD scholarship as of now. Maciej Gurecki will answer this question. I support Professor Novak's uh, point in the program from four years ago for it to be an automatic promotion. Why? Our regulations say that Dr. Habilitovane, so the PhD with habilitation, can be supervisor but cannot take part in the council that is awarding PhDs. Supervision of a PhD dissertation, I think, more complex and more demanding than just going reviewing and taking a vote on the basis of reviews. These regulations were spoiled. The government's minister reform, which I backed at its initial stages, turned out into a fiasco and it's harmful. But we need to adapt to these regulations. And in order to adapt it in a sensible way, the a PhD holder with habilitation should get automatically the position of university professor, as is the case in the Polak, Gdańsk and other cities. There is no other way. I know that these actions are blocked. And I know that Professor Novak did take a lot of uh, efforts in this respect, that I'm not denying, but there are some statutory issues that block it. I think we should change the statutes. It is not a Bible, it is not set in stone, it has to be changed. And this is what we need to do in order to promote quickly the people who got their habilitation degree. And in order to cancel out the absurds provoked by the new law on higher education. It will continue to be an absurd situation, but at least we may stop promoting some of these absurds. So, my opinion is that these promotions should be automatically awarded.
Yes, I was in favor of quicker promotion for PhD holders with habilitation degree, and there were a number of reasons for that. First of all, I did observe things that were going, uh, that were happening in the outer environment. Our PhD holders with habilitation degree are very good researchers. And also, I think it was a matter of dignity for people with habilitation, especially when I'm on, at, on the international conferences with, and even at the national conferences with my colleagues who just completed their habilitation and have graduated automatically to university professor, I see the difference. There are also a financial aspect to that matter. If a person got habilitation, the university would not get money, funding for these people, for these people. They would only get money in all when they were promoted to university professor. The community, we had the harsh discussions with the members of the community. They didn't accept my proposal, so that we did accelerate these procedures. And as far as my knowledge goes, I think that over the past few years, and I think Vector Grucha can correct me on that, we have promoted 80% of PhD holders with habilitation degree. So we've simplified these procedures. Therefore, we have a single committee that is comprised of three pillars, so to say. So we had uh, humanities, social sciences, and natural sciences pillars. And the power is delegated to these individual pillars. And my understanding is that at the Senate, out of four, 500 people who applied, only two to three cases were uh, objected to. On the other hand, we are a little bit at an ease because we see that the faculties are not really keen on promoting uh, PhD holders with habilitation degree to university professor. They need to get more contributions to, to science. They should have a very good article or a good piece of contribution to monograph. In fact, the situation has been changing as the regulations concerning the awarding of doctoral degree was uh, was uh, was modified, teaching professors were allowed, actually, to participate in the defenses and take vote, whereas people with habilitation degree were refused to do so. This is an absurd. We'll take a closer look at that, and we'll do whatever it takes to promote the remaining part of habilitation holders to the position of university professor. But let me be honest. Uh, my colleagues convinced me that this should not be an automatic process that takes place immediately when habilitation is defended. We made the professional advancement, promotion road a bit easier, or rather simplified. It's not made easier, as a matter of fact. But until the end of this term of the Senate, we'll have at least two to three meetings. And we will debate about, about 50 promotions. That is how things will look like. And now, the turn, this is, this is the turn of Professor Łukasz Niesiołowski. I am really aware of the things that Professor Novak has explained. The number of positions of university professors determines the amount of subsidy. That is why we are interested in these promotions. 
On the other hand, I do agree with Professor Novak. Automatic approach is not a good one. Therefore, I am advocating for placing agency with the Senate. Senators should be the ones to take decisions. And by saying that automatically we should promote everyone to the position of university professor, we are actually weakening rather than empowering the Senate. So the Senate cre should create its own mechanism. But it would be wrong if at the university we had places where the bosses, faculty deans or anyone else, are blocking the professional uh, promotion of someone. This is where we should be intervening. If someone is blocked from promotion, just on the basis which are not content related, the Senate representative should interfere. Thank you very much, Professor. And now, let us proceed to question number 30, to be asked by Professor Paweł Strzelecki, and to be responded by Professor Nowak, Nisiołowski, and Gówecki, to be followed by Stanisław Zabandrzała. I will surprise you all. Out of care for the t tomorrow's day of this university, I will not ask any question. And out of respect for the candidates and for other people, I will stay here until the end of these proceedings. Thank you very much, Professor. I think I will express common view in seeing that I respect your contribution to this meeting, which is actually something that is absolutely clear from the beginning. So there was no surprise. You did contribute to this meeting. On the contrary, I expected you to fulfill the same role. Your contribution is valued, as always. Therefore, let us pass to the next question, which is supposed to be asked by Professor Stanisław Zabandrzała, and to be answered by Professor Nisiałowski, Gówecki, and Nowak, to be followed by Ms. Edyta Konelewińska. I'm sorry for confusing the surname. I tried my best. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to address the viewers of online streaming. We would like to welcome you to our top up, uh, bottom up initiative for the demands, uh, student based demands for uh, the position of rector and the candidates. I would like to invite you to our meeting, which will be held on the 10th of April. And my question your uh, plans for uh, mental health support, uh, in particular for people who study at our university. Okay, the floor, is go the floor goes to Professor Łukasz Nisiołowski. Thank you very much indeed for this question. Let me join the invitations expressed by you. Students as a community should participate in the debates organized by the students and should participate in the elaboration of demand for the candidates for rectors. Students should be self-advocates. When it comes to mental health, these issues are really important nowadays. I placed a text on the website of Gazeta Wyborcza, elaborated by Professor Budziszewska, because we thought it was a major issue. A web page of a candidate is an important page which is attended by not only candidates and the results of the studies related to the mental health of the students and employees at the University of Warsaw should be of our concern. We have a major challenge in front of us. It is partially a post-pandemic um, problem of distressed well-being and this problem needs to be addressed. And I would like to have someone 
who has competences in this matter. That is why I want a deputy, one of the deputy rectors to be following the, these activities related to equality, uh, non-discrimination and also mental health issues. Center for Psychological Support is a very good institution, but the number of cases they need to address shows that a single office placed at a single um, uh, campus of the university is not enough. University should treat it as an urgent issue and develop as needed. That is why I consider this matter to be a priority. <coughs> Let me ask now Professor Maciej Gwiecki to, uh, to answer this question. I am joining this um, answer. I am employed at the Faculty of Psychology. I know the people who work at the Mental Health Support Center. They know and they explain that we are lacking resources and this is a priority cause. This is one of the most, prior, um, uh, most urgent causes for us. We are living in turbulent times. These cause numerous tensions that may lead to people wanting support or needing support and as an employee of the Faculty of Psychology I will also support these initiatives namely broadening the scope and resources of activities for activities of the Center for Mental Health Support so that this support is provided quicker and for more people. And now, let me ask Professor Eliza Novak to answer this question. It is an important question, thanks for asking it. Well-being and mental health of the academic community are important, extraordinarily important. The Center for Mental Health Support at the University of Warsaw has been in, in existence for a few years. Several years ago, about two years ago, it was only based on the employees of the Faculty of Psychology. The people who have had needs or expected counseling from this center assessed its actions as not sufficient. Therefore, we have changed our approach to mental health support. The change consistent, among other things, in saying that, uh, in establishing that the mental health support center, in cooperation with the Faculty of Psychology, was reorganized. A person who is in charge of leading a person in need is a professional psychologist who has been working for several or dozen of years at a leading center, hospital centers in Warsaw. At our mental health support center, we have 11 employees right now. I can still recall the discussions with the students' government when you said that despite improvements, not everything runs according to how it should because there are huge waiting lists, among other factors. As I learn from you, and this was confirmed by you, the people who are awaiting support are divided, are triaged, so to say. First, we have the immediate support group, referring to another center or hospital or other facility. The second group is a few days of waiting, and the third group is long-term waiting. This triage causes a, a disconcern among the, among the students, and uh, I owe gratitude to students' government for applying to run a trust, a telephone, a call center line which has just been launched on the 15th of March. I do not have results of it, but our joint conclusion, thanks to the endeavors of the, student, of the students, is that if the waiting period will still be too long, we will be extending the, its working hours, and if that is not sufficient, we will employ more people to 
the Mental Health Support Center. Because following this post-pandemic period, we are faced with a huge challenge experienced by the entire community of the University of Warsaw. This issue concerns both employees and students and PhD candidates. There are certain costs connected to it that should be borne by the university. No costs and no price is higher than any unfortunate event that may result from not incurring these necessary expenditures. Rest assured, thus, if I am elected to the post of rector, our cooperation will not only broaden, but also deepen, because this is an important matter. Thank you very much. Now, we are passing to the 20, 30 uh, second question, which will be asked by Edyta Konar Lewinska. This question will be answered by Professor Kurecki, Professor Nowak and Professor Nieszałowski. To be followed by a question by Patryk Szluk. My name is Judyta Konar Lewinowska. And I wanted to ask you about uh, the mental support. The University of Warsaw is constantly breaking the law. For instance, at Smyczkowa, the inhabitants of uh, uh, the uh, employees' uh, dormitory or employees' housing uh, facility are forms uh, to pay three three hundred percent uh, of rent, despite the fact that we shouldn't be take paying that. Please look at the emblem of the University of Warsaw and at the Article 75 of the Constitution of the Republic of Poland. There is also the Act uh, on the Rights of uh, Renters, which actually goes against increasing the rents. Uh, I resigned from living in this facility over three years ago and still, the University of Warsaw takes me to court. Uh, Bartłomiej Popielarski, in turn, lies in court that actually the renting at the University of Warsaw is a short-term rental. People live there uh, for long periods of time. One person that I know personally for 20 years has been living there. The University of Warsaw therefore really breaks the law and doesn't uh, respect uh, the rights of people uh, related to employees' rights. Another thing is that uh, the funds and bureaucracy, uh, the funds are not well allocated and there is much bureaucracy. Thank you so much. Uh, the beginning was quite intense actually. Perhaps you thought we were asleep. Uh, no, we are very well awake and uh, therefore I would like to uh, give the floor to Professor Maciej Gurecki. What can I say? This is an individual matter that I learned about today. As a leftist, I'm against increasing uh, the costs of rent and I'm sure I will be willing to look into even individual matters when it comes to bureaucracy. Bureaucracy has always been there and I also mentioned that in my today's uh, presentation. 
zgłaszają bardzo wybitni przedstawiciele naszej społeczności. I am addressed by the representatives of our academic community uh, engaged in STEM sciences. Who say that the bureaucracy is so intense uh, that, for instance, uh, it's hard to collect funds. They say that, for instance, procurements, uh, public procurements, are hard to uh, conduct. And I also addressed this issue during my debate uh, shortly, but still I did. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Professor. And now I would like to give the floor to Professor Aloysi Novak. This is a problem indeed, a problem that has been ongoing for quite some time. Namely, the problem of increasing rent costs for people who lost the right to live in the employees' housing uh, or uh, in the hotel, assistance hotel. Well, you functioned uh, or you were there during the period in which increasing rent costs for people who were not um, allowed uh, to live in the facility were actually increased. And this is because we lack place, enough. there is not enough space in facilities uh, for employees in, uh, uh, to, to satisfy all the needs. And uh, my predecessors uh, wanted to achieve something by uh, collecting titles and uh, uh, different positions, but at the same time they also motivated the employees to resign from university housing so that uh, other people could take uh, those facilities, including, for instance, PhD students, and there are many solutions to these problems. We have certain ideas. Another thing is that these facilities has to be uh, renovated and we also need to build new housing facilities for the employees. The Chancellor's authorities uh, have already prepared such a project and the project uh, has already been approved to be later discussed with the inhabitants of particular housing facilities. There are also bodies to finance uh, this initiative. These are all not easy decisions to make. I support the idea of living in uh, the employees, uh, the researchers' housing. I even myself lived there at some point. But another question is whether people who meet all the criteria at the University of Warsaw uh, collect titles, uh, do research and also teach students, should they live under the pressure of time? Perhaps we need another solution. Perhaps uh, we should think about co-financing uh, and enabling these people to use uh, university housing. It's not a ready-made decision, by no means. I'm just expressing a certain view that should be put up to the discussion. Perhaps a share of people could live in the facility for quite an amount of time, some for a shorter period, some for, for a longer period. And another thing is that these apartments uh, cannot be that small, 20 meters per 20 meters. Look at Scandinavian countries. Uh, actually, they treat um, 40 meters, for instance, 40 per 40, to be a module per uh, 
a single physical person. So we actually should think about helping our colleagues to solve this problem. We won't be able to escape from this problem. The allotments that the university possesses are of great importance here because some of them, not dedicated to the campus use uh, and uh, allocated somewhere in the city, could be used uh, to build uh, employees' housing. This is a very important matter. And we should discuss this matter within the committees, uh, for instance, the Senate committee. This should also be brought to discussion uh, within the meetings of the Senate, definitely. This is a long-term uh, plan. Thank you very much, Rector. And now the floor is yours, Professor Łukasz Nisiołowski. Thank you very much. You started uh, with a very important uh, information, namely that the university breaks the law. This is a very important matter and I didn't know that this actually takes place. Oh, we hear from time to time uh, that uh, decisions are made by the university, but if the university indeed breaks the law, it means that the legal centre of the university is not functioning well. We do have very good lawyers at the Faculty of Law and Administration. And still, for some reason, uh, we hear that we are doing something wrong. Uh, I don't think that the state is doing something wrong. The, we should have to be doing wrong in this regard. And another thing is that you mentioned increasing the rent costs when you stop being an employee. Is that correct? Well, my experience is quite hard. At the Faculty of History, we admitted a number of colleagues from Mikolov, Bucha, and they have nothing. They are all Ukrainian. Uh, we were looking for housing for them. And finally, uh, they actually found flats within the university infrastructure. I think that these are first need individuals. We should have flats for them, housing for them, available. And therefore, I think that the rights for people not formally uh, bound to the university shouldn't be prioritized because actually we should have uh, housing available for those who do work at the university. I do realize that this matter can uh, include a certain element of breaking the law and that uh, the matter is complex, but this is what I think. Thank you. And now question number 33 by uh, Patrick uh, Szlowicz. To be answered by Professor Rektor Novak Nisiołowski and Gurecki. And then Mr. Mosakowski can prepare the next question. I have a question to Professor Nisiołowski, referring to what you said at the Senate's meeting related to the history faculty. You said it was a big faculty and the university is bigger, but Organization-wise, it will be a little bit difficult to manage. Uh, you also mentioned the uh, possibility of decentralizing uh, the university and uh, also at the same time of dividing big units into smaller ones. This would bring huge costs, uh, so should we actually engage uh, into, in dividing units into smaller entities? You also said that the faculty had enough funds so they couldn't, so they didn't have to apply for extra funds. And today, in turn, you said that it's never enough money at the university. So this actually looks like a change of hearts a little bit. You also mentioned the fact that you would be able to manage such a huge institution. That's another question, perhaps, to. Uh, to ask since you change your mind so easily. 
naprawdę powinniśmy pozyskiwać środki. Another question to all the candidates is whether we should collect funds for financing all the time and I think that we should because this sets a certain path for development. So the, another question to Professor Gurecki uh, is Mamy taki spory problem. related to the legitima to legitimizing the student authorities. A number of students is here for three to five years. They will pass through the university not staying here and you said that legitimizing 50% is enough. So what is your stand on this? Thank you very much. Well, the question or actually questions are quite complex. I would like to address Professor Łukasz Niesiołowski first. And then we had a question uh, to other candidates who still can address the first question to Professor Niesiołowski at the same time. And then we have a question to all the candidates. Which can be responded by Professor Niesiołowski, then Professor Nowak and Professor Gurecki. When it comes to the second question that you raised, we will start with Professor Nowak, then Professor Niesiołowski and Gurecki. Professor Niesiołowski, the floor is yours. First of all, yes, we have to collect money for the university. And in relation to what I said at the Senate's meeting, well, we were asked by Professor Indrusik whether we would be in favor taking into consideration the differences in disciplines um, and specialization at the Faculty of History, whether we would be in favor of dividing uh, different units. Now, we also have um, the Senate's Act of uh, 2022, and uh, it was stated then that the Dean uh, was surprised that everything functions well. The Dean Novak uh, supported uh, the plans for dividing the faculty and also uh, discuss, we also discussed different matters related um, to uh, this, this matter. This was uh, the end of different processes at the Faculty of History and also at the Faculty of Philosophy and Sociology. According to the new statute, uh, different communities express their will uh, because a number of employees, of independent employees, actually signed the protocol of this particular meeting. And therefore, uh, the faculties applied to divide themselves into different smaller units. There were committees uh, launched and uh, there was also an agreement reached uh, related to the assets of particular units. When it comes to the Faculty of History, uh, the Council also decided to divide the history uh, faculty, the Faculty of History, into three new units. This was a huge undertaking, which, from the perspective of the following four years, has been a success. The Faculty of Archaeology, History, uh, the Faculty of uh, Culture and uh, Art Sciences, as well as the Sociology and, fac and Philosophy faculties, are big units which at the same time are not too big. They, they are of moderate size, so to speak, uh, where researchers um, focus on different, in, on different domains. If we had bigger institutions, uh, this would mean that we would also have problems with agreeing uh, with, with the agreements be among the representatives of different fields and disciplines and co-financing. 
the whole process was very transparent. The councils voted, the Senate approved uh, the whole process. And I also think that today, and I also said it during the Senate's meeting, uh, except for the mathematics, mechanics and IT department, uh, every faculty uh, is a faculty not meeting the criteria uh, that were formulated for faculties. So if you were to, if you would like to follow the process of dividing particular faculties into smaller units, please have a look at the whole protocol uh, of the meeting that Professor Novak also took part in supporting the solutions. Thank you so much, Professor. And then Professor Aloise Novak and Maciej Gurecki. Would you like to contribute to this matter? Please excuse. Uh, my interruption, but there was one question dedicated to me, and you forgot about it. I haven't. Uh, now, Professor continues. I will refrain from answering right now. I think that first Professor Alois Novak will speak and then you. Let me comment this item briefly. I don't remember the minutes that Professor Nisiewowski spoke about. Therefore, I will check whether I said what he reported. And when we meet at the debate, the pre election debate, I will say whether this was what I said or not. However, as a rector, today I can say the following. Not all the faculties that have been mentioned are satisfied with the entire process. And that's it. I am not questioning how things were. I am simply saying that when dividing up faculties, we need to be cautious. I'm convinced that, on the one hand, we need to facilitate the options for those people who do not want to cooperate with each other. On the other hand, I do think there must be larger communities uh, present and in the third place if we were to talk about costs and uh, putting a break on the growth of costs then this is an important element because administrative staff will definitely grow when faced with divisions so these are not such a simple matters but content-related subjects are also determinant. However, I am not unequivocally positive or negative as concerns this matter. Each case should be analyzed individually. Let me now ask Professor Maciej Gorecki, does he want to refer to this issue? Uh, addressed specifically to Professor Nishawowski. Now, well, I will refrain from, do that, from doing that. Great. Thank you for, for that. Now, if you were as kind as to remind us of the second part of your long question, I'm afraid that the time and the complexity might lead us to fade, might, might lead our memories to fade. A question to all candidates. Should we be getting funding regardless of the scale? That was the point. And this funding could be an opportunity for potentially unclear means of opportunities to grow. I think there was a question to Mr. Maciej Gurecki. 
<laughs> that was the first question. Of course. Could you please repeat this question? Yes. Uh, moment, uh... At present, well, you mentioned uh, the legitimation of the student governing bodies uh, at the level of 50%, which is not feasible right now because students are not interested in self-governing. Would you be able to cooperate with the self-governing student bodies that do not have this legitimation? So now I would like to ask Professor Maciej Gurecki to answer this question and also, should they want to, Professor Niesiołowski and Professor Nowak to refer to this matter. I think there was an additional so, uh, funding sources question. The question about the additional funding sources is directed to all, addressed to all candidates. So answer that the other one. My question is yes, we should. Is that okay? Is that your entire answer? Yes, thank you. Are other candidates interested in referring to what he said? Professor No, I don't want to, to continue. Great. Magnificent. Now the last question about sources of funding. Now I would like to ask Professor Alois Nova, followed by Professor Łukasz Niosiewowski and Professor Maciej Gorecki to address this question. The first overall answer is yes. In fact, we should definitely get extra funding to what we received as a budgetary sub subsidy. Let me remind you that we got about 2 billion. And out of these, about a billion or so slotties are funding for maintaining teaching and research potential followed by 500 million zlotys, which are discretionary funds for research, and the remaining parts are funds for investment. At the first glance, it seems to be a huge amount of money, or relatively huge amount of money. Uh, only Jagiellonian University can, give, can be compared to receiving the similar amount of money. However, the fact is that our, uh, our mm, resources mm, are underestimated. They are estimated to be at a level of 4 billion slotties. Our wealth. However, our wealth, in fact, is much more than that. It's several dozens of billions of zlotys. It's very difficult to actually uh, say how much would that be. And we would need to evaluate that. But even if we were to compare these two billion zlotys to the amount of money in real estate and other mm, the wealth we have of several dozens of billions of zlotys, then that's good. But the donor, that is to say the Ministry of Finances, should have to give us an amount of three to four times bigger. This is, simply speaking, impossible. We will not be in such a position. So whoever be erect will be a rector who will have to try to get extra funding, apart from budgetary subsidies, in order to develop University of Warsaw. That is why I ca keep repeating to not only University of Warsaw community, but also to the conferences of rectors and rectors of public universities 
that we need to have core capital of the University of Warsaw that will support us. The other solution would be to convince the government, the Prime Minister, the Minister of Finances and the Minister of Sciences to, at the minimum, double the funding we receive. And now, Professor Łukasz Niesiołowski. Yes, I am replying for the third time to this question. Yes, should, we should get funding. Professor Maciej Gówiecki. Professor, I misunderstand the whole situation. I answered previously the funding question, which I answered affirmatively, but in fact I was supposed to be asking, to be addressing the issue of legitimacy of students' government. And I don't want to leave this question unanswered. The issue is as follows. Students' government is, of course, well-rounded in legal provisions, and as a person who values um, rule of law, I will be cooperating. But legitimacy is something more than legal framework. It's the genuine legitimation of your efforts, which flows from the turnout. I spoke about 50% turnout at the elections, voting turnouts, but I actually do not know what is the voting turnout. As I have learned, the turnout for the student uh, electors was quite bad. If this is the same when it comes to student government representation uh, elections, you should really have an inner in introspection. Who you are? Who are you in the structure? You're coming here, you're asking questions, it is, you are fully entitled to do that. I am pretty pleased with these questions, of course, as long as these questions are decent and are in accordance to the standards. But one thing is legitimation in terms of legal norms, and the other thing is that legitimation flows from the force behind you, from the students behind you. If this is only a few students uh, that, rep that you're representing, then you should be asking yourself a democratic, genuine question about democracy, about the essence of democracy in the context of low voter turnout. I still have some time and let me say that this is a non-negotiable thing because it's about mathematics. If your voter turnout is low, then who do you represent actually? Is there a silent majority that supports you or not? Why this silent majority is not taking part in your activities? In Gazeta Wyborcza they publish an article which does not present a good picture of you. Such practices actually lower the voting turnout because people feel discouraged. People think that there is no point because the people at the top will recommend. And me, as a researcher of elections and democracy, I encourage you to take this view. If your support is that low, then in fact, what is the point of you being in this structure? What is your place in this structure? You need to discuss. And this is the whole issue of values that I advocate for. This body shouldn't be a facade one. You should have a genuine democratic representation of students. Why these students fail to participate? You need to think about it. Elections for different bodies have usually higher turnout. Professors usually participate in the Senate elections, elections for electors at the University of Warsaw. So I think that is a real, a genuine issue. I'm not attacking you at all, nor am I attacking the chairperson here. This is a important, an important matter. Thank you, Professor. Apologies, but I 
thought you concluded earlier, and apologies for that. Ladies and gentlemen, now we are passing to question number 34, which will be posed by Mr. Mateusz Mosakowski, to be answered by Professor Niesiołowski, Professor Gurecki, Professor Nowak, followed by question number 35, addressed, uh, asked by Piotr Pasikowski. First question to uh, Dean Niesiołowski Spano. At the Senate meeting you said, to quote, I don't know what faculty of medicine has fixed for the university. It hasn't attracted the best candidates. Uh, I want you to clarify this, um, this sentence. There was one candidate, there was one place per 30 candidates. As for Hecuity of History, that you're a dean of, the situation was opposite. There was 2.57 candidates for one person, and for the history of Jewish culture, 1.7 candidates per place. So why are you convinced that not that it is not the best candidates that apply to study at the Faculty of Medicine. And what actions have you taken at the Faculty of History to improve these ratios? And, question to all, what are the plans for the Faculty of Medicine for the coming four years? Which are the directions in which the, the Faculty of Medicine should develop? Thank you. Okay, so now let me ask Professor Niesiołowski to answer this question. Since the second question, the latter question, concerns all the candidates, I will ask then you to proceed to answering the second question. Thank you. I am glad that my contribution to the Senate's meeting rose so much of an interest. In the Senate's materials for the, about the recruitment admissions uh, in the year 2023-24, we have a table illustrating the number of candidates and recruitment points. So the 77 points come from the materials delivered to Senate members. So the person who is admitted to the medical faculty had to have at least 77 points. In Łódź and Białystok, the lowest number of points that one had to have in order to be admitted was higher. Therefore, the conclusion is simple. Uzyskała trochę mniej punktów niż ci, którzy są w czołówce. Tyle chciałem powiedzieć. Bardzo dziękuję. Our candidate received a bit less points than the candidates from other universities, leading universities. I think we are all running out of time and it seems that you are a little bit fatigued but you have been asked about the Faculty of History. Allow me to say a few words on that. I thought you were about to, t to end your, your contribution right now. Okay. Out of respect for all of you, the viewers and the people sitting here, I would like to answer all the questions. When it comes to the admissions to the uh, Faculty of History, in fact, it's true that the people with least points that uh, get admitted to our faculty uh, do not have the best results in the uh, adult exam, the matura exam. And we are worried indeed about it. We are worried that we're not as popular in psychology or oriental languages. We are doing whatever we can to popularize our field. For example, we outreach to secondary school students to show uh, what is our mission. However, there are other fields at our university which do not admit the quota they have been uh, given. However, uh, the other uh, historical faculties uh, across the country. So I think the future of historical studies is not threatened. Is that all you wanted to say? Okay, so let me ask you to pass to answering the second question. 
wynika dla pana profesora z ustalonej kolejności. Bardzo proszę. As you are next in line to do that. I am a little bit tired, so I lost that question. So perhaps the question should be posed for the second time. The second um, uh, question was about the plan for the next four years for Ma Faculty of Medicine. What are its directions for the development? What are the plans for it? Now that we've uh, skipped other candidates, for the first matter, when it comes to the first matter, which was addressed to Professor Nisiowski specifically, now we will take answers to the second question. Professor Nisiowski will be the first to answer, Gubecki, Professor Gubecki the second, and Professor Novak the third. The Faculty of Medicine and, and uh, its studies are a, a place of multiple hopes for the University of Warsaw. Following one year of its working, we'll have the assessment from the Polish Accreditation Committee. Committee. I hope that we will be pass, uh, passing this uh, with excellent marks. If that should be the case, the decision of Senate and University of Warsaw authorities should be continued. We decided to set up Faculty of Medicine which was a decision of the authorities of University of Warsaw backed by the Senate. So that is why we should, we should step up these activities. We should continue with these activities. As I explained during the Senate, and let me reiterate, creating from scratch faculty of medicine is a huge challenge for a university which does not have any infrastructure and needs to connect outreach to other institutions and medical faculties military facu uh, uh, medicine faculties as well. However, I wouldn't be very eager for the university to build the entire hospital uh, infrastructure, for example, university hospital, as is the case with Jagiellonian University or Nicolas Copernicus University in Torin, which does develop uh, medical sciences. The costs are much higher to the expected benefits. University of Warsaw is right now able to develop good trained teaching at the universe at the medical uh, mm, faculty. We can cooperate with our external pa partners, for example, the Southern Hospital, which is highly indebted as reported by the press. So our partner situation is not rosy always, but we don't have other choice. We need to provide students with a place for their practicums. But I would advise all of us not to build the entire infrastructure as a university because this may provoke huge financial challenges even if we were subsidized in building the hospital. Is that all? Thank you. Now, I would like to ask Professor Maciej Gorecki to answer this question. Thank you for this question. Despite what I have thought about medical faculty in this shape as when it was funded, maybe I was wrong actually. It's hard to assess this things, these matters to a layman who does not know a thing about medicine and medical studies and research. However, once the decision has been taken, I do believe that we need to have all hands on deck and we need to try as much as we can in order for this initiative to succeed. As I can see, Faculty of Medicine has a precarious cadres, staff, and it is here that I would like to be active over the next four years by creating, by employing strong staff at that faculty who work, who publish good clinical uh, tests results. And as much as I can share some of the uh, issues some people have with rankings, because they show only half of the truth about the university, but the higher we are in medical rankings, the higher position will be overall for the entire university. 
So towards the end of the March 2024, I am a supporter of investments, further investments and development of this faculty. Is that all? Fabulously. Now, I would like to ask Professor Aloysius Novak to uh, refer to this question. Faculty of, med of Medicine is mm, in fit condition. I am highly indebted to the Senate and all the people who have been working towards setting up this faculty. We need it because on the one hand it integrates our community of employees, professors, and virtually all people who have anything to do with medical research, in particular people from natural sciences, exact sciences, that we are also convinced that it will also be integrating for humanities because we are talking about humanization of medicine on which I will elaborate in a second as of now we do not face any problems when it comes to the place the building facilities the Center for Biological and Chemical Sciences facilities are used these are well equipped we have funding for that we will be topping up equipment these funding guarantees us uh, a peaceful work over the course of the next two to three years it is true that our staff faculty staff is not completed we didn't have such a need earlier and we didn't want to spend money on people that could have been employed as we discussed at the Senate meeting which wouldn't be fully utilized after all classes are taught by our colleagues from the military institute uh, medicine they have a clinical back office that allows us to, to teach third, second or even third grade students. We need to settle down in, indeed with the number, relevant number of faculty staff. Physically, of course, we will be able to employ these, these employees, but we want to create a five-person committee of distinguished specialists that will be carrying out competitions, contests for employing employment at the assistant professor, associate professor, or other types of positions. We have people who pledged their uh, uh, willingness to cooperate with us on this matter. There is a huge unmet demand when it comes to working on uh, the medical faculty, both from the academic community across Poland and also from the Warsaw Medical University and other universities, but there are also people from abroad that express their willingness to work with us. We can certainly state that we have very good cooperation with our partners. The Military Institute of Medicine is our basic partner, is our core partner, but we also cooperate with the Warsaw Medical University, Univer Medical University of Wrocław, of Gdańsk, Szczecin, therefore, and we are also cooperating with Jagiellonian University in this matter. There are no antagonisms, I'm very pleased to report about that, and the outcomes of this cooperation between us and VIM and the, the Military Institute of Medicine in particular is reflected in grant applications and awarding of grant projects. We have already, as I mentioned, received two grants to the tune of several dozens of millions of zlotys. There, is, there will be a digital center which will be headquartered at the Military Institute of Medicine but we are quite close to each other from the distance point of view and our computer scientists will be able to cooperate without any problem. 
<clears throat> the remaining five grant applications have been assessed. Positively, there are some remarks to the two others. We have Harvard Medical School who wants to cooperate with us. We also have the University of Oxford that wants to cooperate with us. My cooperants have been in touch with the four EU plus universities and medical faculties from these universities also wish to cooperate with, uh, with us on that matter. Thank you. And now we proceed to question number 35. Hi, Mr. Piotr Paszkowski, who is here with us. To be answered by Professor Gurecki Novak and uh, Nieszałowski. To be followed by the question uh, by Wojciech Poński. Thank you so much. Uh, my question is addressed to all the candidates. This is how I understand things should be. Professors, an average cost of uh, renting a flat in Warsaw is 2.5 thousand zlotys. The minimum social benefit is uh, 1,200 uh, 1, zlotys. Uh, these are data for the Institute of Labour and Social Affairs, uh, uh, dated uh, for year 2023. So do you think uh, that uh, the uh, PhD scholarship is enough to support oneself uh, in Warsaw, where we actually study? How do you think this affects the popularity of PhD studies and the image University of Warsaw has in the general national arena? Thank you so much for this question, and now Professor uh, Murecki. Thank you very much for this question. Well, can we support ourselves out of the scholarship? I don't think so. And I even know so. To me, however, PhD students uh, are my priority. And uh, if we are to be the research university, we cannot pretend that PhD students are not important. They are most important. In the long run, of course. I think we should raise this scholarship. An institution like the University of Warsaw needs the, such an activity because we can move funds from one area to another. And this is a matter of choice, of priorities. If I'm selected as the director of the University of Warsaw, I think that I will dedicate um, itself to this matter. So we should definitely raise this scholarship. Thank you so much. And now, Professor Aloy Zinovak. The problem really does exist. Dozen, a couple of dozens of times we met in many different configurations debating over what to do. Zasadniczą kwestią jest to, że ustawodawca podjął decyzję o uruchomieniu szkół doktorskich. The law states that PhD schools are to be formed and there are scholarships at a level much lower than the one we expected it to be. But at the same time, there are no decisions, no positive decisions to dedicate funds on one hand to raising the scholarship and also to support PhD schools themselves. They also cost quite a lot. Chancellor Helstowski is sitting here and he reports several dozens of millions of zlotys to support PhD schools. Dedicating these funds, I would like you to understand me, cannot be 
at the cost of uh, different subsidies. Because the subsidies are to support the University of Warsaw per se. So we have to earn extra money in order to support PhD schools. This is also a question that we already address. Namely, should we collect extra money to support PhD students and also employees, everyone who has the, uh, a certain need? For the past two years, because I wouldn't like to delve into the COVID-19 pandemic, the situation in, was that we had a war in Ukraine and the uh, power crisis. And we still managed to do certain things. I would support raising, increasing the amount of scholarship. I think that the university can do that. Starting from the third, fourth year of PhD studies, uh, this could be definitely done but we should calculate things carefully. Scholarships at the first or second year is at the level of minimum wage. It cannot be like that because you won't be able to support yourselves to function. There is a certain solution. For instance, we can renovate uh, uh, the, uh, the, the researcher's hotel, so to speak, at the Belvederska Street and create new housing facilities. But still, even if we do renovate it within a year, half a year, this doesn't mean that we won't be willing to increase the amount of scholarship. So this is the reality. And I think that we are responsible for PhD students, but only for a certain period of time not full-time, so to speak. We should collect funds that we could allocate in this matter, to this matter. And I think that we should address this matter, not because of today's debate, but because it, is, it needs answering and we should improve your situation. And now, uh, Professor Łukasz Niesiołowski. I will try to be sweet and short. The conditions of functioning PhD students at the University of Warsaw is a matter which shouldn't be treated as a cost, but, an, but as an investment. We are talking about competent uh, individuals whose research are to be the landmarks of the University of War, so they are preparing PhD thesis. And this is uh, to be expressed internationally and nationally. We are giving scholarships to those particular people and at the same time, we are saying, okay, well, we give you something, but you still have to work. Unless you're a child of wealthy parents who can support you. Both approaches are very uh, unfair because they divide the speech, the students' community into different categories. And I think also that uh, increasing the scholarship of full PhD students is uh, within the capability of the University of Warsaw. There are 
certain areas uh, at the University of Warsaw where PhD students are paid from the grant of their supervisors and then the situation is better but this is not a rule this is not a standard and therefore the mechanism should be dedicated to those individuals who do not have any grant thinking about you here in this very room and those who watch us we hear voices about increasing the scholarship because the PhD students uh, de devote all of their time uh, in the labs and they don't have time to earn extra money and I can also say that within humanities as opposed to uh, STEM sciences uh, we have people waiting and sitting all the day in the library so they also cannot earn extra money we should make every effort to help them and now ladies and gentlemen question number 36 by, uh, by Wojciech Płoński to be answered by Professor Novak, Nishowowski and Gurecki. To be followed by a question by Piotr Hoffman. The floor is yours. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I have a question related to social security. I would like to put it all into one big question. We have a certain budget, 2 billion zloty. We have needs, investment needs. The cost of building a student dormitory is about 100 million zloty. Renovation uh, at Żwirki and Vigure Street uh, is even higher and uh, 150 million zloty would have to be dedicated uh, to the renovation of the researchers housing facility so I have a question about how to get external funding do you have any vision any idea about how to collect this these money so that the budget we have is not wasted. Where to look for funds? The second question is also related to social security. Do you plan professors, candidates? increase the scope of uh, the social benefits. This uh, is about uh, uh, 8,000 employees and uh, 4,000 uh, emeritus professors. The budget is about 37 million zloty, that's all. Thank you. We have two questions dedicated to everyone. And now I would like to give the floor to Professor Aloise Novak. Thank you very much. Yes, Director. On one hand, we are thinking about renovation, and on the other hand, about we are thinking about the finances, funds for these renovations. Some funds uh, were already given to us and are already in our bank accounts. We have funds uh, for uh, dormitories, we have funds for the Belvederska Street, and we also have funds, I'm not speaking about the long-term plans, we have extra funds that we collected for the Hoja Street, for the renovation there. We also collected previously 
sources for the renovation of the employees' uh, housing facility, namely 150 uh, million zloty. These money are not in our bank accounts. Despite the fact that we were promised them by the current authorities. If we are given these funds, we have them for the upcoming two to three years. Our experience tells us that uh, within this term, of course, the first part of the term is always very specific because the construction companies were limited when it comes to the number of uh, employees uh, and when it comes to, to certain companies, some of the employees uh, went to, to the war. But uh, actually, we have to, we can spend about 150, 200 million zloty, and this means that we have two years secured. We are not satisfied by this matter. The rector listed different buildings and dormitories that need renovation. At the same time, we also did the minimum that was that was to be done when it comes to dormitories, and currently we are also conducting negotiations uh, with the entities that can give us loans at preferable uh, conditions. And in fact, this is a serious matter because uh, we take on the liability for the next 24-30 years to be discussed uh, in the rector's team and also within committees and within the Senate. Uh, well, the, the, univer the university, the Aguilonian University, took a loan from a similar uh, institution for 200 million zlotys, and uh, they actually announced it to be a great success. But we have to look at everything from the perspective of the success of our employees. I wouldn't like to delve into the details because I haven't conducted deep analysis, but 37 million you talked about, or several dozens million uh, in general, are to be used. But we will also delve into the details of different parameters uh, fin finances wise and uh, administration wise. I think the budget we have is enough to grant the security of our employees, uh, including the emeritus, um, when it comes uh, to the uh, holidays, subsidies, uh, loans, credits, and many other. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Łukasz Nisiołowski. First of all, I would like to address the Social Benefits Fund. I think that uh, the unions should be consulted first uh, regarding some these decisions that we talk about. Uh, the unions are here to support us, and I think that the participative element of the university should also be taken into consideration firsthand. I don't think that we for sure need to change something, but I would start uh, talking to the unions and then to Professor Haustowski. When it comes to the dormitories, to this housing, Professor Novak mentioned funds we have for renovation. I must admit that each and every renovation of an each and every dormitory means that we have fewer places to offer to students or employees because there are renovation works going on. So what do we do uh, in this regard? Well, we can give new rooms in new buildings. However, 
let me remind you October and uh, September 2020. Uh, three students were protesting because they were not uh, granted places in the dormitories and I think that there is a certain solution to that. First of all, we can use abandoned housing, city housing, uh, which is complex uh, legally but does constitute a certain solution. We could also cooperate with uh, other universities and uh, academia. The, Pos the Warsaw University of Technology has over uh, 10,000 uh, places in their dormitory uh, and uh, in, uh, the uh, Warsaw University of Life Sciences has about 4,000 um, places in their dormitories to offer. We could offer a shared pool of places that could be offered, that could be dedicated to students. The solidarity here lies in the fact that uh, some people are beneficiaries in one year and grant places in another year. And now, uh, Professor Gorecki. Well, I don't know the accounts uh, of the University of Warsaw and the finances uh, state, so I will uh, base my answer on what Professor Novak said. I also support what uh, Professor Nishowowski mentioned, namely that all the changes in the funds call for consulting the unions. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Therefore, we are passing to a question by Piotr Hoffman. I suppose he is here. This will be addressed by Professor Nishowowski, Professor Kuretsky, and Professor Novak. And Przemysław Pruszczak is the next one in line. Good evening, gentlemen. University works in an environment, in the world. Certain aspects of this world and environment has cropped up in questions and discussions. We were made aware that we are limited by Polish law, that we try to support and cooperate with town hall, that we are active in climate emergency issues. But I wanted to tackle two things. First, we are at the verge or in the revolution related to AI, which will have an impact on the labor market and to the preferences for future studies and the way students are studying. The first question is, do you perceive this phenomenon as a threat? Second, have you thought about it? Third, what specific risks do you identify connected with this phenomena? Fourth, what was the direction you have reformed University of Warsaw in order to prevent these risks? The second big theme is the war uh, on the eastern border of Poland. Many commentators and journalists believe that Poland is not safe question is, to what extent and how university should join the education for civil defense? Professor Łukasz will first answer this question. Thank you very much. Indeed, this is one of the things that should be at the center of our debates about the future of university. Similar to climate emergency, technological university that is taking place will have a huge impact on our closest and further future, farthest future. As a member of humanities faculty, I may not understand everything, but intuitively I perceive it as a threat and as an opportunity. As a historian, I know that the world has transformed and has undergone turbulent transformations, but it keeps going on and I hope that it will continue to moving on. And the world should be able to adapt with the least possible costs and effort. However, 
we have actually didn't adapt our university studies to this reality. University of ours, the academia in Poland and in Europe, have been training ever since the 19th century with the same model. How we should train? Well, this is the main intellectual challenge for higher education and for education as such. We are faced with different inevitable changes. We want our university to be in the vanguard of these transformations with all due respect to traditions and established ways of doing things. At our university, in fact, we have a huge body of knowledge for example, at the Faculty of uh, Mathematics, Computer Sciences and Mechanics, as to how elements of digital world appear in our reality. That is why there should be a deputy uh, rector for students and teaching affairs who is in charge of the most long-term challenges. It is not about ad hoc management of teaching process, but actually kicking off changes whose results we will see in 10 years from now. In my opinion, university should be radically rethinking teaching. It should be flexible. We are not flexible as of now. We should be focusing more on that. The war is obviously there. We should, uh, we should conclude, we should certainly take into consideration this danger. I'm a pessimist. I don't know if civil defense training for students will make us stronger and will allow the students to defend us. I just simply hope that the war will not come. Thank you, Professor. And now I would like to ask Professor Maciej Gulecki to address these questions. When it comes to artificial intelligence, we've heard a lot of interesting things, but let me point you out, point out a different aspect of this issue. If these tools continue to be developed, we will have to rethink, in certain fields at least, the modes of examining, examining exam taking. This is not a pleasant thing, but we will have to think over our ways to exam. When it comes to civil defense and war, I wish to ensure you that as a political scientist and as a person who knows a lot about international relationships, I wish to ensure you that in our lifetime there will be no war. First, Donald Trump will lose the elections, and this is clearly seen. Second, NATO potential on, in air is several dozens more than the potential of Russians. If the Russians wanted to invade, they would be immediately crushed by our air forces. So, I wouldn't exaggerate about this militaristic mood and the necessity to train our workers or our students in throwing hand grenades or shooting. I belong to a generation which had classes in civil defense in, in the secondary school and I did receive excellent results in throwing hand grenades. Well, actually, it was a bogey, uh, it was a bogey uh, hand grenade. So, you shouldn't be that pessimistic. The political outlook is not that bad and I do not expect in my lifetime, and I wish to prosper for a long period of time still, for us to have an invasion in our territory. Thank you very much. And now I would like to ask Professor Aloysi Novak, the rector, to answer this question. The beauty of our university consists of the fact that on the one hand we are unity, and on the other hand we are quite diverse. Also in terms of what is happening in the education and what is happening in other universities across the world. There are some faculties, and especially these fields of study, that have been applied, have been adapted to the current changing, transforming world. 
I think we are a bit un we feel a bit of unease in this respect. We are not paying that much of an attention to to these processes, but I think that decentralization of our university supports us in our adaptation efforts. The coordination that is not steered from the central position is better. It is the Council of Faculties, of fields that take this relevant decision. And I do not want to enumerate specific faculties, but I know places where we study according to the best possible practices, as in the best universities, when it comes to length of studies and curriculum. Of course, this does not sort out our problem. Let me remind some, you something that I mentioned a few um, some times ago. We have been hosting Samatlan by the creator, the creator of ChatGPT and his team. He was here in this hall. And I don't know how many of you who sit here have been uh, to this meeting. But I know that the colleagues who have been presenting their ideas on the subject believed that we need to transform the structure and length, the period of teaching. I suggested that the BA studies should take about three to four semesters, two semesters for MA studies and three semesters for PhD studies. I don't know if this will come to pass, but I know that in many places around the world, universities are heading towards this direction. And we should at least have a discussion on that matter. And if we look at our students, who study at BA and fields of studies, and they leave BA and they don't come to our MA studies. There is some to it. We have a very good specialist when it comes to labor market predictions and training in this field. And I think we would like to uh, invite him to an inaugural lecture. Uh, it's Christopher Pisadillis from the London School of Economics, who received Nobel uh, Prize in economics for his predictions around the tendencies on the labor markets. So I do agree with my colleagues, there is no set in stone answer, but the issue is there at hand, we should take a deep look at it, we should be analyzing it and take into consideration the changing, the transforming reality. This is important for us, for university, for students. When it comes to the second subject matter, I do not know if I should be the pessimist and say that war will break out or an optimist and say that there will be no war. But I know what we do. As you know, we have students, both Russians and Russian and Ukrainian students. And our principle is that we support Ukrainians, as established by the Senate, but also we do not harm or place obstacles to Russians who study here. As of now, this policy works. There are virtually no internal conflicts around it. However, as we have missiles flowing into Polish territory, there are certain attempts at destabilization. It points to a threat of, uh, of destabilization. It is true that years ago universities were much more prepared. They just, they just in case were prepared. And nowadays we are not prepared. And we really need to think whether to introduce something similar to civil defense, at least for those who are interested in it. I agree that it won't sort out our problems, but perhaps it would prepare us a bit more for upcoming events and things that are going on. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, dear rector. Let us see what are we faced with. So before I ask Professor uh, Przemysław Brzuszczak to address his question and announce another person to ask questions, let me ask if Olga Neifert is present here. Is Paulina Dudzińska here? Great. Is Krzysztof Szygielski here? Do we have Jan Oliński with us? Do we have Kinga Bożenska Wojciechewicz with us? Is Mr. Łukasz Kapusta with us? Do we have Ms. Renata Gierak with us? And Ms. Magdalena Filipek? And Mr. Tomasz Kazimierczuk? Mr. Michał Tomza, Ms. Małgorzata Księżyk, she's present, Ms. Andrea Nowicka, yes, she's here, thank you very much, and Mr. Marek Gancowski, he's here. Therefore, let me ask Mr. Przemysław, Przemrzuszczak to formulate his question as of the sequence of responding to this question. This will be inaugurated by Professor Gubecki, followed by Professor Nowak and Professor Niesiołowski. The next in line is Ms. Paulina Dudzińska. Ladies and gentlemen, I have to express my opinion beforehand, before the debate, we didn't state what the debate is and actually a debate should be addressing all the candidates this is an international standard otherwise uh, we um, have merging forms of political interactions excuse me were you here in this room the questions were to all the candidates well, yes, but some questions were addressed to particular candidates and this shouldn't take place, irrespective of whom the questions are addressed to. Well, you know, the debate... ...is subject to certain freedom, so I wouldn't be that rigid. Please, uh, go to your question. Professor, we have certain standards here. Excuse me, I wanted to say something more. Even Michał uh, Rahoń at the Polish television read questions to everyone during the general pre-elections in Polish politics. So, I, I wouldn't be saying what I actually said for the sake of uh, security, safety here. Now, the question is, there are thousands of uh, PhDs, hundreds of PhD students uh, observing this debate uh, because they want to know something about their defences. So, the question is about defences. Let's say someone didn't uh, make uh, the deadline for submitting the PhD thesis. We have the Ombudsman, the Organization for PhD Candidates uh, Matters, and I think that all the PhD candidates would be uh, willing to listen to your stand on this matter. Thank you so much. And now, Professor Maciej Gurecki, the floor is yours. It will be sweet and short. Um, I think that all the defenses should be free of charge, if this is what the question is about. Professor Novak, I also support the defenses being free of charge. I think 
that should be up to three years after graduating from the PhD school. I think that this should be uh, the state of matters. Thank you so much. And now Professor Łukasz Nisiołowski. Yes, I also think that defences should be free of charge, but not without any other deadline. I would say four years after graduating from the doctoral school uh, is enough to pass the exam. I think this is a reasonable solution. Thank you so much. Uh, I think that Mrs. Olga Neifels is not here, so let's pass to the next question by Mrs. Paulina Dudzińska, to be answered by Professors Niesiołowski, Kurecki and uh, Nowak, and followed by the question by Krzysztof uh, Szczygielski, question number 41. Thank you so much. I also would like to address the solutions uh, related to uh, the dramatic, to a very poor financial situation of PhD candidates. You addressed uh, the defences, housing, and I also would like to ask you about um, uh, the employability of uh, PhD students after they graduate. Professor Nieszowski. Thank you so much. I think that if employability is understood as employing people in doctoral schools, so not after graduation, but during uh, them being uh, in doctoral schools uh, such as research assistants or teaching assistants, this is a very good solution. But at the same time, let's make an asterisk here, this could lead to uneven treatment of PhD students. Some will be employed, which potentially binds this person with the university more than other candidates. So, I think that these solutions should be applied together with full transparency of certain solutions. The dean or the rector shouldn't be the one to decide about a single PhD candidate, PhD student to be employed or not. No, there should be an open competition. Professor Maciej Gorecki. I think that uh, uh, assistants uh, having their remuneration financed from the budget could be employed but not by their own supervisor and this uh, I think should constitute a very nice criterion as the PhD candidate often works with their supervisor so I guess they could engage in research but beyond the PhD proposal, PhD thesis, to grasp a new perspective on certain matters, especially in STEM sciences, where this could be related somehow. I think that these solutions could help financially the PhD candidate, at the same time contributing to the development of this very person. So yes, this solution is open and I support it. Thank you so much. And now, Professor Alois Novak. I think that we can all agree here. A certain misunderstanding lies in the fact that the central administration writes off uh, funds to deans to make decisions regarding PhD students in doctoral schools. I don't think that we even distinguish between uh, PhD studies and doctoral schools. A certain solution that we came up with was that some deans agreed with this idea, some deans didn't agree with this idea. 
dawaliśmy nawet te dodatkowe środki, jeśli była taka. And sometimes we allocated additional resources if need be. Without any doubt, I can say that a teaching or a research assistant zatrudnianie, czy do prowadzenia zajęć, czy do badań. I think that PhD students should be employed for teaching, for research, of course, with a certain remuneration. I had the privilege of talking to the self-governing body about the possibility of creating a program, a benefit program for the best whatever that means, who would like to stay at the University of Warsaw before an open competition uh, is launched. So I think that we could think about a certain amount of funds dedicated to PhD candidates so that we could uh, uh, cooperate with certain PhD candidates and even graduates uh, for a certain period of time. So without any doubt, we should support PhD candidates in this regard. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, question by uh, Mr. Krzysztof Szczygielski. Before this happens, I would like to make sure that uh, Mr. Jan Orliński is here with us. Kinga Bożenska. Kinga Bożenska Wojciechowicz. So now, Łukasz Kapusta will be the, the next to ask uh, the question. The question will be answered by Professor Gurecki Nowak and uh, Niesiołowski. Krzysztof Szczygielski, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Professor. My question refers to educating uh, PhD students uh, within our field, uh, economy and finances, transferring uh, PhD studies from the faculty uh, to the doctoral schools, uh, to, to the doctoral school, translated into reducing the number of teaching hours. Teaching load was uh, Sorry, the number of uh, uh, of learning hours was increased, but it's still lower than in the case of the majority of European and American institutions. And therefore, we are worried that the future graduates won't be equipped with a set of competences and skills needed for them. And this will translate, in turn, into the lower interest uh, in our doctoral school. I worked in the recruitment team, uh, in the jury, uh, once, and it wasn't easy to select good candidates at all. Other disciplines could have different didactic needs than economy and finances, of course. So would you support changes in doctoral schools, at least in humanities and social sciences, which would allow to change the number of teaching hours? I know that this is not up to the, to the rector's decision, but the rector is a, con, is a governing body, so to speak, at the University of Warsaw. Now, Professor Maciej Gurewski. Uh, well, the question is quite complex. I don't know if there is in this hall a person who has graduated from PhD studies program at the US University. I graduated from Dublin University, a doctoral program led by Rochester and Harvard University professors, and it was toiling from morning to, from dawn to dusk. When I had a free day, I woke up at 8 a.m., which is something unheard of for me. I would write uh, essays. I would do so many things. So the burden in terms of learning was huge. 
The doctoral students, most of them would not be excited about that, but Professor is right. I did win in the final analysis by this. When it comes to the required load of hours, you have actually suggested that it is the disciplines independently that, that should decide independently. If you believe at economics that there should be more of these, that should be up to you. And the rules should permit you to upscale this as freely as you wish. It seems that you are suggesting the fact that uh, a challenge in that good candidates do not come. I think in Warsaw these living costs are important as well. I know many graduates of economic studies, they have decent jobs and compared against uh, relatively poor doctoral scholarship, it's not an attractive offer for them. Especially that they would need to learn a lot, as you suggested. You, they would have a lot of hours, in-class hours. Uh, so many of them prefer uh, to work in businesses. I don't know if this competitivity is an issue, is at stake, but perhaps it is. I do understand that some disciplines may think that there is too little amount of hours taught, being taught. That is why, as I said, they should have free choice to uh, increase or decre decrease and to mm, produce more optative or obligatory classes. As of me, I prefer decentralization here and I would seek advice from the boards of disciplines and board of doctoral schools. However, there is a core question. Should we concentrate on writing a very good dissertation and not just anything, everything else to that, or should we rather concentrate on giving a decent education, decent training, or perhaps they can go hand in hand, these two things can go hand in hand. If you see a problem in that, then we should take a look, a thorough look, and go for a reasonable solution that would give the opportunity to both produce good, decent dissertation, especially on time, timing is important, and also provide for decent education and training. I'm afraid that in some situations, as it is, it is the case in MA studies, that we accept people from the outside of University of Warsaw, and sometimes we repeat portions of teaching that they had already received. Because they do not have relevant knowledge. But I would be trusting to people who are in charge of it, or rather bodies that are in charge of it. And now, Professor Łukasz Niesiałowski. Doctoral schools aim at decent doctoral dissertations. We should implement whatever leads us to this goal. However, our problem is that to each we give equally. If we leave aside this approach, then we will see that not all disciplines and fields and doctoral schools need the same thing. That is why the answer to your question is affirmative. Therefore, let me ask the next person to ask the question, Mr. Łukasz Kapusta. This question will be answered by Professor Gwerski, Professor Nowak and Professor Niesiołowski. Next in line is Renata Gierak. Good evening. 
Gentlemen, what is your assessment of the moral quality of the fact that the rector is sitting in multiple supervisory boards of the company owned state owned company? This question is related to uh, s uh, numerous violations of law in the past and possible violations in the future by these companies. Professor Gubecki will answer the first, the first. I have said a few things about, critical things about that on Wednesday. I haven't changed my mind over the course of the six days. I think that this is not good at all. Rector's remuneration is quite high, possibly even too high. And these additional uh, positions he holds are not necessarily simply. I don't know if this is in accordance with law, what he's doing. I'm not a lawyer, but possibly it is in accordance with law. But we don't want to implement things that are only in accordance with law, but things that are decent. You are asking me as a candidate for rector, will I be working for supervisory board of companies? No, I won't. As a rank and file professor, I do not work at supervisory boards. I only work at University of Warsaw. I do not imagine taking up another job because I have plenty of things to do here. And that's it. My view of this is negative, but the rector and the electors are adult people. They can have different opinion on that matter, and I'll, be, I'll have to accept it somehow. Now, Professor Aloysi Novak. First things first, it's very hard for me to, to value or to view or to make an opinion on that because it's all about me. I am in several supervisory boards. The University Council has expressed co its consent as each and every activity which is paid it has to be uh, vetted by the University Council, which it did. The our, my participation in these boards takes me up to six, eight hours a month. I am every day, every week. Uh, I'm every weekday and on Saturdays I'm at the university from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. So this is not a burden for me. I'm an economist. I'm a financier, that is my profession, so I try to be a professional. I try to not only teach, but I do what I preach, just as a, a physics professor. I'm in the lab, but I also teach for, for students. This is something positive. Students want to have lecturers who are um, recognizable on the market, which is an equivalent to the lab of physics professor. This is this is the only thing I can say about this. Professor Łukasz Niesiowski, despite the fact that we are all tired and it's late, I actually I think the question was about moral qualities, not legal qualities or pragmatic qualities. So it's very hard to judge on morality if you are another person, if you are not a, someone in someone's skin, especially that we are talking about legal activities. But there may be some doubts when it comes to conflicts of interests. Professor Novak is a specialist in many areas, and that's good. But he is a member of the supervisory board of, uh, of the Millennium Bank. The University of Warsaw is a customer of Millennium Bank. Is that a conflictive situation or not? 
uh, what is my assessment? Well, I won't give any answer to that, but it's an important question we should be thinking of. Thank you very much, and now I would like to ask Ms. Renata Gierak to ask her question to be answered by Professor Novak, Professor Nisiłowski and Professor Burecki. The next one in line is Magdalena Filipek. Good evening. I would like to delve into the details about uh, the iron capital. Touching upon this question, Professor Nisiłowski always mentions uh, the risks uh, for the university and buildings of the university. So my question is, what do you understand as iron capital? And why do you always link it to the debt of buildings? Other candidates uh, I would like to address with the following question. Uh, namely, please uh, define the chances and uh, the drawbacks of the iron capital. Thank you so much, and now I would like uh, Professor Novak to address this matter. The iron capital lies in financial rules related to the needs of uh, the university uh, for the realization of uh, research financing subsidies, investment, etc. Different subsidies and donations, namely funds that uh, come from different sources, contribute to this capital. Looking at the American universities, we would be able to see that these donations come from private parties. Sometimes uh, legal entities. There are people who achieved great successes, for instance, uh, without anyone uh, to pass uh, their wealth to. For and, like in the example of uh, the Stanford family, they donated uh, $30 million dollars. Uh, to the Stanford University, now amounting to $35 billion as the capital of the university. Of course, in Poland, the chances for a similar donation are close to zero. However, we could, be, we could have a donation by the graduate of the university. We have uh, about 100,000 graduates uh, definitely still living and uh, therefore the university can address uh, graduates uh, asking them to uh, transfer certain funds uh, to the university and that could constitute our iron capital. Another uh, source of financing, so to speak, is the Ministry um, of the Treasury the Ministry of uh, Science and the Polish taxpayer. Professor Nieszowski mentioned uh, donations, but it's impossible for someone to donate uh, $10 billion uh, to the university. But even if $1 billion is donated, that would be uh, quite, uh, quite huge. An institution as big as the University of Warsaw, perhaps as big also as the Pol University of Technology, or the University um, of, uh, of or the Agelonian University, uh, could invest in bonds uh, whose uh, underwriters could. Have uh, certain uh, c certain assets, and then we could have a capital of two billion zlotys, for instance. So issuing bonds is uh, also a solution here. And the first step that we could undertake 
is to assess the capital of the university as it is now. Uh, I think it's four billion. And we could assess the top amount that we could reach, such as, for instance, uh, 60 billion uh, zlotys. Next, we would have to allocate those different funds and invest in different activities. Is there any threat? Is there any risk? Well, risks are there always. But we should enable the allocation of these different resources, constituting the basis for iron capital. I think that uh, the capital should be under full control of the rector, even if managed by a different body, rector or another managerial entity. Thank you so much. Now, Professor Łukasz Niesiołowski. Thank you very much. Actually, Rector Novak already responded to this question. I think that we could over-calculate, over-estimating uh, the, the capital. And we could... And, and there is also a risk of investing too much into collaterals. But on the other hand, we can invest in assets and in bonds because we know that there is income to come, but there is also a certain risk under which we won't be able to pay off. Now, let's say we actually invest uh, in bonds and then we have to, let's say, buy them again. What will we finance uh, buying with? Well, in order to buy out the bonds, we would have to sell um, buildings, and this is uh, a certain uh, risk. Uh, so I think that uh, the, the iron capital actually uh, is shouldn't be put into practice, because we won't be given $10 billion, we won't be given $1 billion. Uh, this will end in nothing, and if we enter into uh, the vicious cycle of issuing bonds, this will end up terribly. I think that uh, there is only one institution that will actually make profit out of this whole operation, and this is the bank. Thank you so much. And now, Professor Maciej Gorecki. Well, speaking uh, from the top of my head, I think that actually the iron capital is a pie in the sky. We are not Princeton and we are not Harvard University. And I think that if we know these universities, we know that they are completely different. Uh, there is a certain culture of donating to the universities and if there is a wealth somewhere in the family, they want to devote a certain share of uh, uh, the, the capital uh, to charity. I even heard that one of uh, very well-known Polish businessmen is thinking about donating to the university, so perhaps this culture is subject to future changes. However, uh, we don't see any early signs um, of uh, uh, of changes, and if we think about uh, issuing bonds for 35 years, uh, this will actually th this is a very risky scenario, and I think that uh, any rector who is a today's candidate won't be responsible for what happens in the period of 35 years. We have very short rector's terms. In Trinity College in Dublin, where I study, the rector's turn is uh, 10 year old. One only, but uh, a long one. So we shouldn't be uh, 
taking decisions, making decisions, uh, deciding about uh, 35 year old ones, uh, knowing that we won't be able to take the responsibility for that. And I know that uh, Rector Novak is uh, capable of take, making decisions within financial matters, but perhaps at some point a rector um, specializing in library sciences uh, will appear and uh, he or she won't be able to decide with equal expertise. So I think that we should be cautious when transplanting uh, the American uh, the, the American standards um, into our Polish grounds. Perhaps we should also think about the German way of doing things. The state thinks that uh, education is important and allocates funds in science and higher education. But here in Poland we have politicians uh, the way they are and the environment of Donald Tusk uh, does not understand uh, the importance of education in the general uh, economic, social and uh, financial scheme of uh, Poland. I think that uh, or I hope that there will be some sort of a reflection undertaken by the governing body right now. And I also hope that the priorities are changed. So I wouldn't be too eager to implement uh, American solutions uh, in the Polish context, because the American one is completely different, with a different culture, different history, everything different. Thank you so much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Magdalena Filipek, number 46, uh, to be responded by Professor Nieszołowski Gorecki and Novak, to be followed by uh, Mr. Tomasz Kaśmierczuk. What are the possibilities for changing the training at the doctoral schools. I will have a different opinion to the person from the economics faculty that spoke a few days ago, a few hours ago. What to do about these uh, classes that are valuable but they do not produce relevant learning outcomes? Uh, let me point out to the fact that methodological classes are not always uh, adapted to the needs of PhD candidates. Perhaps you can do something about it. And the last question, the, more, the most detailed question, and but is of my particular interest, as a PhD candidate we are able to benefit from Mm, the classes for students, addressed to students. We can freely go to these classes as an optative issue. As young researchers and hopefully future employees of this university, shouldn't we be allowed to use the training offered by our universities in order to raise our qualifications both in research and in, uh, in teaching? Professor Łukasz Niesiołowski. My, question, my answer to the question, to the latter question, yes. My answer to the first question, it depends on the discipline. As a representative of my discipline, I would actually increase the number of classes. As for other disciplines, uh, they have uh, different kinds of teaching uh, classes, but in fact, this is what I said. We need to be reviewing the workings of doctoral schools after four years. To what extent are they coping with the situation? To what extent the creation of this teaching offer for doctoral candidates is adequate? We need to, uh, we need to be cautious against throwing the, ba the baby with the bathwater. But on the other hand, we need to modify things that don't work. And now, Professor Maciej Gorecki. When it comes to teaching the doctoral students, uh, doctoral students, 
jakby nie, nie, nie śmiem doradzać. I would not dare to give advice to STEM science me members, uh, professors, how should they teach? But in social science and humanities, there should be a simple American scheme for teaching. Lots of methodological classes, because in social sciences, we have limited scope for applying experiments, contrary to uh, uh, physics uh, people or chem uh, chemistry people, although it does change for social sciences as well. So methodology needs to be developed. Uh, there are different methods, you need to know all of them, uh, there are plenty of these, uh, and you should deep dive uh, into these methodological issues. Therefore, we should have tons of methodological classes, and at the same time, we should have a general seminar uh, in the field that we work with, not a very narrow type of interest of ours, but a broad seminar where many people come with different topics of their dissertations, different interests, and we discuss together their, not only their works, but also achievements of their discipline. This is a very simple model. And this has uh, worked well in the United States. When it comes to trainings, well, I started my teaching career back in the 20th century, and I'm posting about it. I actually started it in uh, 2000 at a private university in Opole. No one taught me teaching, how to teach. I have always been assessed, uh, I have always received high grades in student assessment. I, I feel the need, but I know that many people won't have this need. When it comes to research, methodological classes are one thing, but quite another thing is research practice. In sciences, there is a very simple principle, similar to li 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 uh, principles of our, our lives. You should choose your parents well. In daily life, it's very hard to apply this principle, but in science, you really can apply this principle. You need to work in tandem with your supervisor. And perhaps doctoral students should have funding for projects that would allow them to enter into cooperation with other professors. You shouldn't be closed within the realm of our single discipline or topic even. As a representative of social sciences, I'm not really uh, fond of those people who have articles about the same subject, 20, 30 articles. I would much prefer researchers who, having researched one subject, are allowed, are able to move to subsequent subjects. I don't know if in STEM sciences uh, it's so easy and I don't wish to offer any advice for them, for professors in STEM sciences, but in social sciences and humanities it is possible. So research practice with the supervisor, with other mm, researcher who has similar interests, not the same but similar, would be important. It is much easier, way easier, to shape your academic career if your portfolio is thick and rich. And this is well appreciated by committees uh, for admissions, for scholarships, etc. Thank you. And now the floor is of Professor Novak. Thank you very much. I will address three questions. First, one concerning bonds. The bond Bravo. allows you to get incomes, not the right to own property. That is why there is no threat as explained, uh, as expressed before. The second question, 
Jakarta uh, trainings for doctoral uh, students. Yes, I'm in favor, and I mean have been discussing this with the dean of the Faculty of Education, and we are launching a one semester uh, study because young employees, young scientists want to participate in such classes. That is why I believe there is no reason you shouldn't be able to participate. I will ask the Dean to promote his initiative among the doctoral uh, candidates and doctoral schools. You are free to participate in that. When it comes to the level of classes in doctoral schools, well, Rector is not really in charge of it and has not that much to say about it. If a rector hears that doctoral students complain, he will definitely speak to the head of doctoral school and would ask the council to review such person's achievements and perhaps, uh, 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 perhaps change the teacher. All statutory requirements make us say that all interested parties, discipline boards, scientific boards, should be in charge of these matters. This is an element that I have been uh, mentioning a lot during meetings. When you were coming to me, you wouldn't be mentioning that the level of classes is inadequate. Or rather, I was pretty convinced that the teaching staff is good and that you are satisfied with the classes and the teachers are satisfied with your performance. But should this require improvement, should this require a fresh look, I think every one of us will be able to talk to the heads of the doctoral schools to uh, pay a closer look to that. Thank you very much, Rector. And now let us pass to the next question, which will be asked by Mr. Tomasz Kazimierczuk. This will be answered by Professor Gubiecki, Professor Nowak and Professor Niesiołowski. However, before I announce the next person, let me ask if we have Mr. Tomza with us. Okay, then, if he's not here, let me ask Małgorzata Księżyk to prepare herself. And now Tomasz Kazimierczuk. Good evening. Research University Excellence Initiative is about to terminate in the mid of the next term. A few hours ago someone asked what, who would continue it if it's not funded from then on. Now let us assume that the scheme will be continued. So what is your vision for the next edition of this research initiative at uh, University Excellence Program. Are we uh, putting, will be shedding a spotlight on certain areas of our university. There are five priority areas and 73 different research areas. It's quite complex. So how would it look like according to you? Thank you very much. Now, Professor Maciej Gówiecki will answer this question. Let's assume that the uh, Excellence Initiative Research University scheme will be extended. I think it's a great success and it's been working really well. Again, I can talk of social sciences, as I cannot speak about the whole university in its totality. I would make certain shifts. For example, funding for open access. I'm against it. We have a situation where, of course, it's good to have freely accessible papers, 
but let us face reality. Our specialized uh, papers are read by our specialized uh, specialist colleagues. So spending our money on open access in Cambridge is rather compromising to the idea of open access to science. That is why I would abandon this field. I would give more funding and prominence to research grants so that more people would get them. Especially those people should get who didn't have funding from the external agencies such as National Center of Science. They should be evaluated on the contents uh, of their projects and then uh, this should be uh, in an initial phase for them to apply for external funding. When it comes to Excellence Initiative Research University, my experience is with the Center for Excellence of Social Sciences led by Professor Kaczmarczyk. This is a very positive experience. Many good things happen there. There are many seminars, workshops take place. And why should we change the things that work? But obviously we can introduce some minor corrections. Thank you very much. And now I would like kindly ask to answer the question, Professor Pasinowak, uh, to answer the question. Judging by my conversations with Professor Lalak and grantees from Excellence Initiative Research University, I believe that the system works well, works fine. And we are concentrating mainly on getting the new funding for this scheme. This is where the bulk of our efforts go. Should there be any mm, suggestions to change this or that element, and here I'm counting on all of you, I will definitely apply them but I wouldn't forcibly look out for changes because I know, based on my conversations with uh, grantees and uh, receivers of scholarships and uh, travel grants, I know that this scheme works well and I wouldn't modify it substantially. And now, let me kindly ask Professor Łukasz Niesiołowski to take the floor. First, data. The uh, reply needs to be answered based on the data, not on our assumptions. So, first we need to see the assessment of the uh, Excellence Initiative Research University program. We should see how much funding has been destined to uh, priority research areas, different priority research areas. But, in general, I would say the following. In its uh, primary uh, initial plan, I, I, the, the research initiative was supposed, uh, excellence initiative was supposed to uh, support uh, areas that are already well developed, but it has uh, glossed over certain areas. For example, philosophy, literary studies. So. If we were to think about changing something, then we wouldn't change uh, uh, things that work well and uh, that bring magnificent fruits, because at some point we may get a Nobel Prize winner, but we should use, nonetheless, the Excellence Initiative Research University to support, to prop up the initiatives that are in process of being, uh, gaining excellency. The university needs to be, uh, have excellency in its totality and not only in its engine room, the first car of the strain. That is why we should not be supporting only narrow elite of global science at our university, but rather support an equitable development according uh, to uh, the needs-based development. And now I give the floor to Ms. Małgorzata Księżyk. 
with her question. And this will be answered by Professor Nisiewowski, Professor Gorecki and Professor Novak. And the next in line is Ms. Andrea Nowicka. Thank you so much. My question is related to the second degree studies. I will be forced to decide on a given uh, discipline. I plan to stay at the University of Warsaw. However, a number of my colleagues studying at the very same faculty or a different uh, course perceives a certain problem, namely uh, the curricula are repetitive and this constitutes a reason for which they do not wish to continue studies uh, after graduating from the first degree studies. They choose other disciplines or other faculties. Apart from this, the level of teaching is not satisfactory to students. How would you address these two issues? Related to the fact that people do not choose studies of the second degree, MA studies at the University of Warsaw. Now, Professor Łukasz Niesiołowski. Thank you so much. First and foremost, I would like to express my gratitude for you asking about student affairs as a student. The answer is not that simple. There is one thing we shouldn't be doing as the university. Since the interest is dropping, we shouldn't be inventing new things, thinking that perhaps uh, they would gain popularity and perhaps not. Especially that uh, the courses and the programs are not uh, rich enough and are not meeting the expectations of students. A graduate of BA studies uh, has enough competences and now they would expect uh, the MA studies at a research university to be able to, to provide for options to conduct research and I think that this is where the University of Warsaw should be headed. Uh, and it's not the case, at least we are not focusing on this fact enough. We have fantastic teaching staff that can teach research and research management. For unknown reasons, uh, we apply traditional teaching methods, uh, historic, uh, well, somehow outdated research methods at our university. The deputy uh, rector will have quite a lot to uh, to do because they would have to remodel the whole teaching structure. It's not something the rector should do because actually we have we need experts here. Studies, MA studies, should teach how to do research irrespective of the fact that a given student becomes a researcher in the academic terms or a an employee of a bank for instance. This is how we should shape our studies, because the research uh, initiatives here and research university should translate into teaching research. I hope that I did at least partially answer the question. Thank you so much. And now Professor Maciej Gurecki. Thank you very much for defending the honor of students. Uh, there was also one gentleman, Stanisław, who actually uh, posed a content question, so, so you are the second one, to ask an important one. I agree with you. There are people graduating from other disciplines, uh, other courses and faculties, and choosing other faculties as well. I discussed these matters uh, quite extensively at a faculty 
jakiś problem na Wydziale Nauk Politycznych, z którym... Where this really is a problem at the Faculty of Political Sciences. And uh, this is because I actually specialize uh, in politics, in political sciences, as a researcher. Że tak sobie można przyjść z ulicy i studiować... Political sciences are not uh, a discipline that you can study you know, like coming fresh uh, to the university. Uh, there are also, there are students who select our MA studies uh, after graduating from other disciplines. And then there is a discrepancy between uh, those um, after our BA studies and uh, graduates of different disciplines. So perhaps we should also address the issue of uh, some makeup classes or some certain courses uh, to level up the playing field for those different students whose share has certain skills and uh, another share does not uh, possess them. Now, MA studies, and we, I must say, address this issue uh, during the meeting of the Senate, are affected by this issue possibly also because young people claim that it's enough to study at the BA level. Could we do something about it? Perhaps we could uh, change the, the program a little bit. I think that the issue that you raised is a concrete one, at least in certain disciplines. You cannot, for instance, start uh, uh, studying physics or another STEM discipline after graduating from humanities. I don't think that physicists uh, would agree on that. But you can merge different disciplines and switch uh, between different majors when it comes to humanities. But you're right that this issue should and needs to be addressed. Thank you very much. Now, Professor Alois Novak. Thank you very much. I must say that this is a huge problem. The repetitiveness of material during BA studies and MA studies is an issue well known in the whole world. Bardzo taki uproszczony sposób rozwiązano problem. This problem was solved uh, in some countries, namely teachers who teach uh, to, at BA level do not teach at MA level. And at some point the situation changes here. And uh, for instance, the university in Chicago or in Cambridge, uh, they apply this rule. Perhaps this could be a simple solution to this problem. Another solution is that second degree studies should include courses related to research. Such uh, similarly to what is happening uh, during what happens uh, during PhD studies. But this is another thing. I tried to address this matter as the dean at my faculty, and I didn't succeed, I must say. Because, well, it's hard to, for instance, dedicate stuff to BA level only with all the titles and all the achievements to tell them that they are not able to teach at the MA level. But the fact that the youth does not wish to study at MA level is appealing. Research that we conducted, and we did conduct certain analysis, for instance, with the Deputy Rector for Student Affairs, the data suggested that young people want to study until they work, and they want to start work early. I also think that we are not uh, advertising 
our courses enough and I think that we should look into what we are doing and admit that non-public schools, private schools, quite frequently are better in this regard. I also believe that we need to conduct a deep, uh, thorough analysis uh, related to what the labour market looks like in the perspective of five, ten years, especially now in the era of digitalization. New challenges in the economy. We should do that definitely. Another interesting matter is that we think the same thing. So we should take care of education and we should do it fast. Certain activities could be undertaken uh, immediately. Talking to you is important here. I was quite surprised Surprise! I'm not sure I repeated that to the Dean Szelecki. I was surprised that even in STEM sciences, this happens. I met uh, with the self-governing students' body about uh, three, four, five months ago. This wasn't a campaign meeting, just a meeting. And they also mentioned the repetitiveness of uh, study material, of the course content. So this is a broader con problem that we have to solve. For sure, we have to address it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Rector. And now, question number 50. Mrs. Andra Nowitzka. The question will be answered by Professor Gurecki, Nowak, Niesiołowski, and followed by Mr. Marek Wencowski. The floor is yours. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I wanted to ask all the candidates about ways in which you would be um, thinking about the all-university system for people who extend their um, education at doctoral schools. As a very community, as a community, we are seeing that the number of people who have been able to defend their thesis uh, in four years is rather negligible. Mm, but there are many reasons for extending university curriculum. The war. COVID-19 and also our scholarships. It is not a problem that arose this year. This problem has been present ever since the beginning of doctoral school. My intuition tells me that there will be many more extensions. So it's not that we do not do diligently our duties, but rather that we are not in a position to do that. And uh, taking this opportunity, let me ask a straightforward question that has not been asking. By promoting the best students, which is instinctively uh, okay, are, you, are we wondering how many people are left behind because they were not in a position to have resources in terms of time, in terms of finances? from the faculty, for example, in order to prove themselves to a wider academic community. And how many people, in reality, are lost because of the fact that they are not comprehensively supported? These people will not have a shed of opportunity to, employ, uh, to be employed by the university, which is a loss to the university. Thank you very much, and now I would kindly ask Professor Maciej Gurecki to reply to this question. Definitely, there, are, there is an issue related to the uh, low amount of a doctoral scholarship. In my view, there should be a temporary facility for facilities for people who have experienced this harsh 
dire conditions. You're talking about the best of the best, how to select them, and you seem to suggest that it's not only about the diligence and involvement, but there are also other factors that come into play. But let me move the debate to another corner. We all want to be a research university. I believe that we all, the candidates, we all want it to be. But if we achieve it or not, will will not depend on uh, one extraordinary researcher, but an average of PhD candidates should be a high average. Our middle of the pack, middle of the pack PhD candidate should be a good, promising person. There will always be some outliers, but these do not speak to systemic uh, advantages of a certain place. When it comes to these living conditions, uh, demands, I'm all in favor of these. There are not that many PhD candidates, and uh, for me it would be a priority, and I believe this assigning this funding when looking at our budget is a question of priority. I will take a deep look into these priorities and matters, but for me, PhD candidates will have extensive support. I will prioritize PhD candidates, because if we are to be a research university, they should be our priority. And now, I would like to kindly ask Professor Lysenovak to reply. Let me deliver the following reply. I have no qualms with individual cases for extending PhD studies for one year, 18 months, or even two years. You have mentioned several causes that concern many PhD candidates. It may be assumed that over the course of your PhD studies, many things have happened. The pandemic, crises, including the war in Ukraine. And I can understand that we can have a broader, a generalized solution. But if we were to now assume that there is a time of stability. Now there is a question. Are four years enough to write a decent PhD dissertation? In most of the cases of most of the universities, not all universities, as I don't know all universities, but most of the universities believe that this is a sufficient period of time. So is there any specific situation, particular situation in this respect, compared against uh, studies, PhD studies carried out by foreign universities? Is it that we miss something? Is it that we are committing some structural mistakes that need to be improved upon? I don't hold a comprehensive answer to this question which I have been posing to myself as well, but it all boils down to the issue of community. We need to discuss with people who are in charge of these doctoral programs, who are studying there. We need to talk to the council of the relevant doctoral studies, which need to issue a relevant position. We need to work out a position, as this would mean that we would have to consult this position to those uh, we need to pr we would need ha would have to present these uh, positions to those who have devised this system as i have been discussing with you the extension for fifth or sixth year is related to additional efforts additional investments additional contributions that must be made of course, we may say that these are costs, but these are actually investments. Because we are investing in our future generations. If there is no decision from the government and the politicians, 
it is a it will be a complex situation for a university. I have mentioned it to the Minister of Science. I asked him, would you like the University of Warsaw to lower the number of PhD candidates? He said emphatically, no, I want you to train more PhD candidates. And then I, I asked him, well, if you want more university uh, PhD candidates, then there must be means provided for that. And for that, you need to send funding. We are in conversations about this, so in case of particular individual situations, I have no qualms with it, if it depends on me. But in normal situations, it will all depend on the discussions we have and the results we obtain, this supposed uh, um, increase in funding that we may have from the Ministry. I think we are on the right track because we have been collecting our experiences as to how things go and it will be important to note what kind of dissertations will be written, what will be the quality of these dissertations and we'll certainly need to carry out an assessment, an evaluation a summary of what has been going on in order to move forward with the most beneficiary solutions for you, for our university and for other universities as we are the first movers and we are trainers of uh, academic staff for other universities. Thank you very much, Rector. And now let me ask Professor Łukasz Niesiołowski to reply to this question. If there are formal um, procedures are met in this respect, and I understand that doctoral school is inscribed in the law as four-year cycle, then we would have to move uh, in terms of funding, in terms of finance, in terms of legal framework. Let me bring home the point of doctoral studies. We want good PhD dissertations. If we have someone who have been, has been for four years in the doctoral school and he, they need another semester, we will lose that person altogether. So looking at it from this vantage point, it is a good investment. We will extend but we will get in change, in exchange, good PhD dissertation. This time, I do agree with Professor Novak. This is the main question. Are four years sufficient to produce a good PhD dissertation? To my mind, these are, uh, this is a sufficient period insofar as we guarantee decent conditions for where, uh, for our doctoral students and we are still not doing that. Of course I appeal for support to those students who've been through the pandemic and to provide them additional funding so as to fund the fifth year of doctoral studies. studies. Otherwise we'll have a lost generation that will not be able to finish successfully their doctoral dissertations to which they've placed so much of an effort that they wouldn't be able to do that because they didn't get the fine funding for one semester. Thank you for all your replies and now we are passing to the question. Next question which will be addressed by or asked by Mr. Marek Wenzowski. Uh, it will be answered by Professor Novak, Professor Nisiewowski and Professor Wurecki. Good evening. It's quite late and I'm not that young. But still, I would like to uh, congratulate students uh, giving content questions. And my question is about scholarships. We have different indicators indicating that the scholarships 
ludzie rosną. Are increasing, have been increasing, but below the level of accumulated inflation. Co uniwersytet robił? So what has the university done to improve this situation and to be concrete? Z nadzieją na też taką konkretną bardzo odpowiedź. Well, I would like jakiś przykład to know whether you know any examples of getting additional external funds for scholarships, but not individual ones, but for programs that could encompass, that could relate to a large share of our students during the past years. Thank you very much. And now, Professor Aloysi Nowak. Thank you very much. It is an important question. Basic one, I would say. Jeśli idzie o wsparcie zewnętrzne studentów, if we talk about the external funding to support students, talking to the external environment and negotiating and cooperating with them. We offered a number of uh, internships and other uh, practices for students. Uh, many students uh, benefited from these initiatives, but I don't know about any uh, clear program that would be dedicated typically to uh, scholarships. The university, together with us, prepared support programs for three groups of young people, for uh, the winners of uh, national teams for high school graduates, uh, and these scholarships are in the amount of 12,000 slotties, the 12,000, yes. This is for 100 people, approximately, for sportsmen at the world or European level. Olympians, as well as uh, other sportsmen. In the number of uh, several dozens of people, also uh, 12,000 zlotys here annually. And also those students who, are, who got the best results in the recruitment period, also several dozens, uh, thousands zlotys. These are programs based on external funds yet prepared at the University of Warsaw. I can't remember the amount dedicated to social benefits. I'll check it and I will email you. Within two days, 48 hours at the latest. Thank you very much. Uh, and now, Professor Nieszowski. Well, the question was whether we remember any examples. And I remember donation for the Polish Academy of uh, Skills. So uh, they were to uh, finance students, but that was at the end of the 19th century and the system really worked well. You also mentioned social benefits. So you, uh, I think, mentioned uh, uh, the okay. winners of uh, national competitions, and I think that uh, we had an excellent initiative to support uh, them and to attract their attention towards the University of Warsaw. A je przeglądałem. To Uniwersytet Warszawski nie jest w The University of Warsaw does not pioneer in the country when it comes to the percentage of funds dedicated to social funds for, for social benefits for students. 
najdroższym miastem w Polsce. Więc jeżeli stypendium... We are at the same time the most expensive city in Poland, so this doesn't really make sense. Budżetów, to znaczy, że bardziej się troszczą o nasz... O... So I think that if students are granted social benefits in other cities, this means that other universities take care of them better uh, than we do. Z radością sobie... But, well, once you get answers... Uh, Uh, in the email promised uh, by Professor, I think that uh, there will be a little bit more to talk about. Thank you very much. And now, Professor Maciej Kurecki. Well, I also don't know sources of financing you mentioned. Nie mamy tej kultury. We don't have the charity culture here in Poland. A przynajmniej w stosunku do nauki. And I also think that we don't have it when it comes to research and science. Bardzo dobrze, bardzo jednego z najbogatszych Polaków. I also knew one of the most wealthy uh, Pol, Jan Kurczyk, had a project. Uh, Uh, charity-related projects in mind. And speaking about concrete, serious charity work when it comes to academia, this, these are very selected cases of, of charity. So I think and I also hope that the situation changes. Thank you very much, Professor. Now we are approaching another uh, part of the meeting where the candidates can present the final uh, statements up to five minutes uh, according to the voting to the elections uh, the order will be as follows Pan profesor so first, Professor Łukasz Niesiołowski, Professor Maciej Kurecki and Professor Alojzy Nowak. Therefore, let me ask Professor Łukasz Niesiołowski to take the floor and present his concluding remarks. Thank you very much. My, I will be talking from this seat, not from the speaking panel. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank all of you for all these questions, for your patience, for being here in front of your screens and in this venue. I would like to invite you to the meetings that will take place at the university, organized both at my initiative and also organized by other entities. Universities is living through its uh, feast of democracy during the elections. We are asking questions about university and this is a value in itself. And I wish you a happy return home and good night. Thank you very much, Professor. And now, let me kindly ask Professor Maciej Gorecki for his closing remarks. I also want to thank you for presence and questions. And because of this light, late night stay, time, I will allow myself to elaborate a bit more. I wanted to stress three main points when wrapping up my candidacy and the reasons for which I'm here. Ladies and gentlemen, you are well aware that I'm an atypical candidate for the Rector of University of Warsaw. I haven't been a DN, not even a Deputy DN, or a Deputy Rector. We know that this administrative or managing experience, in my case, is not sizable. However, my sense is that in this term of office, we are in a position where, unfortunately, we need to fight for basic and fundamental values, such as freedom mentioned before the events that have unfolded today, during this debate, seem to confirm my thesis. We had contributions from people from student government. But ladies and gentlemen, I address 
and to the student's government. I was born in 76. I didn't participate in the assemblies of the Socialist Youth of Poland Union. But I've, at certain time, I felt that as if I was participating in this union. I thought to myself, Guy, you're 20 years old and you are lucky of the authorities, of the powers they be. What should I think of it? I think these are the low standards demonstrated by current authorities and these are imbued in university with these low standards. Second, I would also like to express my gratitude for all the discussions we've had. As a person who didn't know that much about university, I've learned a lot, and this time allowed me to enrich my knowledge about our institution. Thirdly, theoreticians of voting preferences and behaviors, myself included, say that an individual vote does not count. But I wanted to convince you otherwise, especially in the small group constituted by an electoral college. If you share my idea that these values are threatened at today's universities, I would kindly ask you to give your vote to me, to vote for me. Thank you very much, and now I would kindly ask for closing remarks from Professor Aloysia Novak. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks to all of you who participate here and participate online. If you're not asleep, that is. Thank you for your contributions, also these critical uh, contributions. and the contributions that presented a vision of University of Warsaw, of our university. Thank you for your, all your questions. Thank you for your questions expressing your care for research carried out at university, teaching, living standards, cooperation with outer environment, respect of, of one man to another, men, one person to another person, tolerance, all these values are important. They are uh, crossing the boundaries of time. University of Warsaw has been faithful, faithful to these values, and I believe strongly that it will continue to be faithful to these values. Our reality, our surrounding, our environment has been changing, and we need to adapt to it. But we are such an important institution, such a well-developed, fully-fledged institution, an institution with so many good and diverse ideas that we want and we ought to use our intellectual power for changing the world. And I do believe, having been to this meeting, uh, having been to numerous other meetings, having listened to our younger colleagues, students, PhD candidates, that our university has a bright future. And the fact that we disagree on certain points, well, our differences, that how things should be. This is not important. When we leave this room, and when we meet up at another venue, this should connect us. This is a holy place. For dozens of years, I have felt that this is the right place. I'm proud of working at the university. I'm proud that I have achieved my degrees and titles here, and that I can do something, return the favor to the university. If it wasn't for the community, for your support, for the support of Senate, faculty, faculty students, uh, administrative staff, and PhD candidates, I wouldn't be able to do anything. No matter what will be the end of this campaign, and I believe in, uh, I, I believe in optimistic scenarios, 
I will firmly continue to believe that this is a right cause. University is the right cause and that we are all equal and that we all create university. Thank you for doing that and thank you for this long but important meeting because this has represented the, a real face of our university. Thank you for your participation and I thank the University Electoral Committee for carrying out the, the, one of the longest debates in our recent history at least but we have so many people who have been throughout the entire evening with us. And I thank my colleagues for their discussion with me. Sometimes more pleasant, sometimes less pleasant, but this is how we are. Thank you very much and all the best to all of you and a safe return home trip. Ladies and gentlemen, indeed, we've had a busy afternoon and evening. We were able to listen to the speeches of the All Poland Trade Unions Workers Initi Trade Union Workers Initiative. We were able to listen to the speeches offered by the candidates, professors. We were able to listen to 43 questions and more than 40, 140 replies to these questions. As many questions beget the need for multiple answers. Before passing to the next point on the agenda, the pre of the pre-election meeting we hold, first of all, I would like to thank the candidates and all those who post questions and all those thanks to whom this meeting was possible. The technical staff, the IT workers, the members of the Office for Promotion of the University of Warsaw, and above all, our interpreters and subtitlers, which internationalized and broadened the scope of our meeting. We have once again been convinced that there is future ahead of our university. And since universum has future, we may optimistically conclude, judging by one of the replies of one of the candidates, if our university has future, our world has future. Ladies and gentlemen, and now I can pass to the next point on the agenda. That is to say, I may close the pre-election meeting. And I'm doing so once again thanking all of you. And on the verge of the new day, as we are about to start the new day, and since we are approaching Easter season, let me wish you all the best on the occasion of the approaching Easter holidays. All the best to you. And thank you very much for everything. <laughs>